Today's manhwa begins with the fact that we are shown a man in blue clothes, who is right now running away from some kind of danger, while he is holding something in his hands and trying to keep it. After some time, this guy decides to stop and turn around. Turning around, he sees that the creature he was running away from is starting to catch up with him, which means that now may be a bad time. Blue-haired realizes that he won't be able to run away from this creature any further, so he takes some action. He takes out a certain object from his pocket, which is a blood-killing banner. He raises this banner above his head and turns towards this monster. The expression on his face shows that this guy is determined, and he will do everything to stay alive. It can be seen that after a couple of moments, the monster got closer to this man, and the blue-haired man managed to wave his banner. Apparently, this had an impact on the monster. Then you can understand that the guy with the banner influenced this creature. Something begins to happen to him, and one gets the feeling that it begins to transform into something else. After some time, it turned into some kind of person. He turns to the blue-haired man named Shui Nu. He promises to save the life of this guy if he gives up the child he is holding in his hands. From the words of Shui Nu, we learn that the guy who is pursuing him is called Shu Hun. The guy's face shows that he is not going to give up the child, and says that he will die today at the hands of the pursuer. Blue-haired looks at this cute child one last time, and before taking action, he tells Shi Hong that if he wants to take the child, he will not allow this to happen under any circumstances. After these words, Shui Nu begins to fasten this child's diaper tighter, and his look is somehow sad. It is not yet known what he is going to do, but we will soon find out. After all these actions, the serious-minded guy thought that he was playing American football, after which he grabbed the child tighter and threw him as far away from himself as possible, showing everyone what an excellent throw he had. We can see the child himself, who is flying up some mountain at great speed. One gets the feeling that this is some kind of meteorite. Even at such a speed, the child's face remains calm. Of course, Shi Hun saw all these actions, and even he was slightly surprised by them. He calls that guy crazy, because he threw the child at great speed right into the Tsang Yun mountain. And Zhui Nu just remains pleased with himself. He begins to smile like a madman and says that if Shi Hun is brave enough, then let him go to the head of one of the four great sects. Xu Hong didn't even bother to deal with Xue Nu. He didn't want to waste a lot of time and just flew straight at high speed right behind the child. And Xue Nu stayed in place and watched this. Then suddenly the blue-haired man apparently blocked the brown-haired man from flying away. Apparently they both have some unfinished business that needs to be dealt with right now. The blue-haired man does not intend to let Xi Hun go. He stood right in front of him, holding out his sharp sword and tells him to finish him off first. It is clear that the brown-haired man is shocked by the impudence of this guy and is slightly confused. But even despite his confusion, it seems that the brown-haired man is still ready to fulfill the request from Shui Nu. He will have to deal with this obstacle, and since the blue-haired man is looking for death, he will find it here. So far, the battle of these two strongmen remains behind the scenes, and we are shown a girl named Song Yun Shen, who, following the laws of Taoism, trained non-stop on the back slope of the mountain and behaved calmly. Near it you can see three strange monkeys, who apparently paid attention to the object that is located behind the stone, or they are interested in the huge piece of stone itself and are studying it. The girl noticed their unusual behavior, and turning to these dirty monkeys asked them what they were doing here. They were a little scared that she approached them so unexpectedly. But all the monkeys decide to give an answer to this curious girl. They point to this stone, and apparently there really is something behind it. The girl is interested and will go check it out right now. Approaching this stone right behind it, Kang Yun Shen discovered the same child who was thrown here by Shui Nu. When she saw him, she was surprised and did not know what race he was and where he came from. Continuing to look at the baby for some time, the blonde fell into shock, because she realized that this was actually a person, and that she needed to quickly tell her mother and the Monkey King himself, so that they would also know. After all this, the girl understands that she shouldn't waste time. She took this child in her hands and with calm, slow steps, walked with him to where she really needed to go. After some time, she reached some room. He saw his mother and the head of the monkeys who was sitting on the throne. She approaches them with a man in her hands and asks them to look at it. We see three people in this room, her mother on the right, some unknown guy on the left, and right in the center, the monkey king sitting on the throne, who does not yet know about the existence of t-shirts. The guy who was on the left all this time looks at Kang Yun Shen and considers her a three-tailed demonic fox. He understands that although she is able to change her appearance, she is not able to hide her three white tails. In the next chapter, we see a fox girl. She listened to this guy and seems unhappy with his words. She continues to hold the child and tells the guy that her tails look beautiful, and he is just jealous of her. This man with a bun on his head decided to approach the girl, 
After she expressed her dissatisfaction with him, he simply stood up and looked, and she decided to inquire about who he really was. Next, the girl's mother decides to stand up for her. She tells this man not to be so rude, after which she asks her daughter to show her what she could find. She holds the little man forward, and turning to her mother, says that she picked up a human child in a mountain valley. She doesn't know what to do with him, and that's why she brought him here to show him. Suddenly, both the man and the woman fell into real shock. Firstly, they were perplexed as to how the child could even get to them, and secondly, they were very surprised that he was a human child. But still, the mother of this girl decides to take the child in her arms to examine him. Continuing to examine this little handsome man, she decides to check with the girl whether she picked him up. Apparently, at first, the girl's mother did not believe that this was a human child. After examining him, she was convinced of this and, frightened, said that he needed to be taken back because his parents could be somewhere nearby. The fox girl quickly begins to explain herself to her mother. She modestly tells her that she found him at the waterfall. There was no one nearby. She doesn't know where he came from. It's as if he just appeared. These two listened to the little girl. They were both very shocked and did not understand what was happening because according to the girl, there was no one next to her. So where could he come from there? Next, the guy with the bun on his head decides to add a couple of comments. He understands that the child was found at the very top of the mountain and ordinary people cannot get there so it is unknown where he would come from. In response to his question, the blonde only spreads her hands in different directions. She herself does not know where he could have come from, so apparently they will have to find out the answer to this difficult question. A woman with a child decides to approach the pleased head of the monkeys. She tells him that it seems this child is hungry. She wants him to find a monkey who recently gave birth and ask her for some milk for the baby. Judging by the expression on the face of the head of the monkeys, he is currently munting, so he cannot give an answer to this stupid woman. He continues to hold the same emotion on his face and does not say anything. The head of the monkeys never gave an answer to this woman's request. He only silently took his cane, which helps him walk, and then set off in an unknown direction. The blonde can only silently watch his trail. She did not particularly attach any importance to the fact that the head of the monkeys remained silent. She then turns her attention back to the baby and does not understand what kind of cruel parents could leave such a beautiful baby alone in the valley. The man tells her to see if there is anything that will help them find out his identity. They need to find his parents as soon as possible and return the child to them because they may begin to worry a lot about his opinion. Then these curious creatures became interested in what gender this child was. They took off his diapers and examined him, after which they realized that he was actually a boy. The black-haired one was not satisfied with their actions, and he began to cry. Having examined him, the blonde begins to close the child back in the diaper while he continues to cry. Before that, she examined him even better, but could not find anything else. However, she noticed a certain ancient jade pendant right on the neck of this crying child. In fact, it is very interesting what it could mean. Most likely, they know what this item is. The blonde continues to look at this pendant, after which she began to remember something. It seems to her that this pendant actually seems very familiar to her, but she still cannot fully remember what it is. The man paid attention to the woman's reaction. He saw her bewilderment and surprise at this and listened to her words, after which he, with a serious face, decides to clarify with her whether she is sure that this thing is familiar to her. Some excitement seems to be visible on her face. She wrapped the baby in a diaper and, looking at the man, answers the question, saying that she definitely saw her somewhere before, but she can't remember exactly where. However, after some time, the woman was still able to remember where she saw this thing. She decides to spend a little more time to formulate her thoughts and tell others about them. In the next chapter, the man approaches this woman, who is actually an elder. He wonders if this jade has any story. He really wants her to tell him about it. The elder listened to this guy's question. In response, she just grinned and began to simply remain silent. It seems that she was still trying to remember all the details in order to accurately tell everything and not miss anything. She seems to have remembered everything, and continuing to hold the baby with a serious look, begins the story about this jade. She says that 80 years ago, it was the magical weapon of the Demon King. The weapon united them and served as a source of immortality. He remembered the Mojau sect, which claims to be the sect of light and fire, the cradle of which is the desert temples. It was united for a thousand years, until 800 years ago, a man appeared whose name was Ye Cha. His words turned out to be true. The elder says that Ye Cha destroyed the true path of the sects and then declared himself king and founded the path of demons, since the sect was divided into two main forces, the demonic path and the ghostly one. The man also understands that three months ago, there was a war in the Mojiao sect. And meanwhile, the baby in the woman's hands, for some reason, 
begins to cry sharply. Apparently, he doesn't like something. We also learn that during the voodoo celebration, the three great sects united to attack the demon king, and a certain Ye Tianxin died in a desert temple. But the man heard that Ye Tianxin had a son who was born the day before. He was saved by his subordinates, and they fled to the middle plain. But the sect's magicians continued the pursuit to kill the king's son. Suddenly, the woman felt uneasy. She looks at this baby and realizes that perhaps this child is the one that someone wants to finish off. The realization of this fact really scares her. Next, the elder decides to ask his daughter, calling her Xiao Qi. She clarifies if she noticed any other strange things when she found this child. The girl is trying to remember it right now. Trying to remember all these events, Xiao Qi remembers a certain flag that was right next to this child. Having told this, the girl tries to remember some other details to tell about them. We see two monkeys who, apparently, just now decided to take this flag and began to play with it or wipe themselves, using it as a kind of towel. Of course, they did not know that it represented something important. And then the elder became numb with horror. She begins to remember something and, apparently, understands perfectly well that this flag is unusual and that it represents something. This made her feel uneasy. Seeing that the woman doesn't say anything at all, the man decides to add a couple of comments himself. He understands that this flag is a bloody killing banner, which makes him slightly tense. Xiao Qi turned her attention to the reaction of the adults. After they heard about the flag from her, she was very surprised and thought that among the demons it was a powerful magical weapon. The black-haired adult tells her that she guessed correctly. The demon king had one slave named Xue Nu. His magical weapon was this flag. It is clear that these people are already beginning to understand everything. Further, the elder, continuing to hold the child in his hands, says that it seems to her that this child is Ye Tianxin's son but she cannot understand why he then ended up on Mount Kang Yun. Meanwhile, the head of the monkey suddenly appeared, who nevertheless collected milk from one of the monkey's mothers. He looked contentedly and just as silently carried the drink to the child, intending to feed him. He reaches the woman and passes this glass of milk into her hand so that she can feed the child. She is pleased with his actions and thanks the monkey king for his kindness. Finally, the child will be well fed. She starts feeding the baby and says that heaven takes care of every living thing, and since they found this child, it means he is not destined to die, so she asks the others if they are ready to take him. It can be seen that the black-haired man seemed to be a little worried. He understands that she wants him to take this child, but he is scared by the fact that this is the child of the king. He is afraid that he might get his ass kicked for him. A moment later, there is silence. The man looks tensely at this baby, who is drinking his milk right now. Apparently, he can't decide whether he should take the baby or not. After thinking this way for a while, he decided that there is no difference in who his parent is. He believes that people are born into this world as nothing, so he is not to blame for this. He considers himself the laziest person in the Kang Yun sect, who just wanted to drink the wine of the Monkey King. And now he is already connected by fate with this baby, he understands that fate cannot be avoided. The woman hands the child directly into his hands. He takes the baby and says that he hopes that for the rest of his life he can cleanse his soul and he will not become mired in demonic power. He wants to raise the child as a good person. And only now we find out that this man's name is Zui Lao. The elder turns to him with a pleased look and tells him that this baby does not have a name yet. She wonders what he will decide to call him. Zui Lao listened to the woman's question, after which he smiled and seemed embarrassed, but answered the question and said that first he wants to drink wine, after which he will give the child a name. In the next chapter, we see how Xiao Qi entered the conversation between the adults. She says that since she found him herself, she wants to give the child a name herself. She says that since his surname is Ye, then let him be called Ye Xiao Qi. The mother comes up to this girl and asks her not to be stupid like that, and the girl just looks at this child and cannot stop doing it, because she thinks the child is too cute. The elder says that the stream of sunlight on the stone ignites the violet smoke. She watches how in the distance the waterfall flows into a long river, and since it was found at the waterfall, he wants to give it an associated name. After thinking for a while, the woman finally decided to name the baby Ye Xiaohuan. His expression shows that he doesn't seem to mind this and is ready to live with this name all his life. After the elder has proposed her version of the name for the baby, she turns to the others in this room. Xiao Qi immediately says that she thinks the name is happy and good, and Zui Lao for some reason is still silent. Next, the girl decides to approach this little boy and reminds him that he is Ye Xiao Xuan and she is Xiao Qi. She lets him know that he can just call her sis and together they will live happily ever after. Zui Lao intervenes in the girl's dialogue with this baby. He suddenly begins to laugh because he sees that she liked him. The man understands that her three tails have not behaved like this for 300 years. 
The words of this man simply infuriated Xiao Qi. She stood up and clenched her fists and began to shout at him. She dared to say that she would fight him and was not going to tolerate hurtful words addressed to her. And then the girl starts running after an adult man. Zui Lao doesn't really take any action and just starts running away. He teases her and asks her to catch up. And the elder, in turn, asks them to stop. We see events that take place 15 years later in the Longhui Mountain Peak right in the training house. Someone starts screaming and calls Ye Xiaohuan a sheep. And he, in turn, asks this person not to hit him in the face. It can be seen that whoever kicked this boy out of this very educational house, the black-haired one simply lost face, and it seems that those who kicked him out never want to see him here again. While the guy was trying to recover from a hard landing, he heard someone starting to shout behind him and insult him. He turns around to check who found it so brave. It turned out that this is some kind of purple-haired girl. She is holding a weapon and looks very angry. She promises to finish him off today and get rid of all his problems that he now has. Ye Xiaohuan assessed his chances of winning and realized that he couldn't do anything to this girl, so he tried as hard as he could to run away from her and called someone for help, and she was right now trying to catch up with him. The locals noticed this guy's screams. The girl with the book and the girl in pink clothes cannot understand what is happening here. The two of them turn to the purple-haired one to find out the answer. The purple-haired girl looks very embarrassed. She blushes all over and says that she didn't have time to get dressed to go out. Apparently now she will tell everything in detail why she hated this guy so much. She begins to say that the way Ye Xiaohuan waited while he changed clothes, she promises him that for such actions, he will one day get his stupid head. But today apparently it was not possible to catch up with him. We can notice this guy again. He still continues to run away and on the way he decides to turn around to make sure that the purple-haired girl named Mu Lao Hu has already fallen behind him. He opens some doors and doesn't want anyone to notice what this black-haired guy is going to do right now. He turns around to convince him that there is no one here. After making sure that the area is clear, he begins to approach a certain building. Approaching it, he begins to open the door to go inside and sees a strange man there, who is just sitting and staring straight at him. This guy with long hair was happy to see Ye Xiaohuan. He decides to check with him how things are going with him. It is still unknown who this person is, but very soon we should find out about it. Ye Xiaohuan hands over some object and says that as soon as Mu Lao Hu was distracted by the loss of underwear, he immediately stole this shoe and almost died this time. The guy says that this is enough for him. The black-haired man begins to hurry this guy. With a tired face, he asks him to give him 32 coins. He also says that he needs to go down the mountain and hide. The guy paid attention to his words. In the next chapter, we are reminded that this guy's name is Ye Xiaohuan. Fifteen years ago, he was a baby who was picked up by Kang Yun, found in the mountains, and picked him up. And now after a long time, he has already matured. Now this guy is good for nothing and has an addiction to alcohol. Right now he is running somewhere because he did not expect that his attempt to buy alcohol would end in this way. He is now dissatisfied. As he runs, this sweaty guy realizes that he has to come back quickly to pack his things. Then he will have to go down the mountain and hide for a while so that they can't find him. Then the black haired man begins to look around. He now looks at the entrance to one of the buildings and realizes that it seems the mentor has left, which means it's time to hurry. Having made sure that the mentor is nowhere to be seen, this guy understands that this is only fortunate, and he urgently needs to hurry up with his actions before his mentor thinks of returning back. He takes out a certain bag and apparently begins to tie it tightly. Then he opens the door to this building and realizes that this prepared bag was useful. After all, his brother is really resourceful. Having opened this door, he, unfortunately for himself, discovers that three people were waiting for him here, including a Mu Laohu. He is very surprised and does not understand what they are doing here, but he seems to guess what they need. One of these three people asks the guy where he is going. The three of them look very serious, and it seems that they are not to be joked with. They are not taking any action yet, but only want to hear the answer to their question from this guy. It is clear that Ye Xiaohuan is starting to panic a little. He is silent for now and understands that things are not going well right now. He understands that he needs to remain calm, otherwise they will begin to suspect him of something. He shows respect to these people and bows, turning to the master, mentor Jing Xuan and sister Pan Er. He says that he is going to go down the mountain and return in a few days. Violet Haired is still furious with this guy. She starts screaming at him and calling him by his name. Apparently, she still can't forget what he did to her just recently. You can tell from the guy's face that he is very worried. These people seem to be hostile towards him. Perhaps he even feels a little ashamed of his previous actions. Next, this loser kneels right in front of these people. Turning to the master, he says that he was mistaken, and begins to beg them to give him another chance, because this time he will definitely be able to improve. However, the master is not even going to forgive Ye Xiaohuan. He only became very angry with him and kicked the guy in the face with all his might. 
Calling him an idiot, the black-haired man did not expect this at all and flew back from the blow. Then the master turns to the mentor Jing Xuan and says that the student is really disobedient. In recent years, he has often gotten into trouble, and this time he has disgraced himself in front of Pan Air. However, even despite all this, the black-haired man understands that he is still young, so he asks her to show leniency and try to forgive this fool, hoping that this will not happen again. The woman listened to the words of the master and simply cannot believe that he wants to forgive him. She says that this student has caused a lot of problems for several years and can repeat the same thing. We see Ye Xiaohuan, who is now silently sitting on the floor holding onto his sore spot. One of the adults says that thieves often look into the students' rooms and steal their jewelry, profiting from this. Next, this woman turns to Master Zui and says that he has lost his way. And this is what they fear most. If not taught a lesson now, he will definitely repeat his mistakes in the future. The man with the bun on his head is already starting to get a little worried. He listened to what the other experts think about this guy. So he asks them all to calm down as soon as possible because this won't work. Next, this strict man begins to point his finger at this boy. He calls him worthless and asks if he entered the student's room last night. He expects to hear the truth from him. It is clear that the black-haired man was slightly embarrassed. He understands that there is no point in lying now, and it will only get worse then. So he mustered up the strength to answer his question and speak only the truth, saying that it was him, but he does not want to tell everything. Still, the fact that he told the truth had a positive impact. The girl in green because of this asks to transfer him to a disciplinary school where they will take care of him. The purple-haired one believes that he deserves more punishment. The woman listened to the young girl's opinion, but apparently she didn't like it, so she simply covered her mouth with her hand. It's clear that the purple-haired girl didn't expect this and is now very surprised. Continuing to hold her hand to the girl's mouth, she turns to the good old Zui Lao because she wants to know his opinion about all this. Meanwhile, Ye Xiao Huan continues to sit on the ground. In the next chapter, it is clear that the woman nevertheless decided to remove her hand from this girl's RA. She waits for Zui Lao to express his opinion. And he has already come to terms with this, and still agrees with her proposal regarding punishment. The man understands that the disciplinary school is not so scary. He will only stay there for a month. If he fell into the hands of Jing Xuan, he would have suffered much more. So he is lucky. Still, after thinking for a while, the man says to the woman's face that he agrees with her opinion, and they will do just that. The guy sitting on the floor seems to look quite a bit dissatisfied, and the woman is pleased with the man's agreement. But then suddenly Ye Xiao Huan seems to want to say something. He quickly gets to his feet and walks towards the master, turning to him. Apparently, what he wants to say is something urgent. We never found out what he wanted, but then we see that the black-haired man was already tied up and brought to some place. Apparently, this is a disciplinary school in which he will spend a whole month. Next, we see two guys. They are glad that Ye Xiao Huan was finally caught. They consider him a bastard. They think that he should get what he deserves because last time he stole their things. Xiao Huan, as the main character, was brought straight to the immortal Yun He. It is clear that the black-haired man is very scared and is waiting for what this tall, bearded man, who looks very serious, will say. Finally, the old stump spoke. He looked straight at the main character and immediately recognized him and remembered all his actions. He got the feeling that this disciplinary school was built especially for this kid. From the side, you can see how Ye Xiao Huan continues to kneel silently, and next to him stand those who brought him here. The bearded man remembers how he watched how Zui gently raised this boy. The bearded man, seeing Jing Xuan nearby, understands that this time the boy fell right into her hands, so she won't feel sorry for him, and it won't end well for the main character. The grandfather continues to look at the woman, and turning to Jing Xuan, asks her why she complained to the disciplinary school. He is very interested in the true reason why the boy ended up here. Of course, she tells everything as it happened. She says that he entered her students' chambers, thereby breaking the rules. She understands that Yun. He knows the rules and asks him to take action. It is clear that the black-haired man is scared. The bearded man listened to her and understood everything. Apparently, this reason does not seem to him to be the reason why he needs to be brought here. Yun. He believes that he was brought here in vain, and should have allowed Jing Xuan to deal with the problem herself. Next. Zui Lao turns to Yun He and says that this student has repeatedly broken the rules. This time, he personally asks him not to be lenient and to deal with Ye Xiao Huan as expected. Apparently, this will be difficult for Grandfather. It is clear that the bearded man is tired of all this. It seems that he wants to finish doing this business as soon as possible and retire as soon as possible. But then he decides to ask the guy if he entered the Gu Panner's room last night. 
We see the main character, who still continues to kneel and look at the floor. Apparently, he is ashamed to raise his eyes, still looking at the floor. He boldly admits his guilt. The bearded man decides to ask him why he snuck into her chambers, because he must know that it is a violation of sacred rules. The guy raising his head looks slightly confused, but is going to give his answer. Among the crowd of people watching these events, you can see the very guy who instructed him to do this. He is now very worried that Ye Xiaohuan might give him away right now. But fortunately for that guy, the main character never gave him away. He only said that he knew it was wrong, so he simply promises that this will not happen again. He hopes that his punishment will be commuted. The bearded man listened to the answer from this kid, after which he turns to Ponner and asks if he did anything wrong when he snuck into her room. Yun. He should know this problem. Violet Haired answers his question. She says that she noticed him and hit him twice, after which he ran away. Then she checked the contents of her house and discovered that her shoes were missing. All the people around were shocked after hearing what they heard. They believe that this is a truly terrible act. They also cannot believe that he really dared to steal the shoes from the fairy goo herself. And this is too serious a crime. Meanwhile, people in white robes burst into this party. They ask everyone to be quiet and say that this is a disciplinary school. They are very interested in what kind of noise was made here. They really want to know the reason. After hearing this, immortal Yunhi's face suddenly became more serious. He turns to the boy and asks him if what Gu just said is true. He still wants to hear the truth. It is clear that Ye Xiaohuan was very embarrassed. He blushed all over with shame and continued to look at the floor. But even in such a situation, he decided to tell the truth. He said that yes, it was he who stole these shoes. The old stump tells the boy that theft is a violation of the rules. He decides to check with him whether there is a person who instructed him to do this and says that if he confesses, he will atone for his guilt. The guy listened to the words of the immortal Yun He and it seems that he is already confessing. Having named the name of the person who instructed him to do this, the black haired man breaks down greatly and seems to have strong doubts about whether he should confess. In the next chapter, you can see the very person who instructed him to do this. He also heard a question from his grandfather and fell into real horror. He thinks that it would be better for him to slowly escape now. Still, the guy says that no one entrusted him with this and he stole these shoes himself. He says that in fact, in his soul, he always secretly loved the student of the pannier. He missed her day and night so much that he could not close his eyes. So he did this. These words greatly angered the purple-haired girl. She doesn't understand why he even decided to answer like that, and already taking out her sword, she promises to finish off this guy for his bad words and behavior. However, her mentor stops her in time, asking her to be quieter. It is clear that this affected the purple-haired one, and she understands that she was really upset. So now she should just calm down. Green-Eyed says that everything that happened is only on his conscience. He asks mentor Yoon. He to punish him, the immortal Yoon. He already believes that Ye Xiaohuan has no conscience at all, so he will punish him. The audience found the guy's actions quite disgusting. They are now very angry and want him to be given what he really deserves, namely severe punishment. They consider Ye Xiaohuan a complete loser and don't understand why the black-haired man suddenly fell in love with Gu Paner. They now hate this guy. They already treated this guy badly. But after all these words, they already hated him. Meanwhile, a guy in a white robe, whose name is Sun Yao, is approaching the guy from the immortal Yun He. He is a disciple of Elder Yun He. Right now, he is silently looking at the guy who is on his knees. He understands that despite the fact that Ye Xiaohuan is a disciple of Master Zui, he has shortcomings. Now he is cultivating along the path of Yin and Yang and has only reached the border of Shen Hai of the fourth level. He also does not understand how Pan is in love with Panner. Suddenly, the black-haired man goes crazy and tells everyone that he likes Gu Panner. He likes her so much that he goes crazy with pipe dreams. He wonders if they could handle something like that. The audience listened to the guy's words and were convinced of his desire to fry this girl. They felt uneasy and apparently experienced some kind of shame. They couldn't even find the words to say something. The same guy from the audience has already begun to feel ashamed himself. He is of course glad that his friend decided not to rat him out no matter what. But he is tired of this devotion. He wants Ye Xiaohuan to stop disgracing himself. Even the immortal Yun He himself began to feel ashamed because of the boy's words. He asks for silence in this place because he wants to say or do something, considering everything that Ye Xiaohuan said earlier. Convinced that silence has finally come, he asks the guy where the pannier shoes are now. He says that he lost them. In the morning, she noticed him and he ran away in a hurry, but does not know where he dropped them. Grandfather says that this time the guy broke the rules, which caused bad consequences. As punishment, he will receive 30 blows with sticks. 
and he will also have to think about his mistakes for three months on the back slope of the mountain. The guy felt scared after what he heard. He doesn't believe that they are going to send him to think about his mistakes on the back slope of the mountain. He asks his grandfather to simply forbid him to leave the room, and that's all. The woman in green says that Master Yun, he has been managing Kang Yun's criminal law for more than a hundred years, and everyone believes that he always judges fairly and rarely pursues personal gain. And today, he was convinced that this is so. The woman also turns to Zui Lao and asks him if he thinks it is right that Yun he subjected Xiao Huan to such a punishment. It is clear that the man is very worried, but is going to give an answer. Having gained strength, he says that he has long wanted to deal with this rebel. This time will really be remembered by him for a long time. One gets the feeling that he is against such punishment, but does not want to talk about it in front of everyone. Meanwhile, our main character understands that this is the end, because his beloved teachers always say such things. Apparently, he can no longer avoid this three-month punishment on the rock, so he needs to come to terms. The bearded man turns to Sun Yao and tells him to punish Ye Xiao Huan with 30 blows, after which he sends the guy to the back slope of the mountain so that he can begin to think about his own mistakes there and understand that he is doing wrong. The guy in the white coat, like a true devoted student, made it clear to his teacher that he understood what he had to do. So right now, he was going to follow the main character and do what he needed to do. The man takes this guy by the scruff of the neck and says that he must learn a lesson from this and under no circumstances commit acts that violate moral standards. The black-haired man asks him to be easier because he himself is able to walk. The audience is glad that right now Ye Xiao Huan will receive his well-deserved punishment. The guy in white is pleased and continues to carry him to the indicated place. He is waiting for the moment when he can spank this handsome guy so that he learns his lesson well. It can be seen how Ye Xiao Huan has already been put face first directly to the board and is just delivering the last 30 blow the guy was specifically kicked in his ass, which made him blush and even began to scream in pain because he was in pain. A satisfied man in a white coat says that they have already finished, so this guy can get up from this board. The black-haired man, remembering the pain he experienced, says that the blows were quite hard. Meanwhile, Zui Lao approaches the boy, who seems to feel pity for this guy. Ye Xiao Huan turns to his mentor and says that he is hurt and does not want to go and reflect on his mistakes. Zui Lao has not yet given an answer to this guy. He just continues to look at him silently, thinking about what to tell him. The black-haired man is at a loss why he is silent and wants to hear the answer as soon as possible. The man tells him that because the mentor showed him complacency during training, he took the wrong path. This is a good opportunity for him to come to his senses, purify his spirit, and improve his yin and yang path. In three months, the students of the school will face a test. They will need to reach the fifth level of the void control boundary. Otherwise, they will lose dignity in the eyes of their teacher. It is clear that Ye Xiao Huan has understood everything. In the next chapter, we are shown the very backslope of the Longhui mountain peak, the rock of thinking about our own mistakes. It is obvious that this is where our naughty protagonist will be brought. We see Sunyo riding on a sword, right on top of him. Like on an airplane carpet, he is heading to his destination. While he is dragging behind him a frightened black-haired man who is not even standing on the sword, he is being held by this man. After some time, the man tells the boy that they have arrived at the cliff thinking about their own mistakes. Ye Xiao Huan doesn't even say anything. He just wants his feet to finally feel the ground again. Then a guy in a white robe with a satisfied face throws the black-haired man onto the slope of this mountain, just like some kind of garbage and wishes him to have a good time here. It is clear that such a landing became unpleasant for the main character. Ye Xiao Huan doesn't understand why Sun Yao did this to him, because they are not each other's enemies at all. And paying attention to his actions, it seems that he wanted the black-haired man to be crushed to death. A handsome man with a fashionable bang tells Ye Xiao Huan that he, an ugly toad, dared to fall in love with a panner. He considers this act very pathetic, and he even finds it funny just by realizing this fact. The black-haired man listened to him and believes that it is not surprising that this guy was so merciless to him today. It turns out that by telling him at the disciplinary school that he was secretly in love with Gu Panner, he touched him where it hurt. Then Ye Xiao Huan starts screaming for some reason. It feels like he fell from something, or perhaps he just wanted to attract the attention of this guy, which he successfully did. A moment later, the cool kid shows his middle finger to Sun Yao. He says that people don't even look in his direction. He would advise him not to delude himself. He threatens him, saying that one day he will kick his ass. This child's words do not scare Sun Yao. He tells this self-confident youth that in three months he will have a big test at school, and he will happily wait for him right there to make things difficult for him. 
He is about to fly away from here, but before that he remembers something. He tells Ye Xiao Huan that if he wants to join the test, then he needs to cultivate to at least the fifth level of the air control border. After his words, Sun Yao pretends that he is actually sorry and at the same time smiles like crazy, because the main character is only on the border of Shenhai of the fourth level, so he cannot yet. Already flying away from this place, the guy in the white coat continues to gloat and tells the boy that he is ready to give him 30 years for this trivial matter. Ye Xiao Huan lost his temper after the words of this man. The angry black-haired guy looking after the flying guy tells him to wait until the guy gets stronger, spends three days of practice and can surpass him. He wants to make the guy in white regret for the words he said. A moment later, the black-haired man became sad. He realized that this time his dignity was violated. For a few dozen coins he was hit with a stick 30 times and locked on a rock to think about his mistakes. While he is standing at the very edge, a lizard approached him. Meanwhile, he realizes that he has not yet reached the border of the fifth level of control over the control of the flight of the sword. So without these skills, he will not be able to leave this forgotten place. The boy sat in the lotus position and understands that as soon as he is released from here, he will immediately go to this bastard Zhu Changshu and demand from him the cost of lost working time and compensation for moral damages. While Ye Huan sat silently in the lotus position, he suddenly began to look very irritated remembering that he would have to sit here for three whole months. But he believes that for him, this is a trifling matter, and even a match will not have time to burn out. After this realization, he continued to mune and silently look into the distance. He remains silent so as not to interrupt this wonderful process, because he understands that he needs to wait patiently for these three months. But after a couple of minutes, he is already tired of everything. He understands that it is very boring here, and wants at least someone to come talk to him, then he begins to call someone for help so that he can be let out of here. We see how, out of boredom, the black-haired man simply lay down straight on the ground. He understands that the only entertainment he will have is communication with the students, who will bring him food right here from time to time. While Ye Xiaohuan lay silently and did not touch anyone, his attention was suddenly attracted by something from the sky. Looking at this object, he notices that it is some kind of pelican, which is carrying him a certain basket with something. Taking a closer look, the green-eyed man realized that a pelican was now flying up to him. He realized that he definitely wouldn't see any people for three months, and didn't understand why they treated him so cruelly. After this realization, the black-haired man became even much sadder. The pelican simply left this basket next to him and began to fly away from this place. And the boy just sat down next to this basket and began to look silently into the distance. In the next chapter, it is clear that the main character nevertheless decided to open this basket that the pelican brought him. He sorts through the food there, and is still dissatisfied with the fact that Song Yun is sorry to even send students to bring him food. The guy sat for a while near the basket and thought about everything, after which he got very angry and wanted to throw out his food, cursing all those bastards because of whom he got here and began to feel lonely. But suddenly the main character suddenly stopped and calmed down sharply. Apparently he remembered something important, and right now we will find out what such a brilliant thing came to this guy's mind. It turned out that, fortunately for him, he was able to realize in time that if he threw it away, he would then remain hungry. So he should not do this with food, but should treat it with care. Ye Xiao Huan sits down at the edge of the slope, and the pelican sits down next to him. The guy understands that it's time for him to come to terms with his fate and somehow survive these three months here, completely alone, even though it will be difficult. After the boy took all the food from the basket and ate, the pelican took the basket and began to fly away from this place. Meanwhile, it began to snow, which means that a bad time is coming for the main character. It is clear that the black-haired man is already beginning to freeze. He understands that he has not cultivated for a long time and has only reached the border of the fourth level of Shenhai. He is still very far from Shui Huo, but for now, he has to endure this cold. He realizes that this is not good, and he needs to start meditation in order to activate the internal meridians, because they will set the spiritual force in motion, and this, of course, will weaken all the cold. Four days have already passed, and the snow still continues to fall and does not stop, as the trees are already completely covered with snow. And our main character, apparently, spent all these four days in meditation and does not understand what is happening. Having come to his senses, the black-haired man begins to look around. Suddenly, he notices something in the distance that made him very happy, in his opinion, in the distance he saw some people. In the distance you can see some strange black figure. The guy is still happy and it seems to him that there really is someone there, and he needs to quickly shout to him to come talk, otherwise he will die of boredom. The main character tries to take a closer look in order to still understand who it really is, standing right in front of him, 
This is difficult to do because of the pile of snow, but you can be sure that he can handle it. He saw a green-haired girl and was very surprised once she and Gu Panner were a couple of arrogant people in Sang Yun, but now she is one of the great six fairies, Yun Chu. Apparently this surprises him. He understands that Jun Xu is quite indifferent. If he at least somehow allowed himself to provoke the Panner, then he did not even dare to approach her, because she could answer much worse so that it would not seem a little. Still, the main character cannot understand what this green-haired woman is doing in this place in such cold weather and all alone. Perhaps she has some important things to do here. The answer to this curious guy's question did not take long to arrive. We see how some rays of light begin to emanate from the Yun Chu sword. Apparently, something hard is about to happen. The black-haired man, of course, noticed this and was very amazed by this beautiful picture. He understands that this ice fairy Yun Chu is really very strong, since she can do something like this. This strength is even frightening. Suddenly, the green-haired girl stood up in some kind of fighting pose and pushed the tip of her sword forward, moving her hand back. She is going to perform some kind of strong technique, which we will see now. With a loud cry, she sharply moved her sword in front of her, after which a huge and thick beam of light flew right out of it, which destroys everything in its path, thus clearly showing her strength. This beam apparently reached the neighboring mountain, because you can pay attention to a bunch of debris and pieces of the mountain flying around. These pieces of stones look quite huge and dangerous. Ye Huan turned his attention to this breathtaking picture, and was even very surprised he was frightened by such a high power, but at the same time it looked very cool and amazing. While the guy was enjoying the views, to his horror he noticed how a huge piece of stone was flying at him, ready to smear him on the ground. Out of fear, the guy started screaming and was about to do something. Fortunately for the black-haired man, he managed to dodge this danger and save his life. Looking at this huge piece of stone, he is once again convinced at home that this girl is very strong. He looks directly at her again, and you can see how her sword still begins to glow. Apparently, he is about to perform some other technique, but the guy does not understand why she is doing all this. Next, Yun Xu shoots some kind of smaller beam directly into the sky. The guy paid attention to this and understands that this is the use of the Beidou Magic Sword Fighter technique. After launching this strange ray, the girl is going to jump straight into the sky. Apparently, with the help of it, she is going to do something else exciting, but it is not yet clear what. It seems that she jumped right onto this beam and is now using it like some kind of riding horse. The black-haired man saw this scene and was simply shocked because he did not believe that this could be done at all. Already in the next chapter, you can watch how Yunsi continues to perform his tricks high in the sky. Lightning is visible in the sky, and it feels like crystals are forming there. Ye Huan is still watching this picture. He watches this with bated breath and is convinced that she really used the Beidou magic sword technique. He understands that she must take control of the power. He understands that, however, these four great magic sword techniques of the Kang Yun sect are slightly inadequate for cultivation. It is possible that she will not be able to control her own strength. We see this green-haired girl again, screaming and trying to do more. She moved her sword forward, her hilt begins to glow, and now we find out what she is going to do. The main character watching this picture suddenly wondered if she could maintain control. Despite all her high strength, there is a possibility that she could handle it. What Ye Huan was afraid of happened. Suddenly some sharp spears appeared that struck Yunsi. Blood gushed from her mouth and it was already clear that everything did not go according to her plan. From her injuries, the girl immediately lost consciousness and began to fall from a great height straight to the ground. The main character noticed this and began to worry greatly about the life of this girl. Continuing to watch the falling girl, Ye Huan sees that she never came to her senses and understands that an abyss awaits her below, and if this continues, she will fall there and die. Already when the green-haired one was very close to the ground, the black-haired one decided to try to catch her. Before that, he asked the god for strength so that he would have the opportunity to save her, and right now he is scared. A moment later, you can see how the guy was still able to catch this girl in his warm arms and tight hugs. Apparently he can still save her but the girl is still unconscious. From the outside, you can see that Ye Huan didn't even jump. He continued to stand on the tree branch and caught the girl in flight, continuing to hold her over the abyss, and at the same time, he caught the branch with his legs like a monkey. After some time, the black-haired man and the girl got down from this branch. He carefully put her on the ground and began to wait for her to come to her senses in order to ask her if she was interested in hobby horsing. Ye Huan stands and looks at Yun Shu. He is very glad that he was able to save her, and all the danger is already behind him. He remembers that when he tried to save her, he almost went into the abyss with her. He grabs the girl's hand to check her pulse. He understands that things are bad because she could not cope with the Beidou technique and put herself in danger. Her pulse is weak, and she urgently needs treatment. 
However, the black-haired man realizes that he is now in exile, and to heal such wounds he needs medicine. He wonders if there is some kind of miraculous elixir here, otherwise he does not know what to do. The black-haired man realizes that apparently, he will have to try to cure her on his own. He lifts this girl and it is clear that he is very worried. He is afraid that he may not succeed. The main character clapped his hands, after which he began to give a Thai massage to this wounded girl. The hands of this healer suddenly began to glow, and perhaps these actions will have a positive effect on the girl. Continuing to do his massage, Ye Xiao Wan, even though there is not much vitality in his body, will still do everything possible to save her, because her life depends only on him. The second day comes, you can see how the green-haired girl finally begins to slowly come to her senses. She is still not in very good condition and feels pain, so she cannot speak yet. Meanwhile, the main character notices that it is finally dawn. Now he looks at the pelican, who brought him another portion of food, right in the basket. The guy understands that today they will not remain hungry. But this Sigma is not very interested in food yet. He again begins to look directly at this girl. He did not sleep last night as he spent this time helping her, and now he wants to find out her condition. He again slowly approaches her and, grabbing her hand, checks her pulse. He happily realizes that the pulse is returning to normal. She is already much better. He is glad that her life is finally safe. Ye Xiao Huan is very pleased with himself. He did not even expect that he could become a hero and the savior of people's lives. He also understands that this girl can become an excellent companion for him. Alas, despite the fact that this guy is a hero, they still only bring him pies. He is very sad because it seems to him that such a beautiful youth has already died and will not come back to life. But suddenly he looked to the side and sees something that made him very happy. Judging by his facial expression, he understands that she is fine, which means all his efforts were not in vain. However, unexpectedly for the guy, the shocked Yun Chu immediately after waking up, perceived him as an enemy and immediately took out her sword, after which she scared Ye Xiao Huan by putting the sword to her neck. From the side you can see how the green-haired girl continues to hold the sword right at this guy's throat, and he sits silently and waits for her to say something. The girl decides to ask him who he is. It is clear that the main character is already starting to worry, but he still answers the question. Since he no longer has a choice, he turns to Sister Yun, asks what she is doing here and says his name. She continues to hold the sword at his throat, and he still continues to talk excitedly about himself. He says that he is the only student of the monk Zui from the Tsang Yun school. Yunzi listened to the answer to her question from the guy, then with a serious face she also decides to ask him what he is doing right on the cliff of thinking about his own mistakes. She thinks that he is a bad person. Ye Xiao Huan has already calmed down. He says that he saved her life and did not even use her body as a reward. He is unhappy that after all this she still wants to kill him. The green-haired girl now has an awkward silence. However, she was not satisfied with her words. She sharply pulled her sword near this guy's neck. He, of course, noticed this, and his satisfied face changed to a more frightened one. He would forgive her, calm down, and not do this. The girl is very determined. She really wants to find out what crime he committed, that he was sent right here and tells him for the last time to answer her question. The green-eyed man says that he once stole the things of Gu Panner, that evil woman, and was caught by her. And then the head of Kang Yun, the senior mentor Yun He, fined him and sent him here for three months. Remembering all this, the black-haired man suddenly felt sad. He realized that he had been sitting here for about the sixth day, and this was only a very small part of the time he needed to spend here. The green-haired one received the very answer that she expected from the boy, having learned that he had already spent six days here. She decides to find out how long she was unconscious, the black-haired one tries to remember. He gets to his feet and tells her that she was unconscious for two days and two nights. That evening, she used the Beidou magic sword technique, but she was not strong enough to hold it and she hurt herself, later falling. Then the guy begins to talk about himself. He is pleased with himself and says that he put himself in mortal danger, but still grabbed onto her and did not let go, thereby saving her from death. The girl continues to listen to his story. He says that it was he, Ye Xiao Huan, who was not stingy in spending genuine life force on her in order to heal her wounds, it seems the girl begins to understand everything. He also says that even though he has only reached the border of the fourth level of Shenhai, there is very little genuine life force in the channels. Then he turns to her again and asks if she wants to say anything. He says this to the effect that he can somehow repay for saving a life. He does not demand that she repay with her body. He asks her to give some 82 pieces of silver and he will already be satisfied. And then the green-haired girl suddenly felt uneasy. Having listened to the guy's story, she now thinks that it was all just for the sake of money. She is very dissatisfied with this and now, apparently, considers him heartless. Then he seems to begin to raise his voice. 
He decides to lower this price to 72, and also says that if it's not enough, then he agrees even to 32. Seeing Yun Cho's silence, he asks her if she is greedy. She waited until this abnormal black-haired man finished his sentence, after which she calmly told him that she had no money. The guy was unhappy about this. He was hoping to get something for his help. Ye Xiao Huan already thinks that she is only trying to fool him, because in his opinion, she is the most beloved student of the Jing Shui mentor and is one of the six greatest fairies, so she should have money. But she doesn't. The green-haired girl decides to offer something. She understands that he saved her life and good is paid for good, so she is going to offer something that solved this misunderstanding between them. Ye Xiao Huan is interested. The black-haired man no longer even hides his emotions. He became very interested in what kind of solution she was going to offer and wants her to tell about him as soon as possible. He is impatiently waiting for this. He begins to stroke his sword with a creepy look and says that only he and she know that he saved her life. So it will be easier for her to remove the witness in order to get rid of problems and no one will know. The guy is scared. The black-haired man remembers how three years ago, Yun Xu hacked to death with a sword a student who had obscene thoughts towards her. She can really mercilessly kill an ordinary person. Ye Xiao Huan realizes that he has no choice, so raising his hands, he, scared, tells her that he was joking. These two are from the same school, which means that they should help each other. Yunzi is pleased with the guy's decision to leave her alone, after which she says that she doesn't have the money he needs, which means he could have found another way to pay. She hopes that he didn't give up while she was passed out. He swears that he did not do this. He says that everyone in Sang Yun knows that he is a man of high morals, a worthy gentleman, with a noble knightly soul and justice that reaches to the skies. Yunzi is not a stupid girl at all. As soon as she woke up, she immediately checked her clothes. They were not untied, which means that most likely he is not lying. Right now, she is giggling while looking at the guy. She decides to take the guy at his word for the first time, but wants him to remember that if he tells anyone that her Beidou magic sword technique has failed, she will personally finish him off. In the next chapter, it is clear that this girl decided to show what she will do to this guy if he tells anyone about her failure. It is clear that the black-haired man is already completely scared. It can be seen that she struck some kind of blow with a sword, which sent a shockwave straight towards the mountain. After the wave reached him, the black-haired man was truly shocked. He does not want the same thing to be done to him. While the shocked Ye Xiao Huan looked into the huge gap in the mountain left by this girl, she told him that she was already leaving, and immediately stood on her sword and began to fly away from this place. And he looked at her. Yun Chu has already flown far enough away. He looks after her excitedly and, remembering all the techniques that she showed him, begins to consider her quite cool, since the techniques are simply gorgeous. Next, the main character begins to walk back to the mountain, a pile of stones is visible that remains after this blow. The guy believes that he will not be afraid to say something and is going to continue sitting on the ground. While the guy was approaching this crack, a small stone fell from there onto his empty head, which, picking up speed while falling, hurt him very much. The black-haired man, of course, did not expect this. After this blow, he became very dizzy, after which he simply fell to the ground and was silent. Apparently, he was waiting for this unpleasant pain to pass and he would finally continue doing what he wanted. The evil Ye Xiao Huan decides to take revenge on this stinking stone. He suddenly picks it up from the floor and throws it up the mountain. He doesn't like that the stones decided to offend him, and he promises to break them into small pieces. After his hard throw, the black-haired man suddenly turned his attention to something on this mountain. He is now at a loss and trying to understand what kind of nonsense he now sees in front of him. Apparently, he will have to approach. He also paid attention to how he increased the damage in this mountain with his throw. He does not understand when his strength became so great. He thinks that, unnoticed by himself, he became an incomparable master. While this green-eyed man was admiring himself, he again turned his attention to something unusual on this mountain. Looking closer, he realizes that it is a hieroglyph. Apparently, he is now at a loss and does not know what it means. A bunch of hieroglyphs are visible in front of him. He continues to look at them and believes that these hieroglyphs are like a kind of cultivation mantra. He seems to really want to study them. He thinks that this is really the fundamental ancient book of cultivation. Apparently, it has the common origin of yin and yang cultivation and also something deeper and more intimate. Ye Xiao Huan remembered that they say that the founder of the Kang Yun school, it was Qing Yunzi who was originally a poor scholar. One day traveling around the world, he arrived at Kang Yun Mountain and apparently discovered part of a book that has survived to this day. Continuing the inspection, he wondered if it was possible that the founder of the Kang Yunzi school, based on these hieroglyphs, came to understand the path of improving yin and yang. It seems these hieroglyphs will help this boy. 
the main character begins to rejoice greatly. He will reach a high degree of development and become as outstanding a person as the founder of the family. He is also glad that now he will finally be able to take revenge on Sun Yao. Next, Ye Xiaohuan has hoped that he can become powerful, so he no longer wants to waste another minute and wants to start studying these hieroglyphs to show all his enemies who is boss. However, a moment later, the black-haired man had a certain problem. It seemed that he had difficulty studying the material, and it turned out to be not as simple as he might have thought before. It turned out that it was really difficult for him and he was disappointed. He realized that he had too little experience. Looking at these non-comprehensible hieroglyphs, he only felt dizzy and had tinnitus. Meanwhile, while the main character was in his thoughts and walking sadly, thinking about everything, some object caught his attention. The guy now looks very interested and wants to look at it. Looking at this object more closely, he sees some kind of recess here. What goes further is not visible because of the stones and darkness in this place, but Ye Xiaohuan suggests that it is some kind of sword. At the beginning of the next chapter, as Ye Xiaohuan continues to examine this object, he realizes that a sword usually consists of five parts, namely the hilt, the guard, the blade, the blade, and the tip. Taking this thing in his hands, he fell into bewilderment, because he does not understand why there is only a handle. Examining it, he understands that it does not seem to have broken and there is no damage, as if it should be like that. The black-haired man simply took and threw this sword aside. He already thought that it was a magic sword, however. It was just a toy in his opinion, and after that he immediately lost interest in this item. After these events, he just sat in the lotus position and thought about something. He decided not to waste his time on all sorts of nonsense, so he decides to focus on these inscriptions to try to study them. The main character continues to sit in the lotus position and meditate. It seems that his work is not going for nothing. He begins to feel something unusual and decides to check what it really is. Suddenly, with the help of his hand, he summons some kind of luminous sphere. After cultivation, he feels that he has benefited from all this. The vital energy given to the Jun is not only restored, but also became more powerful. This makes Ye Xiaohuan very happy. He clenches his fist and realizes that if he continues like this, he will be able to reach the border of the fifth level of Kun Ku Wu within 10 days, so he is not going to be lazy. After some time, night has already fallen on the street, and the main character still continues to meditate, instead of going to sleep. It is clear that he is very dedicated to his work and wants to become stronger. Suddenly for him, the guy begins to feel something unusual in his body. He is now at a loss and does not understand why this began to happen to his body. He is trying to find the answer to this question. Then he realizes that things are bad for him, because the meridians inside his body are compressed, he cannot release so much vital energy, so now he is in severe pain, and of course he is dissatisfied with this. After these words, he begins to scream loudly in pain and spit red liquid. It is clear that something bad is happening to his body, but he will need to somehow survive it and cope. Here we can see that part of the blood that came out of his mouth fell directly on the hilt of the sword, which was lying on the ground. The main character all the time considered this thing useless, but now maybe something will happen. Ye Xiaohuan is already feeling bad with everything. It seems to him that he is now a dead man, and he will not be able to survive all this horror. He does not want to die yet, because he is still a virgin and wants to fix it. We can already see from the outside how this guy lies in the cover of darkness, and seems to be waiting for his death. So far, nothing supernatural is happening, and while the situation around is very calm. Suddenly, from the handle, which had previously seemed very useless to Ye Xiaohuan, a long blade came out. Lightning also began to form around it, and its tip was now pointing directly at the guy. It can be seen that this blade is already very close to the main character's head. The light from the blade is reflected from his face, but this guy still feels very bad and does not understand what is happening. The next day comes, a pelican flies to Ye Xiaohuan as usual at dawn. The bird noticed that the guy was lying on the ground motionless, so it flies up to him to check his condition. It seems like the black-haired man is now in perfect order. He felt that someone started to touch him, he even had an itch in this place, but he didn't pay much attention to it and just turned over on his other side because he wants to sleep. After this, there is silence for a while, but then the main character suddenly opens his eyes. He seems to have remembered something, from which he immediately woke up and became cheerful. He jerked sharply from his seat, seeing a pelican standing right above him. It was clear that the black-haired man was very scared because he did not expect to see him. And the pelican, in turn, was just as scared because of the guy's actions. Then Ye Xiaohuan calmed down a little. He begins to touch himself and realizes that he seems to be alive. He seems very surprised to realize this, because it seemed to him that everything would end very badly for him. 
He begins to examine himself from his feet to his very head. He is now very shocked and in bewilderment. It seems to him that he has lost touch with reality, and apparently it was all just a dream. In the next chapter, you can see how our main character continues to sit on the ground in bewilderment. He still does not understand what is happening to him, and next to him lies the very unusual sword that interacted with him. The black-haired man turned his attention to this sword. He carefully examines it and cannot understand where it came from. He really wants to find the answer to this question, because this sword is really very strange. While he continues to look at the sword, he gets the feeling that he wants to touch it. He understands that this blade has come out of that very hilt and is now a full-fledged sword that can be used. The black-haired man began to slowly bring his hand closer to the sword, but he turned his attention to something strange and stopped abruptly. It seemed to him that the sword was moving, and he did not understand how this was possible. He moved his hand away from the sword. It seems that he is a little scared. He looks at the sword from a distance and cannot believe that the sword began to move because it is an inanimate object. Then he decides to try something. He uses his hand for this and notice that after this the sword began to move. He is very happy because he feels a kinship with the sword, like a feeling of his own flesh. The guy realized that he could somehow interact with this sword, so he put two of his fingers forward and with a sharp movement raised them up. This affected the sword and he rose into his arms. Having already raised the sword in his hands, Ye Xiao Huan understands that this sword is an extension of his hand and it moves at the behest of his heart. He has acquired a magic sword. Now the feeling of kinship has become even greater and is ready to come out. In addition, the guy understands that he has reached the boundaries of the fifth level of Kunu, so he, raising his sword upward with joy, begins to laugh loudly, considering himself the coolest on the entire planet Earth. While the guy is jumping for joy, realizing that now thanks to the sword he will be able to fly and move in the skies, he is followed by a pelican, who begins to laugh awkwardly and thinks that this guy has gone crazy. A couple of moments later, Ye Xiao Huan decides to try out the sword flying technique in action. He stood on it and took off and was very surprised that he succeeded. Even the pelican himself looked at him in shock. The smile on the black-haired man's face is not going to subside. He is very happy about these events and, having tried flying on a sword, he realized that the feeling of flying is really pleasant and can be useful in the future. While Ye Xiao Huan continued to fly on his sword and enjoy life, suddenly a mountain stood in his way. Due to his inexperience, he could not do anything about it and simply crashed into it. The pelican felt ashamed of him. This loser, having crashed into a mountain, rolled down it for some time, experiencing pain. At the end of the road, he fell face first into the grass near the pelican, and this bird continues to watch him because it is interested in what will happen next. Yasha Huan, having rolled down shamefully, continues to lie on the ground. He is now very embarrassed, and he understands that he needs more practice to learn how to fly, otherwise people will laugh at him. Lying on the ground, he paid attention to his sword and noticed some strange hieroglyphs on it. He decides to read them and understands that it says Ufen, but it is not yet known what it means. It is clear that his mood suddenly worsened, probably due to the fall. He continues to look at the sword and thinks that this is the name of this magic sword. He understands that it suits him quite well, and he himself also liked it. And then suddenly something came into his head. He thought about something, remembering how Ufen had previously been without a blade. It is not yet clear what came into the mind of this black-haired genius. He begins to look at the sword and strokes its blade. He begins to think that this magical sword Ufen is different from others. Perhaps it has a shrinking blade, and this makes it unique from others. While he was stroking this blade with his gentle hands, he decided to check something. Starting to smile like a fool, he ordered his blade to disappear, and you can see how it begins to slowly disappear. He was very happy to see that the sword listened to his commands. He then decides to test something similar again, and orders the blade to be drawn and hopes that it will work. It is clear that the blade once again listened to the guy. He moved forward quickly enough and Ye Xiao Huan realizes that this blade is really under his possession and this cannot but please him. Convinced of his coolness, this guy begins to smile very slyly. He thinks that with such skills he is not afraid of more than one enemy and now absolutely everyone will be afraid of him. From the outside, you can see how Ye Xiao Huan begins to rejoice greatly and jump on the spot again. He understands that he has already reached the highest degree of development and it seems that he has become stronger than he was before. In the next chapter, the events that take place in the Qingluan gazebo are visible. We can see Yun Chu, who mysteriously sits in place and silently looks into the distance, thinking about something. It seems that she is sad. While she was sitting calmly in her gazebo all alone, something caught his attention very close to her. From her reaction, it is clear that she is not at all scared, which means that there is something good there. 
This turned out to be some red-haired girl. Apparently these two are familiar and know each other well. The red-haired one says that she thought that the green-haired one was sitting here. Obviously, this is her favorite place. It turned out that this red-haired girl is the senior disciple of the great Jing Shui mentor named Ning Xiangzhe. She came here right now for some purpose, and therefore she needed Yun Chu. The green-haired girl continues to sit in her place, and with a sad face asks the girl why they came here. She quickly wants to find out the true reason, because her peace has already been interrupted. Ning Xiangji, coming closer, tells her that the mentor has already told her that a few days ago, she tried to do the Beidou magic sword technique, but again, it didn't work out. Next, the red-haired girl sits down next to this girl and says that the mentor knows that Yun Xiu is quite closed and is worried that she will take everything too personally, so the red-haired girl wants to talk to her. The blue-haired girl began to smile slightly, turning to her sister. She thanks her for her care. She also tells her that she did not live up to her own expectations and also disappointed her mentor. Red hair didn't like her words, calling her stupid. She doesn't understand why her friend says this because she became a mentor student at the age of 12, and now she's 23, so she's still young. Ning Xiangzhe, despite the fact that she has been studying with her mentor for about 30 years, her cultivation is worse than that of the blue haired one. The mentor will love Yun Chu regardless of whether she has achieved results today or in the future. But still, she understands that in less than two months she will pass a great test for the students. If she does not find a way to master the Beidou magic sword technique, she will not be able to defeat the ancient chi sword of her elder brother. Clenching her fist, the girl with sadness on her face understands that he promised her mentor that this time he would definitely take first place. But she has problems, and it is very difficult for her to cope with them. Ning Sangji noticed that her friend clenched her fist and still couldn't come to her senses, so she, like a true friend, decided to support her and grabbed her hand, saying that she was very ambitious. Holding her hand, she says that the elder brother is the senior disciple of the main mentor. After a while, he will take charge of the entire Kang Yun school, and does she want to compete with him for first place? In addition, the competition is only to select candidates for a magical battle right on the rock that breaks the skies, so it is enough to hit the set number. Moreover, she has a chance of defeating her elder brother. The blue-haired girl listened to the words of her friend, then decides to say something on her own, and tells her that her older brother has been studying Tao for many years, and receives deep knowledge directly from the older mentor. She considers herself worse than him. Ning Xiangji continues to try to console her friend. She asks her not to talk like that, while improving the technique of the magic sword Beidou. She got hurt, so the red-haired woman wonders how she feels now. Next, Jun Ziyu, having listened to the words and question of her sister, began to smile slightly, expressing her joy. She thanks her friend for her concern, and tells her that she is fine now, so there is no need to worry. After this dialogue, they sat silently together for a while, after which the blue-haired girl remembered something and wanted to tell her. Ning Xiangji understood this, and became very interested, wanting to listen to her. It turned out that Yun Si remembered about our main character, who recently saved her from death near the mountains. She turns to the red-haired girl and asks her if she knows a man named Ye Xiao Huan. It seems that the main character has a really bad reputation among the locals, and everyone knows him as a bad person. It is clear that Ning Xiangzhe tensed up immediately after the question and wondered why she was asking about him. The red-haired woman's face suddenly became more serious. She knows very well that Ye Xiao Huan is like that and thinks that she offended Yun Si or stole something from her. She promises to deal with him properly. The blue-haired girl saw the expression on her sister's face and decided to immediately try to calm her down because he didn't do anything wrong. She just met him on the back slope of the cliff thinking over her mistakes. The red-haired girl listened to her and understood everything, but still warns her friend that Ye Xiao Huan is a scoundrel and a completely indecent person so it's better not to mess with him. Yun Kyo is now at a loss. She doesn't understand why they are talking about him like that after all. Ye Xiao Huan is Kang Yun's student, and she doesn't know the reason why absolutely everyone around him calls him an insidious person. In the next chapter, we see how the dialogue between these two girls still continues. The red-haired one says that Jun Xiu has never been interested in the affairs of the school before, but she still decides to tell her about this person. And while the red-haired woman began to tell her friend about Ye Xiao Huan, we again see our main character, who is now sitting in the lotus position and, as usual, meditating, because he wants to become better. While the black-haired man, sitting all alone, continued to meditate, nothing foreshadowed trouble. But he suddenly began to sneeze. He sneezed about two times, and apparently this did not happen for nothing. He understands that these sneezes are not because he has a cold. He realizes that right now in the middle of the night someone decided to gossip about him. Obviously, these are the same two girls in the gazebo. 
but he does not know this yet. About half a month has already passed. We see the black-haired man meditating as usual. It is already clear that the guy is serious and wants to become very strong in order to show all his enemies who is in charge. Suddenly, a luminous sphere appears between his hands. He feels it, and its light is reflected from his face. He understands that for a long time, he has been improving himself by turning to the fundamental book. The black-haired man realizes that having crossed the threshold of the fifth level of Kuwu, improvement is rapidly accelerating. This cannot but please him, because he will be able to improve his abilities even more quickly. Ye Huan is a 38th generation student of the Kang Yun School, who purely by chance received the ancient secret formulas engraved by the founder of the school. The student will definitely follow the founder's last wish and become a demon slayer. We see how the guy looks at the hieroglyphs today. In order to prevent the leakage of the supernatural insights of Tsang Yun, the student creaking his heart must break the fundamental ancient book. Looking at the hieroglyphs, he asks the founder not to worry. Because the student has memorized every hieroglyph, later he will definitely pass on this knowledge to the senior mentor. This knowledge will forever pass from mouth to mouth. Next, the guy called on his magic sword Ufen, and it seemed as if the whole thing began to glow. After which he swung his sword right at this stone, on which there were strange hieroglyphs, and it seemed that this rock would be bad. We can see how with just one powerful blow of the magic sword, the main character was able to break this rock into small pieces. It seems that he is pleased with himself and his high strength, and he also did what he had to do. After some time, the events are transferred to the Qing Shi path. We see the sun shining all around, beautiful tall and green trees are visible, and Yun Shu herself walks along this path heading somewhere. While she silently continues to walk along this path, a man begins to meet her. This man turned out to be Sun Yao himself. He saw her and immediately recognized Yun Chu in her and was surprised at her appearance. They walk very close to each other and don't pay much attention to each other. The guy looks at her excitedly and sees that she is still as cold as water. She ignores him as usual, so he has no need to say hello. But then suddenly, the blue-haired girl gained strength and decided to turn to this guy with some question. She said his name. He heard it and was very surprised because she usually ignores him. He is interested in what she wants. He turns around and asks her if she really called him. He is still in shock that Yun Tzu spoke to him for the first time on her own initiative. Now the guy is very worried. After attracting his attention, she wants to know if he is in charge of Ye Huan's daily meals at school, who is now on the cliff of thinking about his own mistakes. She seems to not like something. Sun Yao thinks that Ye Huan was disrespectful to her. He asks her not to worry because he will make him suffer thoroughly on the rock of thinking about his own mistakes so that he does not do this again. The girl tells him that he misunderstood. After all, Ye Xiaohuan was very kind to her, and she does not want to remain in debt. She wants him to secretly show him a little good treatment. This surprises Sun Yao. The guy continues to look at this beautiful girl who asks to fulfill her request. He just silently looks at her and remains silent. It seems that he wants to do something bad to the guy, but he also cannot refuse the girl. Sun Yao, embarrassed, tells her that this is a trivial matter. Since Yun Zhu already asked him to do this, he will try his best to satisfy her desire. Apparently, he respects her. The blue-haired girl heard what she wanted to hear all this time. She was convinced that he would do good to Ye Xiaohuan, after which she thanked him and began to move on with her business, and he looked after her. Meanwhile, we return to the main character, who is still standing on his rock. It can be seen that it has already begun to snow. And right now, he is standing and just looking into the distance, not understanding what is happening at all. You can see how he continues to sit in one place. Still in his favorite lotus position, he sits silently and is bored, after which he clings to the ground with his hands to take something he needs. It turned out that the main character just grabbed the snow and began to eat it. He understands that he is doing this because of Sun Yao, because this bastard does not send him a pelican with food for some reason, so he has to eat snow. In the next chapter, we see Ye Xiao Huan Yu, who is whining right now, because no matter how much his cultivation level has increased, he is still alone and he needs to eat. He wants this pelican to come as soon as possible. Then the black-haired man begins to look into the distance and thinks, it seems to him that it's already noon, but the pelican still hasn't arrived, although it should have. So at this rate, he might die of hunger. After some time, he notices this nasty bird in the sky. He points his finger at it and screams, not understanding why it flew to him so late. He promises to tear off his beak next time and eat it if this happens again. The pelican listened to the words of the protagonist and seemed to understand what he meant. From the sly look of this bird, one can now understand that she has completely different plans for Ye Xiaohuan because she did not like these words. As expected, the pelican wants this guy to respect him, 
so he begins to fly away from him, and the helpless black-haired one can only stand still and wait for some miracle. Because of the actions of this impudent bird, the black-haired man became seriously angry. He thinks that the pelican decided to play a game with him. So in order to look intimidating, he takes out his sword and orders the bird to fly towards him faster. Then the black-haired man became sad. He immediately put away his sword. Because he understands that this bad bird can get angry and throw away the food, then he will definitely remain hungry, and no one knows when he will eat next. Ye Xiaohuan realized what a mistake he made, so he begins to call the pelican back, but this time more politely, he says that it was all just a joke and asks for forgiveness, after which he asks to come down to him. From the side you can see how the bird continues to mock this black-haired loser, and he in turn continues to stand and wait, with his arms stretched up trying to call this bird to him so that it will come down. Further, the events are already transferred to a completely different place. We again see the already familiar Xiao Chai, who is holding a ball in her hands and is very happy. She is playing with her monkeys and is going to throw the ball to them. She threw her ball right in the face of one of the monkeys and asked her to be careful, but it was too late. The ball hit the monkey's face hard enough that she almost fell off her feet. Still, it is further seen that the sad monkey fell off his feet and was left with a dent from the ball on his face. And this blonde, on the contrary, only had more fun. Apparently, she does not realize that she hurt her friend. But then it is clear that several swords begin to fly towards the girl. It is also clear that she is no longer laughing, and right now she is about to take the blow. Apparently, the monkeys decided to take revenge on her. However, these swords do not cause her any damage. She is still having fun, and she starts laughing. Realizing this, she tells the disgruntled monkeys to continue, because the game really seems fun to her. But suddenly, Xiao Qi turned her attention to something unusual. The smile on her face immediately disappeared, and she asked the monkeys to stop for a while. They were at a loss and did not understand what was happening. Suddenly, the joyful blonde begins to smell some pleasant smell and looks straight up. She realizes that it is the smell of fried chicken, which means there will soon be a very tasty lunch. Meanwhile, we return straight to our main character, who is still trying to negotiate with this bird. He calls it smart and obedient, after which it throws down the basket. The black-haired man saw how the pelican finally let go of this basket, and he could enjoy what was inside. He now smelled the smell of fried chicken, and it seemed to him that he had gone crazy from hunger. The curious main character looks inside the box and notices something unusual there, but is very surprised and perplexed. Apparently, he does not yet understand what is going on inside. Unexpectedly, he saw inside a whole fried chicken and pies that were already familiar to him. He does not believe that this time they gave him expensive food, he thinks that there is some kind of catch here, and they decided to play a trick on him. However, he, being very joyful, decides to start the meal anyway. He took the bottle of drink and drank a little from it. He thought it was too tasty, and he simply cannot keep the smile on his face. He still doesn't believe that Sun Yao could have prepared this for him. Most likely, someone else did it for him. He thinks that this pelican received the wrong basket, and perhaps this is so in his opinion. Ye Xiaonuan decided that now is not the time to blow it off, so he decides to just start eating his delicious cooked chicken and then think about various questions on a full stomach. He was about to take the very first tasty morsel of this delicious chicken, but someone at a very high speed was able to take this food right from under his nose, and he was perplexed by this. Although it was quite late, he realized that his fried chicken had already disappeared and he couldn't even take a bite. He didn't understand how it could disappear somewhere so quickly. Already in the next chapter, we see a black-haired man who is sad right now because his chicken has disappeared somewhere. He does not understand what is wrong with it now, because someone destroyed his dream of eating it. Suddenly, he turns his attention to some strange sounds. It seems that he hears someone eating his chicken, because this person says that it's tasty enough for him. The black-haired man wonders who is there. It turned out that it was Xiao Qi. She quickly took his fried chicken from the guy, climbed a tree, and began to eat it with appetite, saying out loud that it was delicious for her. Ye Xiaohuan looked at her in horror. Seeing her, the main character simply lost his temper. Realizing that she was eating chicken, which he should be eating now, the guy points his finger at her, asks who she is and why she stole his chicken. She stopped and stopped eating, wanting to answer his question. Xiao Qi says that this chicken is not his at all because his name is not written on it. And since he is in her hands, it means it is now hers. These words from the self-confident girl greatly infuriated the black-haired man. He wants to say something bad but does not say it because he considers himself a cultured person and the blonde sits in her place. The dissatisfied loser, the main character just continues to silently watch as this thief eats his chicken while he is too hungry and the girl doesn't care about him. She is glad that she is eating now. She begins to slurp appetizingly and simply teases this guy but he still looks and thinks that if he had seen such a beautiful girl before, he would not care about this chicken even if she was his. 
Yixiao Huan completely lost his temper, and clenching his fist realizes that he has been in this godforsaken place for two weeks, and today he received meat for the first time, and she brazenly took it from him. He begins to slowly and threateningly approach her, saying that she decided to rob Ye Xiao Huan himself, without even asking him to share, so now he's going to beat her up. The girl paid attention to his words. Suddenly, the girl suddenly jumped off the tree, hearing his name. The green-eyed man paid attention to her actions and does not understand what is happening now, and she only decides to clarify with him what he just said. She, being very joyful, approached him and reminds him that he called himself Ye Xiao Huan, Apparently, she began to remember how she picked up a baby in her yard several years ago. The black-haired man decided to take advantage of the moment while this strange girl was thinking and in her thoughts. So with a sharp movement, he took his chicken from her hands and said that it was him. The little fox girl still can't believe his words, just in case. She decides to check with him again whether he really is Ye Xiao Huan. And while eating the chicken, he repeats that yes, it's him. Xiao Qi is now completely delighted. She is very happy. Because she understands what kind of Ye Xiao Huan this is, she decides to clarify with him whether he really is Ye Xiao Huan once again, getting on the guy's nerves. Black Haired is infuriated by the fact that he is distracted and not allowed to eat his chicken. Being dissatisfied, he already thinks that she is deaf and asks who she is, thinking that she is from Song Yun. It seems to him that he has not seen her before. The blonde doesn't believe that he really doesn't remember her. She says that she is his sister Xiao Qi and that she found him 15 years ago and picked him up. She asks him to take a good look at her. But the black-haired Sigma doesn't care about this at all. He is only afraid of losing his kilograms of weight and continues to eat his chicken, but still decides to clarify what she means when she says that she picked him up earlier. She answers his question, once again saying that she picked him up and that he was in only rags. Then he was taken to the Kang Yun sect. It seems that Ye Xiao Huan is interested in her words. Xiao Qi also remembered something. She asked to look at this jade on her neck. It was on him when she found it, she should have also asked, but he always rejected it, so she kept this thing for herself. Next, the blonde begins to silently look at this guy, expecting some kind of reaction from him, and he, in turn, looks at her back and doesn't even know what to say. He doesn't seem to understand what's happening. Ye Xiao Huan still didn't believe Xiao Qi's words. He considers them nonsense and just continues to eat his delicious chicken. The fox girl is shocked that he didn't believe her because she so hoped that it would be the other way around. She, in bewilderment, continues to look at the guy. She does not understand why he does not remember her, because only 15 years have passed since the last meeting. And in her opinion, this is a short time. And then the main character, wanting to completely finish his chicken, decides to leave this place thinking that she is some kind of abnormal, but she does not intend to let him go and, grabbing his hand, clarifies whether he really does not remember her. In the next chapter, we see that the guy thinks that little sister is teasing him. It seems to him that they are almost the same age, and if 15 years ago he was a baby, then that means she too, which means she couldn't pick him up. After answering the question, he begins to leave this place, and on the way says that, besides, if they saw each other 15 years ago, then he was only a couple of months old then. Because of this, he does not remember anything at all. The blonde begins to remember something. She realizes that people only remember moments that occur from the age of five or six, so Xiao Qi seems to have realized the true reason why he cannot recognize her. She starts touching him and tells Ye Xiao Huan that it doesn't matter whether he remembers her or not. Everything she just said is true. She didn't expect him to grow up like that. Little sister didn't even recognize him. However, the main character is unhappy that he is being touched right now. So with one sharp movement, he pushes her aside from him and asks her to stop. He says that she is not older than him and asks her to stop deceiving. Xiao Qi saw Ye Xiao Huan's displeasure. Even despite his behavior, she remains joyful and wants to appease him in some way, so she says that she can also be a little sister. Immediately after these words, she rushes into his arms and, hugging the guy, addresses him in some seductive way. The black-haired man is shocked by this and does not understand how to react to this. The embarrassed main character never expected that he would have a little fan. He understands that she won't leave him so easily, and apparently he will have to spend the near future with her. Next, the main character grabs the girl by the shoulders and tells her that from now on, if someone offends her, pesters her, or harasses her, then let him tell his brother their names. She understood him and will do so. A moment later, the blonde looks at a whole piece of chicken and tells her brother that she also wants to try a tasty piece of chicken and also wants to eat. The guy decides to share with her because she is now his little sister. He tore off a leg from a whole chicken and, although with a dissatisfied face, still decides to share it with her. He passes this leg to her, and for now she just looks at it, realizing that there is very little meat there. Xiao Qi ate this leg almost instantly and began to hold the remaining bone right in his mouth. She is a little dissatisfied and tells Ye Xiao Huan that this is not enough. 
and she wants to eat more legs. The dissatisfied black-haired man tells her that if she eats more, she will get fat and become the final boss of the KFS. At the age of 15, he understands that girls like to pretend to be unhappy, but still decides to share with her. She was very happy, and one gets the feeling that she was really pretending to be unhappy. She considers it wonderful that he still decided to share with her. She laughs loudly, expressing her happiness. The blonde immediately hugs the guy with joy and kisses him right on the cheek. It is clear that he did not expect such a turn of events and is very surprised by her actions. He does not know what to do in such a situation and simply froze in place. Yishaonuan grabbed his hand at the place where the girl decided to kiss him. She considers him the best brother, and the black-haired man was embarrassed after the kiss, and being red just stands and is silent. The main character has never moved away from the past. He thinks that this can be considered his first kiss or not, because it may not even be a real kiss at all, but just on the cheek. The girl, eating a chicken leg, turns to her brother and tells him that he learned the secrets of cultivation from the old monk for more than 10 years. She wonders if he has become a master during this time. The spug guy says, of course, supposedly he has become strong. He says that he is the second on the list of the Kang Yun school, and this is only because no one dares to call himself the first. She pretends to admire Ye Xiao Huan. She asks if this is true, and it seems that she wants to listen to a couple more stories from the main character, because she hasn't seen him for a long time and misses him. The black-haired guy thinks that she thinks he's lying and asks her to look at what a cool thing his brother has. He reached into his pocket and is going to show her something he thinks is cool. Xiao Qi all this time thought that this tailed guy would now show her the statistics of his account in the League of Legends. But he took out the magic handle and showed it to her. She was very surprised and wanted to know what it was. In the next chapter, it is clear that the black-haired man decides not to waste time on empty words, but decides to simply show her everything in reality. He gives the command to his sword to draw it, after which the blade comes out. Xiao Qi saw what Ye Xiao Huan did. She looks very surprised, because when she saw how the sword behaved, she immediately realized that this was the long-forgotten Wu Feng sword. She didn't think that she would ever see it with her own eyes. The green-eyed man was a little disappointed. He wanted to surprise her with a couple of his tricks, but it turned out that she knows very well what kind of sword it is and what it is capable of. It is clear that the guy is at a loss because of this. Xiao Qi heard from her mother that the magic sword Wu Fen has the ability to hide the blade. If there is only one like it in the world, this amazing sword does not cast a shadow, destroyed the Zhenqin sword, breaking off the relationship of lovers. Ye Xiao Huan heard too many smart words from this girl. After thinking for a while, he still didn't understand what it all meant, so he decides to clarify the answer to this question with her. She thought about it herself and remembered that her mother said that Wu Fen and Zhenqin are a pair of swords intertwined in three times past, present, and future. She hopes that the guy will understand this. Xiao Chu continues to tell the story. She says that originally 6,000 years ago, the master of the sword Wu Feng, the god Wu Xing, and the mistress of the sword Zhanqin, the goddess Duan Nian, were lovers. But it turned out that fate plays with a person. The goddess Duan Nian made a fatal mistake and plunged into the abyss of evil, becoming a witch. And of course, this action played a bad joke on her. In order for people to live in peace, the god Wu Xing challenged the goddess to battle. In a battle on a rock tearing apart the heavens, god Wu Xing barely won, and since then Wu Fen and Zhanqin disappeared from the face of the earth and were never seen again. Until the founder of the school Kang Yun came here 4,000 years ago and accidentally received the magic sword Zhang Chen. However, the location of the Wu Fen sword was still unknown. The girl was interested in the guy's opinion about this story. Ye Xiaohuan never thought that his Wu Feng sword and the Zhanqin sword, which were in the hands of Yun Chu 6,000 years ago, belonged to such a couple. He understands what it means that most of the teachings left here belong to the owner of the Wu Feng sword, the god Wu Xing. The guy continues to mysteriously look at his sword and understands that now the Yun Chu sword has split the rock and allowed the magic sword Wu Fen to see the sun and sky again, and this is a wonderful coincidence of circumstances. It seems to the black-haired man that everything and everyone in this world has its own destiny. The girl, seeing his strange and thoughtful appearance, decides to come closer to ask what happened to him. He wants to say something, but it seems that it is too difficult for him. Then he tells Xiao Qi that she just said that Wu Fen and Zhang Chen are the swords of lovers. Apparently this means something. Xiao Qi heard his question, and of course answers it. She says that you can say that, but it's not accurate. But Ye Xiao Huan can go and ask her mom, because she knows absolutely everything. He decides to find out where her mother is and thinks that she is also on Mount Kang Yun. Xiao Qi says that this is not so. She left her here, and she went to Mount Liubo, which is near the Eastern Sea, 
to see an old friend. Ye Xiaohuan, after listening to this girl's words, simply hid himself on the street. He doesn't understand why he had to talk about it then, because the mountain is located 30,000 miles from here, and it's not easy to get to it. The blonde with a smile on her face tells the guy not to worry, because her mother said that she would return in early March, before the start of the great competition. Then he could ask her his question. The guy with a serious look grabs her by the shoulder and asks if she is definitely not from the Tsang Yun school, because she is so beautiful. And if she were from the school, he would definitely know her, because he would immediately pay attention. The fox girl smiles after the compliment and tells the guy that she is from Tianqi. This time, the senior mentor invited her mother to watch the competition of the students of the Tsang Yun school. He has now learned the whole truth, but then decides to clarify whether Tianqi is some kind of school, to which he receives a trivial question in response to his question. That Tianqi is Tianqi and nothing more. Then the blonde realizes that it's time for her to return, because it's already late and Grandfather, the Monkey King, will worry about her. Tomorrow she will definitely come here again to walk with Ye Xiaohuan. Unexpectedly for the guy, Xiao Qi, about to walk across a small bridge, simply jumped down and began to fly into the gorge at high speed. From her facial expression, one can understand that this was intended, and he says goodbye to the guy. The black-haired man was very worried, and does not understand why this strange girl flew straight into the gorge, because in his opinion, she lives on the front slope of the mountain, and not in the gorge where she is flying right now. In the next chapter, we again see Xiao Qi, who is slowly and leisurely heading towards her house after a walk with the main character. She remembers how her mother told them to avoid people, foxes. On the way, she also thought about whether Yi Xiaohuan would be friends with her if he found out that she was a three-tailed fox. She was afraid that because of this, he would lose all interest in her and stop caring altogether. These thoughts made her sad. She really likes spending time with the main character, but she is now afraid that he might just forget about her and stop communicating due to the fact that she is not human. But fortunately, the girl decided to think positively. She is confident that he will not ignore her. Because brother Xiao Huan, whom she has not seen for 15 years, has not only grown up, but also become very smart. Meanwhile, we return to our black-haired one, who right now is looking in bewilderment into the gorge into which Xiao Qi just recently jumped. He is surprised that she disappeared quickly enough. He understands that the Kang Yun exam will be held in early March, and now he has already reached the fifth level, he can go and prove himself, he must train well for the next two months. The black-haired man realizes that there is a lot of powerful magical power on the cliff he will cultivate. When the time comes, he will come to the exam and crush everyone, then many students will greet him and all the girls will be his. The joyful guy looks at his sword and wishes to first master the four great magic sword techniques of the Kang Yun sect, barely reaching the fifth level of Kunu. You can already practice the eight types of magic sword. We learn that there are four great magic sword techniques, eight types of magic sword, sword of heaven and earth, Beidu technique, mysterious thunder of the ninth heaven. Eight types of magic sword are divided into the first and four types. The main character, about to pick up his glowing sword, says that he wants to first test the ability to control his sword. He hopes that everything will work out for him, and then he will become stronger without any difficulty. Then he begins, using only the movements of his hand to control this unique sword, he looks very joyful, because everything is starting to work out for him and so far everything is going without any problems. While controlling his sword, he fortunately realizes that this type of sword is light, and his mentor deceived him by saying that it is actually difficult. In his opinion, this old man is only trying to intimidate him. A very joyful hero opens his hands and meanwhile realizes that he does not need to use his hands to control. The magic sword changes direction according to his thoughts. Controlling his hand makes everything worse. Next, he decides to move on to the third type of magic sword, although there is no effect. But this type of illusory sword is very diverse. He decides to use a deceptive tip. A moment later, Ye Xiaohuan walks straight to the edge of the cliff, after which he puts his sword in front of him. Because he is going to use the type of illusory sword, he hopes that everything will work out. He sees that something unusual is happening to the sword. It seems to be starting to glow once again, and the guy understands that everything is working. He thinks it's beautiful, cool, and very amazing. Next, he crosses his legs again and wants to go into meditation to improve yin and yang according to the Andrew Tate method, but the black-haired man doesn't even know what to do next. Continuing to look at the Wufen sword, the smile on the guy's face suddenly fell. He doesn't understand who gave him the teachings of yin and yang. It was a mentor or the mysterious inscriptions on the wall of the mountain. In the next frame, you can see how Ye Xiaohuan finally decided to start his meditation. He sat cross-legged at the foot of the rock and began to silently meditate. He only mooed like a cow. 
But then he asks for forgiveness from his mentor because he must refuse him. If he really wants to rise to the top, then the mysterious inscriptions on the wall of the mountain will be more powerful than the true laws of the school. The main character still continues to ask for forgiveness, this time from the founder. He says that the founder can blame him if he is guilty. Then he wants to be punished right away. The next morning comes. We see how the black-haired man still continues to sit right at the foot of the cliff and meets the sunset. He is finished with his business and understands this with relief. He begins to look at his hand and realizes that this cliff is truly perfect, because after a night of cultivation, he begins to feel a huge amount of strength, considering that he did not even sleep. Suddenly, while the guy was sitting and was in his thoughts, he sees how a pelican flew to him as usual in the morning with a basket of food. He is very interested, because he is hungry and is going to check what is there. Looking inside, to his disappointment, Ye Xiaohuan finds only buns inside. He really wanted meat this time too, and he thinks that today they also made a mistake with the basket. But he's still hungry, so he starts eating these buns and meanwhile thinks that the teacher bribed the cook of the disciplinary school. Then he realized that this couldn't happen, since he drank all the money. In the next chapter, you can see how the black-haired man doesn't care how this happened with his basket of food. He just ate. And most importantly, he's now full and decides to continue his training like a real Giga Chad. He orders his sword to be drawn. The sword, of course, obeyed him, and a whole blade came out of the hilt. The guy pulled the Ufen sword in front of him, tipped forward, and was about to start training. Then, while the black-haired man was doing his training, he suddenly turned his attention to how someone began to praise. Calling Brother Xiao Huan well done, he turned around to check who it was. Turning around, the guy again sees Xiao Qi, who is still sitting on the same tree, realizing that it is still her, the black-haired guy decides to show her a trick to be cool in her eyes. Next, Ye Xiaohuan made a sharp movement with his sword in front of him and shouted loudly. Apparently something unusual and surprising is about to happen because he wants to impress the girl. From the side, you can see how he continues to stand silently in place, pushing his sword forward right in front of him, and a bunch of swords seem to appear around the guy, but they look more like holograms. One gets the feeling that the black-haired man, with his movement, was able to cause some kind of shockwave, which is directed right now in a certain direction. It seems that everything is working out for him. It turned out that this entire hologram was flying straight towards Xiao Chai. She saw this and, being surprised, realized that this illusory sword seemed super powerful, but in fact had no attack power. Then, unexpectedly for the main character, the fox girl simply begins to suck up this wave, which was directed directly at her. It is clear that she does this without any problems at all. It is clear that the black-haired man is very shocked by the actions of this strange girl. He does not understand how this is possible, and it turned out that she was the one who impressed him at the time when he wanted to do it. After this, the blonde just tells the guy with a calm look that it was delicious. He points his finger at her and says that she is unbearable. She destroyed his illusory sword in one go. The fox girl jumps from the tree and, upon landing, tells the main character that the third illusory type of eight swords looks beautiful. It is clear that she has a smile on her face as usual. They stood opposite each other and close enough. Xiao Qi tells him that this technique has no combat power. It just creates the appearance of it. This made the black-haired man suddenly think. The blonde tells the black-haired man that she heard that the strongest techniques of the Kang Yun school are the Beidoi techniques and the mysterious thunder of the ninth heaven. She wants brother Huan to show them to her. It is clear that the guy felt a little awkward and worried because he himself cannot use these two techniques. And if he could, he would not be here, and he would be revered as some kind of deity. The black-haired man continues to silently look at Xiao Qi, and it seems to him that she does not quite understand people, and this does not look like bullying on her part, so everything is fine. He turns to his little sister and tells her that he would like to show them, but the Kang Yun school has a strict rule that these techniques can only be used as a last resort. It is clear that this loser simply wants to embarrass himself. The blonde did not understand him and clarifies the problem. The guy tells her that these two magic sword techniques will bring destruction to the world and harm the one who uses them, so it is very dangerous. So today he is not going to show anything. Maybe sometime in the future, it is clear that the blonde was disappointed after hearing such an answer, because she really wanted to see these techniques. The blonde approaches the main character and her curiosity takes over. She begins to ask Ye Huan a bunch of questions, asking when exactly he will show these techniques tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. The black-haired man, in order to seem cool somewhere, begins to look mysteriously into the distance and understands that these techniques have been studied for decades, and she wants tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, he considers her crazy. 
Next, the dissatisfied protagonist goes away from Xiaoqi and says that he won't say unnecessary words and one of these days he will show these techniques he needs to practice and he asks not to disturb him. Such an answer does not suit the blonde at all. She came here to walk with him and he only drives her away. Xiaoqi tells him that she is angry so the guy should prepare for serious consequences. The guy is already starting to lose his temper. He stopped for a moment and turning his head, tells his little sister that he really needs to train so she should come next time. However, the blonde really looks dissatisfied with the actions of this guy. She needs a specific answer when exactly they will go out together. She asks if it will be tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or maybe some other time. Still, Ye Xiaohuan paid attention to the actions of this fox. He decided to walk with her a little more because she was still able to persuade him. Perhaps he even felt a little sorry for her because she really wants to take a walk. The blonde already liked this. She says that she always knew that her brother was very kind and came close enough to him, and even in this way she was able to embarrass the young guy. He silently looks at her and smiles, but in his head he understands that the rock of thinking about his own mistakes is really a good place. It allowed him not only to do great spiritual kindness, but also to become a better person. The two looked at each other silently for some time, after which the fox invited Ye Xiaohuan to go play, waiting for an answer from him. They also need to decide what exactly they will play. Black-haired feels Xiaoqi grab his hand and remain slightly embarrassed. He sees her desire to play, but tells her that he cannot leave this cliff, so they should play here. Xiaoqi doesn't understand why they should play here, because it's very boring here. She invites the guy to take a walk around Kang Yun Mountain. She heard that the scenery is beautiful there, but she doesn't know why the guy can't leave this place. Meanwhile, the guy realizes that on the back slope of the rock even birds don't shit, and people don't walk at all. He thinks that now he can fly on a sword and doesn't understand why he needs to hang around here all day. The black-haired man with a smile on his face realized that he really could already fly on a sword. From now on, he has no place here, and he leaves this slope. It is clear that the black-haired man is determined. The main character is already about to fly away from this place and tells the girl about this. He has already stood on this sword, and Xiaoqi understands that they will finally be able to walk around a normal place. <laughs> These two have already stood right on the surface of the sword. The pleased Sigma protagonist tells the girl to hold on tight. She grabbed his hand and says that she is already ready to fly, so we can start. The guy, making sure that everything is in order and the girl climbed onto the sword, gives a sharp start right from the spot and took off. The girl was not afraid and she even likes it. It's clear that so far everything is going without any problems. Meanwhile, the monkeys, who are very familiar with Xiaoqi, saw this picture. They are very surprised that their friend is now flying right on the sword. They cannot stop watching it. While these two are in flight and everything is fine with them, meanwhile Xiaoqi notices some beautiful building in the distance and asks brother Xiaohuan to fly there. He of course wants to fulfill her request. However, he won't be able to do this because the main Lunhui Temple and the Lord of the North Square are located there. There are usually many students there, and Xiao Huan is now under arrest, and he is not allowed to meet with them. However, the impudent Xiao Qi says that she doesn't care, and she really wants to take a walk there no matter what. The guy turned his attention to this girl's dissatisfaction and is going to react. In response to her impudence, he reacted calmly, like a real Sigma, and says that a little later they will definitely go there and now he will take her to a place that is much more interesting. Well still, he was able to convince this girl and it happened quite quickly. She agreed to go with him to where he wanted to take her and they already went straight there at high speed. Meanwhile, events are transferred to Yuan Shui's house. We again see Yunsi, who right now is sitting alone in her gazebo and silently and very mysteriously looking at her sword. Then she begins to look at her sword in complete bewilderment as if some strange things are happening to it and she really wants to check why this is happening to him right now. Taking the sword in her hands, she discovers that it seems to emit some kind of mystical power. She remembered how a year ago her mentor gave her this sword, but this had never happened to him before. She continues to hold her sword in her hands and, examining it, tries to understand the reason for its shaking. Meanwhile, a very long trail has formed behind her, as if someone flew there at great speed. It turned out that this trace was left from the Wufen sword on which Xiao Huan and Xiao Qi are flying. The guy says that they have already walked enough, so it's time to return and the girl apparently wants more. When the main character on the sword flew away towards the unit, her sword suddenly stopped moving and behaved calmly again. She still did not understand what could have caused such behavior in the sword. Then the blue-haired girl gets up from her seat and looks around and realizes that everything is quiet all around and nothing unusual is happening. She is also trying to understand what happened to the Janchen. Meanwhile, we return to the main character along with Xiao Qi. Together, they have already flown to the cliff of pondering their actions 
And apparently, right now they will have to separate and meet sometime later. After they returned back, the main character was the first to get off this sword and put his hands forward to help the girl get down, and she in turn looks very unhappy and silently looks at him. She decided to express her sadness and does not hide it at all. She says that they didn't even play anywhere, and because of this, Xiao Qi feels very sad. She is like a small child and wants everyone to satisfy her needs. In the next chapter, it is clear that Xiao Qi is very serious. She jumps back into the gorge in tears and tells the guy that she will offend and will not pay any attention to him. Xiao Huan does not understand anything. The black-haired man, watching how the three-tailed fox flies straight to the bottom of the gorge, understands that one way or another the prisoner shouldn't shout like that. He thinks that she is completely offended by him. But he didn't pay much attention to her strange actions. He only focused on cultivation. The illusory sword type has no power. He practices the fourth style, namely the frozen sword style. Next, you can see how the guy's entire body, along with his sword, simply begins to glow. The black-haired man seeing this is going to draw on genuine spiritual power within himself, hoping that everything will work out for him. Grasping his sword tighter, the black-haired man made some kind of hard blow with a loud scream, and it seems that something is coming out of this. The main character himself seems to be in shock from these actions. With one blow, he caused a lot of damage to a huge rock. Pieces of stones began to come off from it. Seeing this scene, he thinks that this is really cool, and continues to watch this scene. The black-haired man looked at this for a while, and convinced of his coolness, decides to repeat this technique so that he would be sure he wants to take another look at what he is really capable of. Ye Xiao Huan is again preparing to deliver his crushing blow. He raised his sword in front of him and seemed to begin to accumulate some energy, after which he directed this energy forward with a swing of his sword. He further understands that the frozen sword style is very light. He can use this style with several dozen swords. He expects that in three days he will be able to use a hundred swords. Half a month has already passed, we see how the main character stands with his sword and thinks that out of the eight types of magic sword, he has come to understand the sixth type, namely a multi-layered sword, but he also has a goal, namely the sword of heaven and earth. He sharply pulled his sword behind his back and sharply pointed it forward, practicing his next strike to become stronger than he actually is. With this very blow, the main character was able to cause enormous damage to an entire rock. You can see the debris flying around, and you can understand that so much time has not passed in vain, and he was really able to become stronger. The black-haired man sees that the sword of heaven and earth is really difficult to cultivate. The notes in the book say that the thinner the power of the sword's tip, the greater it is when you cultivate to the highest limit, the radiance of the sword is shallow and swift. Ye Xiaohuan understands that even though he hit the rock now, he still only made a small hole in it. Even though the blow initially seemed quite powerful, he wants to become stronger. The main character takes his sword and raises it in front of him. Starting to examine it, he believes that it doesn't matter. On the contrary, there is still time before the end of his term, so he will continue to practice. The black-haired strongman continues to hit the rock, showing it who is boss. He continues to practice so that in the future, he will show everyone in the competition who is the toughest. Meanwhile, while the black-haired man was still practicing, he heard someone's very familiar voice turning to him, asking him to stop practicing the sword technique. He was going to see who it was. It turned out to be Xiao Qi. She sits on a tree and tells him to look at what she said looks just like a person with smallpox. So she invites him to eat fruit and rest. The guy is surprised that she returned. You can see how Xiao Qi decides to show real concern for her brother. She throws some kind of fruit towards him. He catches it and, having examined it, does not understand what kind of fruit it is because he has never seen anything like this before. Green-eyed examining this fruit understands that although it is small, there is some kind of divine power inside. He thinks that this fruit is magical and is already about to take the first bite. A moment later, the black-haired man managed to deal with this fruit. He realizes how tasty it is and, chewing the rest, reaches out his hand forward and asks the fox girl for more because he really liked it. The blonde tells him that the grandfather Monkey King used these fruits to make fruit wine and she stole two pieces, one for herself and another for this guy. She says that there are plenty of them there. The black-haired man understood everything and decided not to ask too many questions about Xiao Qi. At the moment, the two of them just stand silently and look at each other and it is unknown what is going on in their minds now. Next, the main character grabs his stomach and realizes that a warm airflow is wandering there, all of which he managed to improve with meditation for half a month and, apparently, it's great. In the next chapter, you can see how the black-haired man, turning to the girl, still decides to ask her to steal more of these fruits from her grandfather. When she has time, if he eats 100 of them, he will reach the seventh level of skill. 
In response to Ye Xiaohuan, the fox girl only sticks her tongue out at this loser. She despises such actions and tells the guy that she will not do this, because if she is caught doing this, she will be severely punished. In addition, her mother often said that divine magic herbs are always guarded by wickedness. As far as she knows, in the Kangyun Mountains, there is only one place where the red fruit is located, but it is guarded by a terrible beast. Crossing her arms, the blonde tells the guy that trying to get this fruit, many monkeys die every year. She stole it so that he could just try it and be satisfied, but she is not going to take it anymore. The black-haired man decided to show himself from a very bad side and decided to set conditions for the girl. He says that if she does not want to bring him these fruits, she should not come back here again. The girl was angry with these words. The dissatisfied girl answers him and says that she will leave. She is still bored here, so she will go to the mountain valley and find monkeys to play with them and let the guy sit here alone. After these words, Xiao Qi simply took it and silently jumped into the gorge. She decided not to say anything, and the main character at that moment pretended to ignore her, although he was spying on her with one eye. Ye Huan started meditating again. He realizes that this fruit is really good. It contains a lot of spiritual power. After eating it, he almost immediately reached the middle boundaries of the soul. After some time, the dark time of the day comes. We see Ye Huan, who has been meditating from morning to night, he, having finished doing this, simply opens his eyes and is very pleased with himself. Suddenly for him, the union itself appeared in front of his face, which apparently was waiting for him to wake up and now she looks straight into his eyes silently and with a very creepy look. Apparently she needs something from him. When the black-haired man already realized what was happening, he was very frightened because she, like a woman under the cover of darkness, suddenly appeared in front of her. He does not understand why she showed up in this way. Next, you can see how the blue-haired girl noticed how scared this guy was and is now lying on the floor. She continues to stand calmly and thinks that he simply did not recognize her. And Ye Huan is only silently trying to understand what she needs. The guy still lying on the floor looks at her and does not understand how she, being Yoon's senior student, does not sleep at night and also asks directly why she came to him on the back slope of the mountain. She decides to answer his question. She says that she came here to enjoy the silence she did not think that she would find him on the slope of thinking about the mistakes he had made, but apparently they will now have to spend time together. The black-haired man listened to her words, and in his opinion, she thinks that he is sitting here on purpose and is not serving a sentence at all. He tells her that three months have not yet passed. That's why he is sitting right here. Next, Yunshu turns her attention to some cuts on the rock. She, having experience, immediately realized that this is the sword of heaven and earth and believes that the guy is growing quickly. She understands that he has learned the basics and has high knowledge. The girl looks thoughtfully at one point. She understands that only two months have passed, and Ye Huan has already reached the boundaries of the sixth level. Meanwhile, the black-haired man does not understand what she is looking at right now. The blue-haired girl decides with a serious face to check with this guy whether he made these big holes right in the mountain. She is very interested in this, and perhaps she wants to say a few words about this moment. The main character, very pleased with himself, begins to smile and points a finger at himself. He says that it was he who did this, because he trained a lot all this time, and because of this he is very proud of himself. The girl listened carefully to this guy, after which she begins to look at him very threateningly and says nothing at all. The black-haired man paid attention to this and does not understand what is happening to her. Ye Huan sees that Yun Zhu is not going to stop and continues to look at the guy with his menacing gaze. It is clear that he has already begun to worry and ask her not to look so menacingly. She finally speaks to the guy and says that he really deserves to be Master Zui's student. Few people can succeed like that. He must have learned his mentor's lessons well. That's why he is developing so quickly. Yun Qiu's words seemed slightly illogical. He believes that she is a little mistaken because his mentor is useless and in Ye Huan's opinion, he is far from the level of her mentor. After the words of the main character, the blue-haired girl suddenly begins to silently leave this place. She mysteriously leaves this guy, and the black-haired one, in turn, just does not understand what she is doing. Then the blue-haired girl with an important look turns to Ye Huan and says that it is he who is mistaken, not she. It is clear that she did not like the fact that this fool was saying such things about his mentor. He should be more respectful. The green-eyed man finally waited for an answer from the girl, but it seemed a little strange to him. The guy with a serious look decides to ask her what he's really wrong about because he's very interested. The next chapter shows how Yun Qing begins to explain everything to him. She says that now many young students of the Yun school do not know the history of the older generation. Because of this, there are often misconceptions about them. 
She begins to tell the story and says that for 300 years, Mentor Zui was a master known to everyone in the world. Only three people can be called first-class masters, the head of the school, Qi Yan, and mentor, Ye Xiaohuan. We also learn that more than 300 years ago, Master Zui single-handedly fought against the three great ancestors of the demonic sect. One can only imagine how strong he really is to be capable of such a thing. However, the guy could not be convinced in this way. He is now in deep misunderstanding. He thinks that Sister Yun is joking in this way because he knows his mentor as an old drunkard and nothing more. She tells the guy that mentor Zui was never interested in fame and money, but among the older generation, everyone knows the truth. It can be seen how Yun Chu is still trying to prove to the main character that he is wrong. The two of them continue to stand silently and look at each other. The black-haired man, meanwhile, thought, after the words of this beautiful girl, he begins to quietly consider his mentor Zui to be really so incomparable. The green-eyed man still spends time in his thoughts. He believes that since he is such an eminent master, he should have taught him the fifth level of Kun. But he did not do this. And as a result, Ye Xiaohuan stumbled upon the ancient inscriptions. The main character continues to look directly at the girl and think about his mentor. He now believes that perhaps his master is really a very stupid person, but only he now doubts about it. Yunqing also silently looks at the guy. She is forced to admit that his speed of improvement surprised her. However, judging by the technique of heaven and earth, he is still far from her, and he should train more. All after a minute of silence, the blue-haired girl tells the main character that she is going to leave. Her words brought the guy to his senses, who was still in his thoughts. Apparently, they will have to say goodbye. Ye Xiaohuan, realizing that the girl is already about to leave here, attracts her attention and asks her not to leave because he wants to tell her something, but cannot. Yun Xiu turned to him and says that in this case, he should not speak. From such a daring answer, the black-haired man suddenly fell into a stupor. He completely forgot what he wanted to say earlier, and now simply looks after her, realizing that she is again not playing by the rules. Next, the main character decides to have some influence on this girl. He crossed his arms, pretending that he doesn't care, and says that if he doesn't want to listen, then don't, and let him forget about it. It is clear that these words somehow affected the blue-haired girl. She, surprised, stops and turns to the guy, thinking that he dares to order her what to do. Black-haired understands that over the past two months, Yunju has not achieved significant success. In his opinion, she came to the back slope of the mountain to again practice the Beidou magic sword technique alone. He asks why she always looks down on everyone. He sees that her cultivation is still far away and has not yet reached the heights of the eighth level spiritual power. The guy wants to help her learn the Beidou technique, but then he decides to make sure that she runs after him and not vice versa, he begins to slowly leave this place and tells her that since she looks down on everyone, then let her just forget and just leave. It is clear that the main character still managed to interest this girl. She wants to clarify with him whether it is possible to learn Beidou without reaching the eighth level. He heard this question, stopped, and said that it was possible. Hearing the answer, the girl immediately thought about it. She of course believed that this guy was worthless, but who would have thought that he would make such impudent statements? She believes that she did not need to visit him. Further, one gets the feeling that the blue-haired woman has lost all interest in this guy. She says that she has no time for useless conversations, after which she's going to leave. These words had an effect on the guy. This genius decides to offer something to Yun Xu. He turns to her with an insidious smile and offers to make a bet. While it is generally unknown what is on this fool's mind now, it can be seen how the main character, with his words about the bet, awakened something in this girl. She stopped and slowly turned to him with a very embittered face, asking what he just said. In the next chapter, a girl with a very threatening look pointed her sword right at this guy. He noticed this and didn't even flinch. He lets her know that in this way she won't be able to scare him. Then the main character begins to smile in the eyes of this cruel girl. It seems to him that she never dares to make a bet with him. She silently looks at him and does not understand how he can be so cheerful in this situation. She realized that he was serious and still decided to make a bet with this fool. She decided to immediately risk their lives. If he did not figure out how she could control the Beidou magic sword technique, she would kill him. Yuni continues to talk about his bet. She also says, if he finds a way and helps her, then her life will belong only to him. The black-haired man only listens to her with a calm face. It's clear that the main character has already lost his temper. He doesn't understand why he needs to bet his life, to which the blue-haired girl just throws up her hands and says that it's all because she doesn't have money. Hearing her answer, the black-haired man only slaps himself in the face. 
He thinks that in this case they shouldn't make such serious bets and seems to be already beginning to regret that he even offered her to make a bet. But still, he decides to offer something else, less serious, and invites her to do so. Namely, if he can help her, then he will not promise him something. He is now interested in her opinion about this bet. She hasn't said anything special about this yet. She just wondered what exactly she would have to promise him. But Ye Xiaohuan doesn't know yet because he didn't come up with it. So he'll tell her later. Yunkyo once again convinces that this guy is a complete fool. Now she just looks at him silently and wonders what kind of nonsense he will come up with this time and next time too. But even despite this, the blue-haired girl still decides to agree to this bet, because she is already sure that nothing will work out for the main character, and he will make a mistake, as usual. The black-haired man noticed the self-confidence of the blue-haired girl. He doesn't understand why she thinks that he won't succeed at all. She now looks dissatisfied. Next, Ye Xiaohuan sits down at the very edge of the cliff and asks the girl to do the same. She looks at him and can't understand what he's up to this time, and therefore doesn't know what to expect from him. It seems that the girl will now decide to sit next to him, but before that she wants to tell him something and is trying to formulate her thoughts on this matter, she seems to be at a loss now. Still, she decided to sit next to the guy, but looking at him she says that if he decided to fool her in order to admire the moon together, then his death will be painful. Ye Xiaohuan asks her to calm down. They have been sitting next to each other for some time. The guy decides to ask her a question and says, if she knows about the power of the heavenly bodies, the girl listened to his question and thought about it right now. It turned out that she knows the answer to this question and tells the guy that the Beidou magic sword technique is realized thanks to the power of the heavenly bodies. She considers this knowledge to be the most basic and it would be wrong not to know. The green-eyed one listened to her and continuing to look straight into the heavens with an admiring look was then going to ask her something again. Namely, what is the power of the heavenly bodies? It seems that the girl was very confused after this question. She started out confidently, but then she began to stutter and in the end stopped completely. The guy noticed this and already understood everything and decides to act. Ye Xiaohuan realized that she does not know the answer to this question. So he, being joyful, understands that he can explain everything and give an answer to the question. And he also does not understand how to use a sword without knowing its essence. Next, the main character suddenly throws his sword forward and jumps from the edge of the cliff directly onto him. The girl decides at that moment to ask her question about what the power of the heavenly bodies is. The guy, already landing on his sword, heard a question from her side. He understands that this is an ideal opportunity for him to show his knowledge and teach this girl something new, so he will give her the answer. Standing on his sword, the guy happily answers her question. He spread his arms in different directions and with a smile on his face tells the girl that this is the negative aura of this earth. One gets the feeling that the girl has already understood everything. However, the blue-haired girl begins to think that this is all some kind of nonsense. In her opinion, a negative aura, these are toys used by the forces, it seems to her that Ye Xiaohuan is just going to fool her and confuse her. She says that the Beidou magic sword technique is the highest secret of the fencing art of the Kang Yun school. She does not understand how it can develop with the help of a negative aura. The main character decides to give her an answer to this question as well. He says that the earth was originally a heavenly body, and the negative aura of the earth is the power of the heavenly body. The girl listens to this narrator with interest. It is clear that excitement is painted on Jun Chu's face. She understands that the earth is too vast, but she cannot believe that she can be a tiny luminary in the vast and open space. But the educated Ye Xiaohuan says that their world is very small, and the heavenly bodies are huge. But if you look at the world from the point of view of the heavenly body, then the world is also nothing more than a heavenly body. In the next chapter, you can see how the main character, standing on his sword, tells the girl that she doesn't even understand the truth that the closer, the more, the farther, the less, the blue-haired girl thought about his words. She makes a couple of comments about this and says that even if everything he says is true, she doesn't understand how it will help her in using the Beidou magic sword technique. She wants him to talk about it. Next, the cool Ye Xiaohuan flies up on his sword closer to the girl and hiding the blade stands next to her. He says that this whole theory that he told her about will definitely help her. After landing, the main character abruptly grabs the girl's hand and asks her to go with him. This makes her a little embarrassed and doesn't even know what to expect from him. But she doesn't even seem to mind going with him. Yung Kyu looks at her hand, which right now is intertwined with Ye Xiaohuan's hand. She experiences warm feelings and cannot say anything about this. But she doesn't need to, because she will have the right to remain silent in court, since the guy is not even 18 years. Then, still holding hands, Ye Xiaohuan ran with her to a rock on which there are huge wounds. 
He joyfully asks the girl to look at something and points to this place with his finger. The main character brought Junchia closer to this place so that she could get a better look at what he wants to show her. The girl, looking at this place, tries to understand what it is all about. While the girl was trying to find out the answer to this question on her own, the black-haired one told her everything at once. Namely, that the heavenly body they were talking about comes from here. The blue-haired one understood everything. Next, the black-haired man with a smile on his face tells the girl that if she swears that she will not tell this secret to anyone, then he will dedicate her to the secret of cultivating the Beidou magic sword technique carved on this cliff. Next, she begins to touch the cliff with her hand and examine it. Meanwhile, Ye Xiaohuan stands behind with an insidious smile and asks her not to look at him like that, because he has a photographic memory, but still advises her to take an oath. However, the girl didn't pay much attention to this guy's words. She just continued to touch the cliff until she came across something. The main character noticed this and seems very surprised by what she found. We see the girl's hand in close-up. Meanwhile, Ye Xiaohuan continues to watch her and cannot understand how she found the location of the Beidou magic sword. It seems he really did not expect this. A couple of moments later, we see how the blue-haired woman begins to take out the very bag that was behind her all this time. There was a sword there which for some reason seems familiar to Ye Xiaohuan. Continuing to observe this sword, he still could not remember where he saw it, but over time he realizes that this is the same sword that Xiao Qi told him about, namely the Zhanqin sword. He remembers her words that initially 6,000 years ago, the owner of the sword Wu Fen, the god Wu Xing, and the owner of the sword Zhanqin, the goddess Duan Nian, were lovers. But fate plays with a person, Duan An made a mistake, and plunged into the abyss of evil, becoming a witch. Meanwhile, we see how the main character begins to silently look at the girl. She holds her bag in her hands, asks him to turn away and swears not to tell anyone about this secret. A few hours later, morning has already come. We see a pelican carrying another basket of food. The green-haired one saw the bird and stood up to meet it and apparently eat. While the bird flies with the basket over the junction, she notices to her surprise that morning has already come. It seems as if she did not even see how quickly time flew by. Then she begins to pick up her bag from the ground and look around and cannot find the main character in any way. She believes that it cannot be that she got too carried away with cultivation and threw him off the cliff. Fortunately, you can understand that everything is fine with Ye Xiaohuan. It turns out that he spent his time right on the tree. And when he woke up, he wished her good morning. He also noticed that breakfast had arrived. Yuncho considers the guy abnormal. From the guy's behavior, you can understand that he just woke up, he rubs his eyes and cannot believe that Yun Xiu has not yet left and remained with him on this cliff. Joyful Ye Xiaohuan jumps from the tree and invites the girl to eat together. He does not know what happened during these two days, but his food suddenly became incredibly good. The girl understands that Sun Yao listened to her request. Next, the blue-haired girl with a serious look lets the guy know that she won't eat with him now. Because it's time for her to leave, he doesn't understand why she's leaving, because their bet is still not over. She turns to the guy with a smile on her face and tells him that the methods described on the cliff are difficult to understand, and she did not dare try them. If it is truly useful, she will not break their agreement. After these words, Yun Xiu stood with her feet on her sword and flew far away from this cliff. During takeoff, she also reminded the guy that she would not tell his secret to anyone, so that he would be calmer. A satisfied guy eating his food cannot understand what is wrong with this woman because yesterday she behaved very noisily, but today she is somehow quiet and calm and did not make any noise. In the next chapter, you can see how the main character still continues to enjoy his food. It is clear that nothing bothers him now and he just eats his pie, not paying attention to anything. Then, unexpectedly for the guy, something very quickly appeared. He did not have time to react to it. When the food suddenly disappeared from his hand somewhere, he does not understand what it is, but he will definitely try to figure out this issue. At this moment, Ye Xiaohuan sees only some long trail from the creature that took his food. With the help of this trail, he will try to determine who exactly this brazen thief was. The black-haired man directs his gaze in the direction of this trace. He still does not understand what it was, but right now he should already know the answer to his question and identify the nasty thief. While examining the area, the main character found Xiao Qi holding his pie in her mouth, the guy lost his temper and thinks that Xiao Qi can't just appear without stealing his food. She thinks it's nonsense. She doesn't pay much attention to Ye Xiaohuan's angry cries. She just asks him if he is training today and wants to know the answer to this question. Maybe she wants to take a walk with him. It turned out that this is indeed the case. She invites him to take a walk since he doesn't train because it's very boring here. 
but the guy in response only grabbed his basket of food tightly and said no. Continuing to hold the basket in his hands, the dissatisfied guy understands that as soon as Xiao Qi met him, she immediately told the story of how she picked him up 15 years ago, and her own mother gave him the name. He also thought about whether he could use the jade that weighs on Xiao Qi's neck in order to find his destiny. The girl sees his thoughtful look but does not understand what he is thinking about. The fox girl did not wait for an answer from him. She comes closer and offers to take a walk. And the guy understands that although the mentor always treated him with love, he never told him about his origin. Next, the main character finally stopped dreaming about something strange and decides to turn to this girl saying that he cannot leave here and in order not to waste too much time, he asks her to return the jade. Xiao Chi heard him and says that this is the jade that he once gave to her, so she cannot give it back. She told him that she will not give anything back and this conversation is over. Ye Xiao Huan puts a basket of food on the ground. Xiao Chi paid attention to her. The guy remembers that she said that when she picked him up, he was a baby. She says that it is so, but does not understand what he is driving at. The next shot shows how the cunning green-eyed guy tells her that he must not have been thinking straight back then, and she took advantage of this to steal this thing from him. It seems the black-haired guy wants to make her feel guilty. She, in turn, asks him to stop, because at first she said that she liked this jade and she simply took it for herself. Then he was not against it, but only smiled at her, and she thought that he agreed. Ye Xiaohuan already thinks this fox is really very strange. He spreads his hands and says that he was only smiling. This does not prove that he agreed. It is clear that the blonde doesn't care about this. Next, the main character extends his hand to her, which the girl looks at very intensely. He says that she still must return this jade to him. He does not have the slightest idea about his life, and the jade will help with this. Already tired, Ye Xiaohuan continues to hold his hand outstretched forward, and Xiao Qi doesn't quite want to tell the guy about his past life, because his parents died a very terrible death. It seems that the main character became interested after the words of this girl. He decides to ask him if she knows anything about his past, and it seems that he wants to listen to absolutely everything about himself in small details. And only now Xiao Qi realized that she had spilled the beans. Although she shouldn't have done so, she decides to pretend that she doesn't know anything and says that the guy heard it. But he already understands everything, so it's useless. Xiao Qi doesn't want to tell this guy anything at all. She excitedly tells him that it's time for her to return. Otherwise, the Monkey King will scold her again. The black-haired one would like her to stay. However, the main character was never able to catch this girl, who was supposedly in a hurry somewhere. Now he can only stand in his place and hope that she will return. But he does not yet know what to do next. It is clear that the green-eyed man still continues to look after this girl and is very much thinking about something. Perhaps he is thinking that he was too rude to her and could have been more gentle. Next, the events are transferred to the gazebo that is already familiar to us, in which Jun Xu is right now and is meditating there. She is now completely alone, so no one will bother her here. A couple of moments later, we see a close-up of the blue-haired girl as she continues to meditate, wondering if she should use a negative aura. The girl also understands that there is less than a month left before the competition, and she decides to remember about Ye Xiaohuan, who will also have to participate there, but she decides not to think about him now because she has things to do. In the next chapter, you can see three people, including Panir's sister. The three of them are now walking along the path and the guy from the center understands that if it weren't for the competition, the Panir would not have taken them for a walk. The guy's name is Lu Cheng Feng and the girl's name is Cheng Xiao Man and they are both from the Ziwei school. The guy says that since they returned to Tsang Yun, little sister Panir has not visited them. The girl agrees with his words. Next, the cunning guy, realizing that the panner still doesn't have a boyfriend, decides apparently to take advantage of the moment and offer her something. At his words, Chang Xiaoman lost her temper a little but hides it. However, she could not hide this for a long time. She suddenly ran into Lu Chang Feng and hit him, asking her not to anger her anymore. The guy did not expect this, and Di Paner is in complete shock from what he saw. But still, the purple-haired girl decides to intervene in their dispute. She thinks that Lu is joking because she has a person who worries her, and that is why we can say that things are not going well for her now. While the girl was strangling the guy, they both heard words from Di Paner. They paid attention to this. The guy got out of the hug and asked her with a smile on his face who dared to become a problem for her, because the two of them would teach him a lesson. But then Di Paner decides to calm them down. She says that everything has been in order for a long time, and this man was arrested and sent to the mountain of thinking about his own mistakes. It is obvious that she is talking about Ye Xiaohuan. She decides to put this strange conversation aside and invites the two to continue their excursion. She asks them to look somewhere ahead because there is a Qingluan gazebo and they might find it interesting. 
Chang Xiaoman understands that Tsang Yun has six attractions. They only visited the Qingluan Gazebo and the Wang Yue Gazebo. She wonders what is so interesting about the Qingluan Gazebo. But here the purple-haired one is forced to disappoint her. She asks Chan for forgiveness and tells her that she cannot enter the gazebo, so they will watch it all from here. And this is very sad. Chao Xiangman can't understand why this was introduced correctly. She thinks that there is some kind of prohibition here and wants to find out more about it from Depaner and is waiting for an answer from her. She gives her answer, not to mention the ban Sister Yunqiu is cultivating in this gazebo. Her mentor is quite strict and says that there should be silence there so no one goes there. Lu Changfeng looks pleased and interested. Hearing the name Yun Qing Yu, he understands that this is the same icy Yun Chu, one of the six great fairies. He also realized that she really shouldn't be bothered. Depaner turns to the guy and confirms his words. She says that he guessed correctly and this is the same fairy, so now they will just watch the gazebo from the side. And then the guy started thinking. It seems to him that since the ice fairy is cultivating in the Qingluan gazebo, they shouldn't bother her but as soon as it gets dark, maybe something will happen, the girl understands that he's up to something. Next, Chao Xiaoman turns to the violet-haired girl and asks her if they can look at this gazebo as soon as it gets dark. Di Panner herself doubts this and cannot give an exact answer. Chao Xiaoman tells her that she heard that every full moon, the light of the moon is refracted at the Yubi Mountain Peak and reflected on the Wang Yu Pavilion and built like the light of truth. She considers it a miracle and wants to see it. After listening to her words, the guy decided to make fun of her and says that he doesn't understand what she just said because he's never heard of it. You can see how the girl is slowly starting to lose her temper. Revenge did not take long to arrive. The girl, losing her temper, simply hit this loser because she tells it like it is. Dipaner offers to have dinner and after dark to go to the gazebo. The purple-haired girl thought about this Vanu gazebo. She understands that this is not far from the mountain of thinking about mistakes. Meanwhile, behind the purple-haired girl, she continues to beat the guy. In her opinion, he doubts her. We slowly transition to our main character. Meanwhile, Deep Honor understands that Ye Huan should still be on this mountain and think about his actions, but it is not clear what this means for her. We are again shown our main character, who still continues to practice. He prepares for a while and delivers his crushing blow with a sword, after which he begins to calmly look at the result. He begins to look at how with just one swing of his sword, he was able to cut an entire dense stone in half it seems that he is already tired, but he is still pleased with the work done. The black-haired man, wiping his forehead, being very pleased after another crushed stone, suddenly thought about why the union had not yet arrived, because it should already be here. In the next chapter, we again see our main character, who is still looking into the distance and realizes that 20 days have already passed, and there is still no sign of Yun Xiu. He assumes that something could have happened to her. Sitting down on the ground, he understands perfectly well that judging by her talent, she should be practicing the Beidou magic sword technique. But he thinks that she has not yet started studying it, and most likely this is not the case at all. Being in the pose of a statue, Ye Huan believes that it is impossible for her to start studying now. He believes that perhaps she is somehow trying to deceive him, but is not yet completely sure of this. And then suddenly Jun Xu herself appears behind the main character, she heard his words and asks him to be sure that she will not rely on him. The black-haired man did not at all expect her to appear now. Ye Huan slowly turns straight to her and is convinced that Yun Xiu herself is standing behind him. He tries to say something, but due to excitement he is lost and cannot do it, but only stutters. The blue-haired girl, meanwhile, is completely calm and tells him that the next time he says bad things about others, he better keep his mouth shut, otherwise he might get his ass kicked. Then the main character, having gained strength, finally decides to get up from the ground. He is very dissatisfied that she was able to hear his thoughts out loud and also getting up from the ground. He does not understand what she is talking about now. When Ye Wan got up from the ground, he shook the dust from his clothes, after which he suddenly seemed to remember something. He turned his attention to something, and it seems that he wants to check something. After that, the black-haired man begins to look at the blue-haired woman from all sides, she seems to look dissatisfied, but so far she doesn't stop him from doing this. It's not clear what the guy wants from her. Having examined the girl, he continues to think about something with a smart look, as if he was trying to study something before. In fact, it is clear that he just wanted to look at this girl's buns. It can be seen that Jun Xu seems to have suspected everything. She is all red with embarrassment and promises to tear out this fool's eyes if he looks at her like that again. It is clear that she is very angry now. He reassures her, because this is not what she is thinking about, he says that only a few days have passed, but as he understands, she has come a long way and has probably accumulated the energies of the Beidou deity. 
Next, the guy tells this crazy woman that she scared him to death. The blue-haired girl still looks dissatisfied. But after hearing the truth, she understood everything and thoughtfully moved away from the main character. While the girl moved away from Ye Xiaohuan to a certain distance, in the meantime, she decides to check with him whether he cultivated the sword and earth technique. Apparently, she wants to learn something from him. The guy, hearing her question, thought about it and said that he didn't say that he was doing better. He just couldn't budge, which prevented him from advancing in the technique of the sword of heaven and earth. That's why he trained his body and the method of spiritual escape and saving life. So this Gigachad didn't waste any time. The girl turns to him and looks at him like he's some kind of fool. Yunkyo seems to be at a loss. She approaches this guy and thinks that she is so afraid of dying. So she plans to run away before the battle starts. The guy heard her and is going to give an answer. In response, the guy just shrugs, and it is clear that he is a little dissatisfied with her words. In his opinion, it is easy for her to speak, because she has both strength and excellent weapons. He is sure that when the enemy sees her, he immediately runs away. Green-Eyed understands that he is still weak, which means that if he cannot escape, he will simply be killed. You can see how the girl is trying to stop him before he does something stupid. The black-haired man is not happy that she interrupted him, because he hasn't even finished speaking yet. She asks if he is so afraid of death, then how does he train his body? She is very interested. The smug guy dares to say that among the younger generation of Kang Yun Gate, no one can be first if he considers himself second. This is all very complicated, but he must explain what it means. The blue-haired girl heard him, but did not let him explain and as usual interrupted. She waved her hand and she, as a student of the younger generation, is going to teach this kid a lesson. It is clear that she is serious. The green-eyed man still doesn't understand what she's going to do now. He sees that she's being very noisy again. She moved her hand right to the guy's face. He tried to dodge and it seemed to work. However, the blue-haired girl did not intend to beat this fool at all. She used her hand to lift this guy into the air and began to hold him. Ye Xiaohuan is surprised, but understands that it is the silk hand of a heavenly spider. Yunzi continues to keep the guy in flight since she was able to catch him. Now she is going to strike him with her blow. The main character does not understand what awaits him now because this girl is very strange. It can be seen that she tried to deliver some kind of powerful blow directly to the guy, but unexpectedly for her, he disappeared somewhere, and she can only watch in bewilderment at the empty place where this clever guy had previously stood. She began to look around the area, looking for the main character, and suddenly noticed that he had jumped straight onto a tree. She was just looking at him and waiting for any action from this guy. The smug black-haired guy turned out to be no ordinary boy, he stands on a tree and tells this loser that if she somehow wants to catch him, it won't be so easy to do, so she should try. In the next chapter, you can see how this kid's self-confidence and dominance did not last long. Yun Xu was still able to overpower this weakling and kicked his ass the right way and he just sits silently. She stood in front of the guy and invites him to try again. He is on his knees asking for her forgiveness. He is still too young to die by her hand and asks for mercy because he is not going to die now. The blue-haired girl says that unfortunately this is impossible. He trains quite quickly, and she only helps him when she tried to catch him the first time. He withstood five of her blows. She further tells him that recently, he has successfully avoided her attack. If she hits him five more times, then everything could be bad, it seems to the guy that this crazy woman just wants to beat him up. Meanwhile, events move to D.I. Panier with two people. The purple-haired one says that they came to the lunar platform. The guy is glad that they finally got there and the girl to his right is unhappy with the long stairs. Still, after some time, these two climb the steps to the very top. It is clear that both of them were very tired out of habit and their strength was aching. She was surprised that they were able to get there at all. However, they already understand that without a doubt, these lands are truly blessed because even today's full moon is incomparable, while the purple-haired one simply silently looks directly at them. Further, you can see that this group of people has reached the yin and yang sign right on the ground, they are standing exactly on it, and while they are not saying anything, apparently they are waiting for something, or maybe there is another reason. Lu Chang Feng is happy as usual and, holding his fan in his hands, says that the night ahead is long, so he decides to offer to go together and enjoy the beauty of the moon while it still hangs in the sky. Suddenly their attention is attracted to Chao Xiaoman, who saw something in the distance and looks at it in horror. She wants to find out from the panner what it is, and she tries to peer closely to understand for herself. She looks straight at the rock of thinking about her own actions, on which it seems there should be only the main character. But there is also one person with him, and she seems to realize that they are not having fun there. Chao Xiao Man again attracts her attention. The purple-haired one was frightened by such a sharp cry. She turned her attention to the girl and was confused. She decides to tell her so that they begin to return. 
It tells Sister Panner, could it be that the lunar platform is the place where she met Chinlin? She is very interested in this question, and she is also interested in what talent of the Qingyun Gate conquered her. The purple-haired girl, having heard this question, only crossed her arms displeasedly and thought about it. She says that she has no relationship with this bastard. She is trying to make them believe in these words. It is clear that Pan Air has lost her temper. She tells them not to misunderstand her, because this is not what they could think about now. The two of them thoughtfully look directly at her and are silent. Then the purple-haired girl suddenly calmed down and began to smile excitedly. She silently looks into the distance and begins to think about something unknown. Who knows what is going on in her mind now? These two saw her condition, Lu Chang Feng, trying to calm her down, says that this is normal, and Chang Xiao mother, leaning her hand on the guy's shoulder, says that they are all the same age and she can be sure that they understood her. And then suddenly the calm time of this group is interrupted by someone's loud cry for help. They are all tense and trying to guess from whom this cry can even come. The guy now realized that someone was screaming for help and looking around. His girlfriend was also trying to understand where he was coming from. And the panner immediately realized that it was Ye Xiaohuan's voice because they knew him. Without wasting too much time, the purple-haired girl immediately straddled her sword, after which she went to help the main character. Even though he had stolen her things before, her friends were doing the same. They saw how the Panair quickly moved away. They want to stay together, so they ask her to wait for them, but she is already too far away, and they are already standing on their flying hammer. We see Ye Xiaohuan beaten up again. He tells Yun Cho that he hopes she didn't chase him for so long to kick his ass. She says that it will teach him lessons for his stupidity. Fortunately for the main character, help arrived just in time. The Panair arrived here very first and, running up to the guy first of course decided to insult him, after which she asked how he was feeling. Meanwhile, two students of the Ziwei school also flew up here on their hammer. Ye Xiaohuan and Yun Cho look at this picture, and the black-haired one already realizes that they will still help him. The blue-haired girl looks at the Panair with a calm look and apparently recognizes someone she knows in her. The purple-haired one also saw her and is very surprised. She silently continues to look. The main character himself still continues to lie on the ground, being in complete shock. He did not think that anyone would come to his aid, and even more so it was the Panair herself, from whom he had previously stolen. Panair doesn't pay much attention to the main character yet. She just looks at the blue-haired girl and asks her why she is here and what exactly she needs. The blue-haired girl continues to behave calmly. In the next chapter, you can see how the purple-haired girl decides to ask this girl how she even got here. She expects to hear a normal answer from her in order to find out the true reason. There is no way that a serious-minded Yun Chu is going to tell them the reason why she came here, because they don't need to know this. And in general, she doesn't want to see anyone here. Panair was not at all satisfied with this answer. She now begins to get angry with the blue-haired one, and the black-haired main character, meanwhile, just lies on the ground and watches everything that is happening, he wants the blue-haired one to finally leave. Continuing to lie on the ground, the green-haired man wants to be allowed to say a few words. He also thinks that these two are afraid of a fight between themselves and are trying in every possible way to avoid it so that everything will be fine. The blue-haired one is a close student of the Jingshui mentor, the heir to the Zhangzhen sword, and the level of her development is incomprehensible, and the purple-haired one is the favorite student of the Jingsuan master, and she has a magical weapon, similar to the divine sword. Meanwhile, the main character also turns his attention to the students of the Ziwei school. He sees a girl excitedly hugging her boyfriend. He asks to let him go and does not understand what is happening. Suddenly, Ye Xiaohuan starts coughing to attract the attention of those present to himself. This guy really misses him, and he understands that this is the only thing he can do in this situation. Violet Haired turned her attention to the strange actions on the part of the main character and decides to immediately clarify with him what exactly he is going to do right now. She is very interested in this. It turns out that the black-haired man is still perplexed by the fact that Gupaner herself came here to help him, despite the fact that it was she who sent him here to serve his sentence. He is surprised that she treats him this way. Even though he has previously stolen her things, her actions really scare this guy, and he wonders what will happen next. However, his words did not suit the purple-haired one because they caused laughter among those around her. She wants to tell this guy, but apparently she cannot do this because she wants to seem like a very cultured girl. The students of the Ziwei school immediately recognized Ye Xiaohuang as that bad guy. They start smiling and realize that he remains just as energetic. Violet-haired is still very embarrassed by his words. She saw the reaction of her friends and tells him that this is not what they think, and it seems they realize that they were mistaken. She began to speak out to the main character, insulting him. She says that he deserves punishment by crossing the rock. 
If he continues to talk nonsense, then she is definitely not going to forgive him. In general, the black-haired man is not at all frightened by her words. He understands that they cannot really do anything to him. The only thing is to extend the punishment for another three months. But that will not be bad. He continues to confuse this girl and tells her that he knows how she thinks about him day and night, but she is still dead in his heart. It is clear that this affects the girl, and she begins to lose her temper. Ye Xiaohuan continues to get on Gu Panner's nerves. He begins to remind her of all sorts of nonsense, and she just silently accumulates her rage, and apparently very soon she will throw it all out on this guy. The brave black-haired guy decides to say a few more words to this girl. He says that in his heart, besides, there is someone, namely elder sister Yun. He wants to finish off the girl with these statements. After these words, the main character stopped. He considers himself very smart and believes that he was able to embarrass this girl right in front of everyone present in this place. She still continues to look at him. And then Gu Panner could no longer stand it. She stored up her rage for several minutes, after which she decided to throw it all out right on the main character. With one precise blow, she sent him flying. But he could not expect this. It can be seen that after such a crushing blow, the black-haired protagonist fell to the ground, and the girl stood still and decided not to finish him off, because this pathetic guy already got what he deserved. Next, the main character grabs the place where the purple-haired girl hit him. Because he is now in pain and being in tears, he turns to his elder sister Yun, saying that Gu Panner hit him. However, one might then think that Yun Xu decided to add a couple more bruises to Ye Xiaohuan's body. He watches as she flies straight at him with her fist and does not understand what will happen to him now. She also decided to add a blow directly to the face of this loser. He no longer knows what to do, because absolutely everyone present lined up against him alone. Apparently, he can only endure it. This blow was also quite crushing. After the blow, the guy landed face first straight into the ground, and the blue-haired girl then insulted him with the same word as Gupaner. The girls looked pleased with themselves. The guy and the girl stood aside all this time and did not interfere in any way. They were very shocked by what they saw, and now they have doubts about whether this child is alive or not. After the blue-haired woman dealt a powerful blow to the main character, she decided not to stay here for long, so he simply walked up to the edge of the cliff, threw his sword under him, and was about to stand on it. Next, you can see how Ye Xiaohuan is lying behind her, who is passed out right now. Yun Cho, in turn, has already climbed onto her sword and is about to fly away because she is bored here. We again see the main character, who slowly but surely begins to come to his senses after two serious blows. He saw how the unit left this place at great speed, and this made him happy. Gu Panner decides to approach him, but he continues to silently lie on the ground. She tells him to stop pretending to be dead and finally get back on his feet, because they didn't just come here for nothing. You can understand that the purple-haired girl wants to ask Ye Xiaohuan a couple of questions. She decides to first ask him how Yun Cho could end up here in the middle of the night, and what she was doing here. In the next frame, the black-haired man abruptly stood up. He still decides to answer her question. He says that he just angered her and already thinks that Gu Panner somehow wants to resolve this issue. She sees his strange state and asks why he is so scared. The guy excitedly tells her to quickly leave, because Shigoya is not a place for delicate and noble people like them. It seems that she was not satisfied with Ye Xiaohuan's words. She turned slightly to the side and asked him to repeat what he just said. It is clear that the black-haired man was confused, because he was afraid of getting another blow. Then the girl with a crazy look begins to approach the main character. It is clear that a fire has flared up in her hand and she, apparently, is going to kick Ye Xiaohuan's ass once again, unfortunately for him. The black-haired man paid attention to her condition and understood where everything was going. He realized that he had nowhere to run, after which the girl attacked him and began to beat him. The students of the Ziwei school watched in shock. A moment later, you can already hear Ye Xiaohuan's screams. He believes that he was just saying nonsense, and this is all just a misunderstanding. He asks the girl to stop hitting his face and not to come near him. In the next chapter, we see the events that take place on March 1st in Zhenwu Plaza, namely at the peak of reincarnation. Inside this palace, you can see a bunch of people. There is smoke all around, and you can see a man sitting on the throne. This man is an old man named Yujizi, and he is the head of the Kanyun sect. Right now, he is sitting with his eyes closed and seems to be meditating or waiting for something, but no one knows what. Next, we are shown some brown-haired woman named Su Xiaoyan. She is the fairy of broken love and believes that the Xuantian sect is very majestic. Meanwhile, the crowd has been waiting for something for quite a long time. We see three elders of this sect. Among them, you can see a man already familiar to us named Zui Lao. They, like everyone else now, stand silently and wait for something. These three look very serious. 
We are again shown the head of the Kanyun sect who, judging by the smoke around, is a fan of vaping. Right now, he continues to sit with his eyes closed and apparently enjoy the moment. Su Xiaoyan crossed her arms and she looks very dissatisfied. She doesn't like the fact that a quarter of an hour has already passed, and the people who were supposed to come haven't come here. The elderly vape lover, in turn, asks her to calm down. The old sage importantly tells her that it would be okay for the Shuantian sect to stay a little while, because they have a long enough journey, so they can wait a little longer. Then we see another old man. He is a monk named Kun Jian Shen, and is very similar to Ang in old age. The girl points her finger at him and says that despite the distance, this man arrived here last night. Kong Jian Shen, in turn, continues to sit calmly and wishes goodness and peace to everyone present. It is immediately clear that he is a very good and kind person, and he is also very calm. Then the head of the sect begins to look somewhere with a serious look. Apparently he saw someone very familiar, or perhaps something else, but one can say that his look is now very dissatisfied. It turned out that he was looking at some person who had arrived at the palace, other people also saw him, and absolutely everyone looked very unhappy. Apparently this guy was heading straight towards Yujizi. Zui Lao, seeing this guy, is happy that he has finally come here. He thinks the Zhuantian sect is too shameless, because they use lateness to establish their prestige. He understands that his leader is difficult to control his anger. This guy walks up to the old man and says that the heavenly fox demon and the Lubo fairy from Lubo Mountain have come to pay homage to the mountain. They have already reached the foot of the jade steps in front of the main hall. It is clear that the bearded man is having a hard time holding back his anger right now, but he still tells the guy that he understands him, and with a smile on his face continues to wait for them showing his good side. Meanwhile, Zui Lao and Su Xiaoyan are watching this along with the monk. They all silently watch what is happening and do not interfere. Apparently, they are confident that their leader will be able to figure everything out himself. A moment later, Yu Jizi with a smile on his face says that when Senior Tianhu comes to visit, he will have to personally greet him. For this, he even stood up on his own two feet and is going to go to him. Going out into the street, they met three people, including Xiao Qi and her mother, as well as some blue-haired woman. Some kind of dialogue should now begin between these people. It can be seen that these three are standing and looking directly at the sect leader. They look more or less serious, and Xiao Qi doesn't even smile this time. They are already preparing to greet each other and talk. Yujizi looks at them and, turning to the two adults, tells them that the presence of the two of them really contributes to the prosperity of his Kanyun sect. He is very glad that they arrived here and is ready to let them inside. Next, you can see how Xiao Qi's mother listened to her fellow Taoist Yujizi and understands how polite this grandfather is. And yet they are not even with the family yet. This makes her very happy. The old man decides to show his good side. He spreads his hands, tells them that it was quite a long way, and asks them to go inside. Meanwhile, Xiao Qi noticed his old friend Zui Lao. Apparently the girl was bored, and when she saw Zui Lao, she decided to make fun of him and sticks out her tongue. Making a funny grimace on her face, she does this, despite the fact that the meeting is very serious. He noticed her funny grimace but did not react to it. He just watched silently, and the girl behind him decided to look at his face to find out what he would do about it. It is clear that they were already about to enter inside the palace, but someone starts shouting after them. He calls his friend Yujizi and says that he is late, so for this he decides to ask his grandfather for forgiveness. Of course, this cry could not help but attract the attention of the head of the sect. He immediately reacted to this along with the rest of the people and looks very unhappy, because in his opinion, these people are quite arrogant. The most important of these three tells the head that his elder brother has been practicing in solitude lately and cannot come. So he asks not to be offended by Yu Jizi. This dark-haired one, by the way, is called Mu Chenxian. In response, the bearded man begins to scratch his beard and tells them that he has not seen this man for many years, so he quickly asks him to go into the hall so that he can talk quietly there. Then they all begin to enter the main hall together. One of the people who came says that he saw a divine monk and a fairy mistress, but did not think that they would come too. Now they will have a conversation. Meanwhile, we again see the blue-haired one, who right now is approaching the huge building in which all the events take place. She silently walks here, and apparently she has some kind of goal. It turns out that she is not alone here, but together with Ning Xiangze, she turns to her and asks the audience if she is that Ye Xiao Huan has signed up for the competition. It seems that the red-haired woman does not understand what she is talking about. Next, she decides to ask why her friend is so interested in this guy. She thinks that this child stole something from her. Apparently, she doesn't know the whole truth yet, but wants to find out as soon as possible. While the two girls were standing next to each other and talking about something, a man appeared behind them and, having heard their conversation, 
believed that they were full of slander and various deliberate rumors. This person turned out to be Ye Xiaohuan. He turns to senior sister Ning and tells her that if she continues to humiliate his character, he will go to the presbytery to sue her for slander. The two girls heard his words next to them. They slowly turned towards the source of the sounds and suddenly found this guy. Yun Chu was calm as always, but Ning Xiangji seemed a little tense after the warning. In the next chapter, we can see how the girls and this guy have approached each other and are about to talk about something. Some of the people around them are looking at them right now. We can see the face of the red-haired woman. Right now, she looks very dissatisfied and, crossing her arms, asks the main character how it happened that he has already been released after serving his sentence. The guy only responds by showing her the number three with his fingers and telling her to stay there no more, no less, three full months. They haven't seen each other for a long time, and the guy thinks that Nin's sister missed her. She pretends that she didn't even miss him at all. She pretends that she doesn't care about this guy. For starters, she asks him to return the thing that he stole from her about half a year ago. Ye Xiaohuan again drew attention to the fact that this woman is completely slanderous. He is very dissatisfied with this and begins to ask for evidence that it was he who stole this thing. He continues to consider her wrong. The dissatisfied Ning Xiangjie begins to shout at him and says that he obviously did it, but apparently she has no evidence with her. The guy asks her not to spread rumors about him without evidence. Then it dawned on the smart protagonist that at the moment there is only one truth. He begins to suspect the woman that it was she who slandered his situation, and he began to point his finger at her. After her words, Ye Xiaohuan turns away with a snort and walks far away from the girls, crossing her arms. It is clear that Ning Xiangjie looks as if we are at a loss, or the black-haired one really found out the whole truth about her. Yunchu continues to look dissatisfiedly straight at the main character and remains silent. These two have not even spoken now. Apparently, they are still offended by each other after the incident on the mountain. The blue-haired girl turns to her older sister and asks her whether he really stole her host. Apparently, even the blue-haired one begins to suspect her of slander, but the red-haired one still says that it was him. While the guy is leaving, she tells her friend that she is not the only one who thinks so. In general, in recent years, 80% of the things lost by students were stolen by him. He was just caught too few times, and it is difficult to find evidence. They continue to angrily look directly at Ye Xiaohuan, who continues to calmly leave this place. Yun Chou understands that this host is Sister Ning's greatest pride, but does not understand how a child could steal her. We return to the main character. Right now, he suddenly met his uncle Ian, who is contentedly standing right in front of some table. He does not understand why his uncle began to pack his things right now. The green-eyed man quickly approaches the table, and standing in front of the man turns to him and asks if he is late because the guy wants to register for the competition in time. The man with the mustache listened to the guy and simply begins to look straight into his eyes. He tries to say something, but does not finish. The black-haired one listens to him carefully and tries to understand what he is even talking about. Then the man with a serious look continues to look at this guy and again tries to say something to the guy, but again he doesn't finish. The black-haired man still listens attentively, trying to understand his words. Seeing the strange behavior of the Yang Master, the black-haired man already thinks that something is wrong with himself and thinks that something bad has happened. The guy is worried and really wants to hear an answer from this man. It turned out that this strange man was just trying to figure out who this guy was, but he couldn't do it, so he just asked about it directly. Ye Xiaohuan only hit his head on the table from this stupidity. The black-haired man looks unhappy. He asks Uncle Yang not to scare him in this way and tells him his name. He says that he is the same Ye Xiaohuan who helped him clean up the warehouse earlier. These words from the main character were enough for this man to finally remember who he really is. With an awkward face, he realized that he turns out to be a student of Zoe's older brother, so they know each other. Next, he decides to ask one question to the main character and asks him if he has already reached the fifth level of control over objects. From the appearance of the black-haired man, you might think that he is slightly confused and is simply silent. Later, he starts laughing because he thinks that Uncle Yang looks down on others. He says that he has been practicing Shigoya diligently for the past three months and has now made a lot of progress in his practice. This strange guy spreads his arms in different directions to look like a Brazilian statue of Cristo Redentor and shouts to the whole palace that, looking at the world, he is also a master of the highest class. Ian decided to simply remain silent. People who have been nearby all this time turn their attention to the cry of this crazy guy. They look at him in shock and understand that he was born the way social phobia was invented. Further, some people still dared to laugh at him and quite loudly, because it seems to them that he is still far from being a first-class master. Ye Xiaohuan heard their laughter and he really doesn't like it. 
He can't just stand there and tolerate their ridicule. He's already completely lost his temper and turning to them tells them not to laugh because they'll understand how good he is when the game starts. These people ask Uncle Ian to let this kid register because they all want to see what the main character is really capable of. They think that he will simply disgrace himself there. Then suddenly we are again shown a panner who stands among the crowd and looks at Ye Xiao Huan. She does not understand what this fool is doing right now, but she really wants to know the answer to this curious question. Fortunately for the main character, Uncle Yang still took his brush and calmly wrote down his name on the list of participants. This went without any problems, and this simply cannot but please Ye Xiao Huan. After some time, a guy runs up to Uncle Yang and tells him that the registration deadline has already come. Uncle Yang in turn turns to him with a serious look and says that everything has become clear to him. After that, the man takes the list with the names of the participants directly into his hands and is going to say something to the people. He says that the registered students will gather here and later enter the Samsara Hall to draw lots. And then suddenly, while the man was making his speech, from the crowd of people Yun Xu herself appeared, walking towards the main character, the guy and Uncle Yang immediately drew attention to her and did not understand what she needed. It turned out that she was not alone at all, but together with her red-haired friend, they were leaving the crowd together and apparently, they simply signed up for these very competitions in order to take part in them. Next, we see the Paner herself and the students of the Ziwei school behind her. She also emerges from the crowd with a serious look and, apparently, is also going to take part in these difficult competitions. The main character is a little surprised that there are too many participants. He is now thinking how he can cope with them all in order to take a high enough place in this competition and show everyone his strength. While the main character was thinking about this, suddenly someone hit him right on his shoulder. The black-haired man feeling this suddenly turns around to understand who it really was, and he is very dissatisfied with this blow. It turned out to be some familiar guy who, realizing that Ye Xiao Huan will take part in the competition, is very happy for him and thinks that this is just wonderful. He will definitely root for him. Unexpectedly, the main character realized that this was the elder brother Zhu Changshui himself, who had given him work three months ago. Ye Xiao Huan never expected to see him right here and now, and was very surprised by this meeting. In the next chapter, we already see a crowd of people who have arrived at this place and are waiting for something. So far, everything is calm and they are all silent. We see Ye Xiao Huan, who displeasedly turns to Zhu Changshui. He reminds the guy that he lived a comfortable life for these three months. While the guy was serving his sentence, the black-haired man understands that he should have told about him. In response, Zhu Changshun has so far only remained silent. He just silently looks at the guy and apparently they have pinched him. The main character is completely dissatisfied with the fact that in all these three months, his friend has never visited him. But suddenly for the main character, this guy starts handing him some kind of bag with something inside. Ye Xiao Huan looks at this item in bewilderment and with a very strange face and has no idea what's inside. The joyful guy says that he can't forget Ye Xiao Huan's devotion, so he wants to thank him, he has a busy day today, so let him just take this small gift. The green-eyed one tells him that he did not give it away for the sake of money, but at the same time, with a sharp movement, he takes the bag from his hands. The black-haired one says that it is only brotherly loyalty and nothing more. Next, Zhu Changshui hugs his friend from behind, showing strong male friendship. He of course understands about loyalty, but he is also very generous, so he decided to give him a gift. Ye Xiao Huan snorted at this moment. In the next scene, you can see how this generous guy rubs his fingers and looks at the main character smiling, after which he tells him that he has a new deal. He wonders if the black-haired man will accept it. He decides to hug this and the guy again. He has been waiting for an answer from him for some time, but it is clear that the green-eyed one is deep in thought because he has already been punished and realized that this is quite terrible. After his thoughts, the main character begins to walk a little forward and with a calm look tells his friend that he cannot be such a vile person, Zhu Changshui continues to look at him. The black-haired man tells him that if he has any problems, then let him turn to him. One gets the feeling that after hearing this, the guy in white clothes became very happy. Zhu Changshui tells his friend that he has been gone for three months and doesn't know much. Now on the Kangyunmen black market, you can sell the handkerchief that Yun Chu used for as much as 500 tails. And then suddenly the guy reacted sharply to his words. He heard a name that was very familiar to him, and remembering his past experience, he understands that jokes with this girl are very bad, because she is not simple. After these words, the main character suddenly decides to look around, trying not to be seen. He looks behind the column and sees the union itself. Now he just silently looks straight at it. It can be seen that Ye Xiao Huan suddenly begins to get very worried. He is under no circumstances going to make this terrible deal, 
because he will not dare to provoke this tigress, because she might kick her ass. However, his friend doesn't seem to care that Ye Xiao Huan is scared. He begins to beg his friend to do it, because he is the number one thief in their Kanyun sect and will definitely be able to do it. The black-haired man listened to the request from his friend, but he is still afraid to do it. She tells Zhu Changshui that it is not about money, but about a completely different reason that he does not know. While the guy was trying to refuse to do this, he heard a very familiar word from his friend, namely tails. This attracted his attention, and the black-haired man asked to repeat this very word. And then the brown-haired man with a sly grin takes out a certain object and repeats that very word. The main character silently looks at this picture, and one gets the feeling that he looks interested. Then Ye Xiao Huan unexpectedly tries to take this item away from his friend, but Zhu Changshui has excellent reflexes and managed to remove his hand. The black-haired man does not understand why he did this. It can be seen that the main character has already developed an appetite. He wants to get this thousand tiles, and the cunning Zhu Changshui will of course take advantage of his desire to get what he wants. Holding the tile in his hands, the brown-haired man tells Ye Xiao Huan that he should consider agreeing to this difficult deal, while he continues to tease him about the large amount of money. Zhu Changshui continues to look at the main character, expecting some adequate answer from him. But he sees that the guy is thinking, on the one hand, he wants this money, but on the other, he is very scared. Suddenly, the black-haired man remembered that morality is higher for him than money, so he reminds his friend that he has already said that money cannot buy him. Zhu Changshui does not understand why this is so. It is clear that Zhu Changshui is already very worried. He still cannot understand why Ye Soya Huan refuses such money, he really wants to know the answer to this question, so he runs after the guy. The black-haired man with a smile on his face tells him that he admires him most in this life as a person who values friendship and justice, but he is too passionate about his work. Then the satisfied main character turns to his friend, points his finger at his head and asks him not to worry, because the hairpin of a person close to him is on him right now. It can be understood that the words of the protagonist touch Zhu Chang Shuya. He cannot restrain his words and realizes that his friend Ye Xiao Huan is truly a devotee and should be appreciated. Zhu Chang Shui tells Ye Xiao Huan that as long as he can bring him this hairpin, he will be his brother to him, even with a different father and another mother. Later, Ye Xiao Huan asks his brother Zhu to prepare the money. Next, we see the events that are taking place in this palace. Right now, a large number of people have gathered here, standing and apparently waiting for the competition to begin. Among them, there are also participants. We are shown Ning Xiangji and Yun Qiu. They both stand with serious looks, and the red-haired girl, seeing her friend's face, asks what happened, because something seemed very strange to her. Hearing the red-haired girl's question, Jun Xiu grabs her head and tells her that nothing like that happened, she doesn't know why, but she suddenly has a bad feeling, and that means something. The red-haired girl begins to think that her sister was just a little nervous before the competition. She tries to calm her down, saying that with her abilities, there will be nothing to worry about. Ning Sangji believes that if she had the abilities of her younger sister, she would definitely be able to tear this bastard named Ye Xiao Huan into pieces. She would definitely fry him and feed him to the dog. The blue-haired one apparently found the red-haired one's methods too cruel. She decides to forget about her words and in the meantime, realizes that the draw is about to begin and she is waiting for it. While the blue-haired girl is waiting for the drawing to begin, she has nothing to do, so she just looks around and doesn't see Ye Xiao Huan anywhere. She is at a loss because she doesn't understand why this child hasn't come yet. In the next chapter, you can see how the participants begin to look at a huge inscription on the wall. Different days on which the competition takes place are written on it, as well as one day, which is a day off. In this crowd stands Ye Xiao Huan, who looks very happy, because he is not in a leading position now. He understands that if he can win the first round, then he will have a day off anyway. While the black-haired man stood in the crowd and read about the new list of updates in Fortnite, he was somehow found by Xiao Chai, who caught his attention and surprised him with her presence here. She looks very happy as always and tells the guy that she is glad that she was finally able to find him. She does not understand what he was laughing at now and begins to consider this poor guy vulgar. The main character in turn is now very dissatisfied. He does not understand how he could behave so indecently and seems a little worried. He decides to ask the girl where he is observing this. The fox girl with a smart look begins to look at Ye Xiao Huan. She tries to find something vulgar in him in order to tell him about it and embarrass him even more, because apparently this is not enough for her. And then, after some time, the blonde was still able to find something in this guy. She said that the problem was in his hair, in his mouth, and most importantly, in his eyes. She was apparently now waiting for his reaction. Taking a closer look, the fox girl was convinced that his eyes were really mischievous, and she smiled as usual. It was clear that the guy was a little embarrassed. 
but the fact is that he didn't mean it at all. It is clear that Xiao Qi decides to ask him if the guy will participate in these competitions. She will be very interested in watching how he can prove himself in them. Showing some ball with the number 15, he tells her that he will participate and will definitely be able to show everyone his strength, because it was not in vain that he trained. The girl understands that he was chosen on the 15th. The blonde immediately begins to root for her brother. In her opinion, he will definitely defeat his opponent. He asks her not to worry because he is very strong and simply cannot lose because of this. Xiao Qi, looking at this guy, promises to cheer him up even more, because during the competition she will shout his name louder than anyone else to lift his spirits and set him up for victory. And then suddenly, while these two were having a dialogue with each other, someone started shouting for everyone to hurry up, because it was starting soon and you need to have time to take some place, because otherwise it might already be too late. Xiao Qi saw this unusual scene and did not understand anything, so she asked the black-haired man what they were going to do. It turned out that he himself did not have the slightest idea about it. In this case, the fox girl decides to grab him by the hand and take him to the very epicenter of these events to see what will happen there. The guy doesn't mind, and they went straight after the flying people with swords. Ye Xiao Huan decides to show the others that he also has the skill of flying on a sword. He takes it out and stands on it with the girl. She is very surprised by his abilities and still wants to get to the place as quickly as possible. While the main character and Xiao Qi were flying with the rest of the people on their swords, the two of them paid attention to Yun Chu. The guy, seeing her serious expression on her face, immediately realized that it was her. The main character continues to look at her, thinking that this is the first Yun Chu game. He is so glad that today he will actually be able to see live how Yun Chu can actually prove himself in battle. The black-haired one is still looking at the blue-haired one, and is already imagining what he is about to see when he watches the Battle of the Youth. He is very impatient to see what will happen. Xiao Qi turned her attention to how this guy still can't take his eyes off this girl named Yun Chu. She thinks that she is important to him, and decides to clarify who she is. The black-haired man listened to her question, and decides to give a not very long answer on his own. He says that she is a stunning beauty. Xiao Qi heard this and hopes to hear more details from him. And then one gets the feeling that Xiao Qi is beginning to be jealous of his brother for this girl. She, being dissatisfied, grabs his hand and decides to clarify whether Yun Qi is really as beautiful as she is. While we can watch several people standing on the balcony, Ye Xiao Huan, meanwhile, answered the question in more detail and says that she is just a child and is perceived and beautiful to him differently. We are shown a close-up of the people who stood on this balcony. They are all important people, and among them there are a lot of familiar faces. They look into the distance, and the red-haired woman says that the Kanyun sect is really thriving. We see what is happening in the palace right now, namely a crowd of people, and Su Xiaoyan says that the sect is worthy of being the leader of the righteous sects of the world for thousands of years. They are very proud of this event. We see how a man begins to silently look at something. From the expression of his face, one might think that he is dissatisfied with something, but it is still unknown what exactly and right now we will have to find out. Yujizi in turn thinks that his sect is being praised too much, he says that a hundred years ago during the demon raid, the local sect fought them for three days. This bought them time for their righteous sects to gain strength. Speaking of the battle of good and evil, the girl decides to thank the Kanyun sect and the Kashyap temple for their enormous help. If they had not arrived on time, the Piao Miao pavilion would have ceased to exist. The head of the sect says that they are on the same wavelength together, and it is obvious that they are saying such words. It is clear that the elderly sage knows very well what he is talking about now. The person next to the head decides to support the head, saying that he is right. After all, the urgent duty of righteous disciples is to kill demons and maintain the path straight to heaven. The brown-haired girl says that while the Xuantian sect and its Piao Miao pavilion are only a thousand miles away from each other, when the demon sect attacked, the Kashian temple of the Kanyun sect, located thousands of miles away, collapsed. She looks very dissatisfied and says that the Xuantian sect's one-day trip alone took them three days. They apparently were in no particular hurry to help. These words cause dissatisfaction among everyone present. The girl further says that she would like to ask Elder Brother Mu if being late is the traditional program of their Xuantian sect, or if there is some other personal reason for this. Mu Chengxi intensed a little. Apparently, he doesn't like the fact that the whole conversation was about the tardiness of his sect members, so he wants to change the topic of conversation to something else, or simply doesn't want to share the details. The rest of those present, apparently, themselves want to avoid this awkward conversation, so they all together begin to look silently into the distance and pretend that nothing happened. 
After some time, Yujizi already understands that the game is about to begin very soon, and tells his younger sister Sue about this. He wants to first look at the battle and not mention some past unpleasant events. Su Xiaoyan listened to the sect leader and understood him. She fully intends to do exactly what he said. Also, in the meantime, she realizes that what her younger brother said was the absolute truth. In the next chapter, we see the union itself, which right now is just standing with a serious face and looking somewhere, while the rest of the competition participants are flying behind it, preparing for the start. After some time, her opponent came up to her stage, with whom she has a serious fight ahead right now. As usual, she remains completely calm and awaits what will happen next. Her opponents turned out to be some black-haired guy with a sword. He introduced himself under the name Xiao Wu, and he is a student of the master Qi Yan. This guy also wants to ask for some advice from this experienced girl. The people flying around on their swords continued to watch the battle, and seeing that the guy was asking her for advice, they thought that he had gone down and were trying to embarrass him. Xiao Wu got a little worried about this and just kept silent. The blue-haired girl, meanwhile, greets this guy back and introduces herself to him by her name. She also tells him that she needs advice from himself, but their fight should already begin. Next, the judge comes on stage to them and tells them that the result of the game is not important at all, and they both should pay attention to it. So the man suggests that these two participants do not waste time and start as soon as possible. Xiao Wu decides to make his move first. It is clear that he is very determined about this victory, and asks the younger sister Yun to be careful, because he has already charged his attack and is going to use it. We can observe the reaction of Jun Xu. She, in turn, simply continues to stand in place and does not care at all that he is going to attack now and warns her. She apparently knows what she is doing. This guy gets into a fighting stance, after which a bunch of swords begin to appear behind him. He is serious and is not going to back down, so this girl should be ready to repel this attack. Finally, after some time, Xiao Wu had already managed to charge his attack and, realizing that he was completely ready, pointed all his blades directly at her. They were already near this girl's face, but she did not even twitch from her place. Then suddenly for everyone, with just one swing of her weapon, she repelled this seemingly serious attack at first glance. For her, this is nothing. So now she will show this guy who is boss on this stage. Fire begins to burn all around after this. Yunzu looks straight at the shocked enemy, who was hoping that the attack would work, and the audience continues to watch how things heat up. Of course, the main character, together with Xiao Qi, noticed what happened in this arena. The black-haired one noticed that the blades that were aimed at the girl disappeared quite quickly, and this surprises him. Xiao Wu, of course, cannot stand such an attitude towards himself, so he took out his blade, which suddenly began to burn. This guy pounces directly on the blue-haired girl, who continues to quietly stand in her place and wait. In response to the guy's attack, the girl is in no hurry. She slowly turns to him and looks at him with her cool gaze, after which she begins to take out her sharp Zhanjin sword, apparently to cope with the attack. Xiao Wu, in turn, is already close enough. His expression right now is like that of a madman. He is about to strike a powerful blow with his sword, before which he swung it to cause more damage. Just one moment later, these two cross their swords. The blue-haired girl continues to remain completely calm, but from the blow of their swords, there was a bright flash and some kind of shockwave went around. This greatly influenced the audience, even the main character, along with Xiao Qi, cover their eyes from the light and begin to feel the heat from the fire, which also began to spread in different directions after this blow. Meanwhile, Xiao Wu and Yunqing continue to hold their swords in one position. Unfortunately for the guy, he slowly begins to realize that Yunqing is still stronger than him and it will be difficult for him in the future. We see the face of the blue-haired girl. She, as usual, remains completely calm and cool-headed. Even such a seemingly tough situation, she experiences very calmly and remains confident in her abilities. Further, you can understand that the girl was tired of keeping such a close distance with this guy. So with just one swing of her sword, she simply took it and threw it to the side, after which she just began to watch his flight. However, this guy was not at all confused. He used some kind of spray and his landing was quite excellent, despite the fact that in the air he gained enormous speed during the flight. Unexpectedly for the guy, Jun Shi was already tired of standing in one place and just fighting off his attacks. She decided that it was her time to attack and rushed forward. The guy saw this and decides to use the spell. It turned out to be some kind of fire spell. You can see how the girl is trying to get closer to the guy, but these rings of fire are blocking her entire path. It seems that she urgently needs to come up with something. The guy sees that the girl doesn't stop, so calling another ring in front of him, he tries once again to stop her, to get closer to him, because otherwise everything could end very badly for him. 
The main character, along with Xiao Qi, watched from a safe distance as Xiao Wu was able to summon a huge fiery beam in front of Yun Chu, which apparently was able to absorb her, because she is nowhere to be seen. After such a technique, the black-haired man decides to do something else, namely, he summons a huge fireball right into the nearest area in which this girl was located. Meanwhile, Xu Wu begins to look tired. Xiao Qi holds on to Ye Xiao Huan and says that this handsome guy in the arena has high magical power. The black-haired one decides to tell her that Xiao Wu is a disciple of Uncle Qi Yan and is usually very quiet. From the side, you can see how the events in the arena are also being watched by people on their swords from above. A huge explosion is visible, and Ye Xiao Huan is surprised, because Xu Wu suddenly armed himself with fire spells and was very frightening. Joyful Xiao Qi, watching what is happening, decides to ask Ye Xiao Huan who is stronger, he or Xiao Wu. The black-haired one does not want to brag, but says that he beat him earlier and is very pleased with it. After some time, the huge fireball was still in the arena, but suddenly for Xiao Wu, he noticed that something strange was starting to happen to the ball. He could not understand why. You can see this guy's bewilderment. He seems to have guessed what's going on and believes that this cannot be. He now understands that the union cannot be so easily caught in a trap, and he should not have used this technique. Suddenly for Xiao Wu, while he was trying to urgently do something to prevent the girl from coming out and kicking his ass, she still managed to come out and, to his surprise, pointed her blade straight at his forehead. The blade has been right at this loser's forehead for some time now. It is clear that he is now very worried and sweating. Meanwhile, he realizes that he has already lost because he simply cannot do anything to this girl. Next, the black-haired man, wanting to save his life, decides to simply give up. Kneeling down, the judge announces that Yun Siu won, and she, realizing this, immediately put the sword back behind her back. In the next chapter, we see how Zui Lao approaches Xiao Qi's mother and the blue-haired girl. Apparently, there will be some kind of conversation between the three of them, and what exactly we will now find out. This guy happily greets the elders Yao Fu and Fairy Lubo. He also expresses his respect to them, and after these actions, he probably expects the same from them. Xiao Fu turns to this guy and tells him that they have known each other for hundreds of years and are already old friends. So she asks to call her by something else to sound more youthful, because she doesn't like feeling old. After these words, the girl decides to check with the black-haired man whether Ye Xiao Huan, who is now on stage, is his student. Zui Lao, scratching his head, says that, yes, this is his student. Meanwhile, the main character from below notices the dialogue between these two people. He begins to consider his mentor Zui Lao to be full of brats, because it seems to him that he is telling something bad about him. Zui Lao, in turn, looks at this guy in response, and understands that given his current behavior, it seems that these three months of reflection were not in vain, and Ye Xiao Huan has really improved. Next, you can see how Xiao Fu and Lubo suddenly thought about something. They are looking at each other right now, and it even seems that they are thinking about the same thing. It seems they are going to turn to this man. After that, they still gain strength and turn to Zui Lao with a question. They guess that Ye Xiao Huan studied with him for 15 years, so they decide to ask him what his qualifications are. The satisfied man answers their question and says that Ye Xiao Huan has good talent, but he is not going to train and this gives the man a headache, so sometimes some problems happen to him. Next, we see the main character, who right now is just standing in a prominent place with a confident face, but as if he is waiting for something. But Zui Lao sees him and attracts the attention of others. These three continue to look at this guy. The black-haired one doesn't even know when the main character managed to achieve the fifth level of control of air and objects, because before his time he did not possess this. Anyone watching the main character understands that the child is still small, and he will become intelligent when he grows up. One gets the feeling that she is the only one of them who could understand this at all. We learn from her that the main character's mother was very naughty when she was little. Between the boy's eyebrows, he really looks like his mother in her youth. Zui Lao begins to attract the attention of the blue-haired woman. Apparently, he saw that she was very deep in her thoughts, so he decides to start knocking right on the railing so that she wakes up. Meanwhile, we again see the main character, who right now is standing in the ring under the gaze of those watching. He did not think that he would ever be here. He thinks that the teacher saw him and is now in shock. Next, it can be seen that the red-haired woman begins to praise Ye Xiao Huan, calling him cool. Apparently, she really likes his skills and she already wants to be just like him, namely just as cool. Yun Kyo turns to her older sister to clarify whether this Hu Dao Xin is really strong. Ning Xiangji says that this is not true because he has not been here for a long time and he has lost all his skills. The red-haired girl also says that, nevertheless, she practices fire magic weapons and her movements are very cruel, so she has every chance to defeat the main character and show him who is boss. 
We also learn that this red-eyed girl is very aggressive, because no matter who she deals with, she deals with everyone the same. So apparently, Ye Xiaohuan was unlucky to meet her in the ring. Next, Yunqiu begins to calmly examine the two rivals. For now, she is only silently studying them, taking into account the story from Ning Xiangzhi, which she recently told her, at the request of the blue-haired girl. After all this, Ning Xiangji decides to ask the blue-haired girl, who, in her opinion, will win this fight. After such a difficult question, Yunxiu suddenly thought about it in order to find the true answer. Suddenly, the blue-haired girl realized that Ning Xiangjie had asked her exactly what she had been thinking about in her head before, so she became very interested in how her sister had figured it out so quickly. The red-haired girl tells her that her face is like a cricket's shell, so she can calmly and without any problems understand her thoughts, because they have been friends together for many years with each other. Next, we understand that Ye Xiaohuan is also not easy. After all, he is the only true student of Mentor Zui. Anyone who underestimates the guy's skills during the competition will definitely lose. Meanwhile, two girls continue to talk about the main character, and it seems that they were talking about his handsome appearance. Meanwhile, a third girl noticed them and is about to approach. This red-eyed girl bursts into their conversation with a smile and offers to bet that Yi Xiaohuan will win. The red-haired girl thinks that this is already obvious, so she does not want to make any bets. Later, the blue-haired girl looks straight into the ring. She tells her friends that she saw the announcement that Ye Xiaohuan will go through two rounds. Hearing this, the two girls were very surprised and looked very interested. Ning Xiangji tells the blue-haired girl that this is impossible. Even if he accidentally defeats Dao Xin, then in the next round he will meet with Sun Yao, who in her opinion will be able to kick this guy's ass. Suddenly, we see how the blue-haired girl's face suddenly changes from too serious to more cheerful, in which case she invites her friends to place a bet so that they can have more fun watching the fight. After this, we see Zhu Chang Shui, who nevertheless decides to take advantage of the moment to get money and now begins to shout for everyone to come up to him and place a bet. He shouts about it all around and quite loudly, a lot of people have already gathered near this guy, and absolutely everyone votes for Ye Xiaohuan. This event even attracted the attention of Xiao Qi and did not wonder what was happening there. It turned out that she herself already understood what was happening there, so she begins to shout at Zhu Chang Shui, reminding him that he is friends with Ye Xiaohuan, and right now he is doing this behind his back and without his consent. Zhu Chang Shui was a little confused and scratching his head, says to Xiao Qi that friends are friends, support is support, but gambling is money, so he is not going to miss such a great chance. The dissatisfied blonde tells this fool that she doesn't care. Right now, she is very unhappy with his actions. But anyway, in order to win, she is going to bet for Ye Xiaohuan. She decides to take out her bag of money and quickly opening it, to her regret, discovers that she doesn't have any money at all. Realizing this, her mood dropped a little and she doesn't know what to do now. It turns out that the fox girl was not at all upset. She grabbed Zhu Chang Shui by the shoulder and asked him to borrow 10 tails of silver first. The guy was very shocked by this girl's confidence. We are again shown the current opponent of the main character. Right now, she looks straight at the guy with a confident look and lets him know that she will definitely be able to kick her ass during these competitions. However, the main character himself is also not going to retreat from the battlefield. He is very serious about winning. He asks her not to worry, because if a fight happens, he will definitely humiliate her. The girl, after these words from this boy, clearly became very angry. She believes that an ordinary boy cannot defeat her, so it seems that she is very confident in her abilities. In the next chapter, we see how apparently one of the judges of this fight begins to slowly approach the two participants who are waiting to kick each other's ass. And now they are just looking at each other in anticipation. He turns to Ye Xiaohuan and Hu Da Oxen. With a smile on his face, he tells them that they have a common origin and spirit, so they can fight to the end. These words tire them, and they will definitely listen to them. The girl turns to the elderly master and tells him that she has her own sense of proportion. She's going to make sure that the main character does not die, but he does not necessarily have arms and legs. The guy in turn just waves his arms and pretends that her words scare him. Supposedly it's scary for him and he's afraid of losing his limbs, but it's clear that this Sigma is not afraid of her at all. Not wanting to waste any more time, the girl looks straight at the guy and begins to take out her sword, which is called Lingzhou. It is made of pure Yang essence, and in general, this sword is very strong. Next, the girl puts her sword in front of her, to intimidate. One swing of the sword caused flames, after which she tells the guy to show his sword she thinks that she still has it cooler. After listening to her words and seeing her sword, the black-haired man begins to take out only the hilt of his sword. He now pretends that he is scared, and he is very worried that his opponent will just relax. 
He ordered his Ufen sword to show the blade. After the blade came out, the protagonist stood in his stance with a cool look and began to look straight at his opponent with a cold gaze. Yunkyo and Ning Xianzi turned their attention to this strange sword. The red-haired one was very surprised to see that the blade had come out of the weapon, and the blue-haired one already knows what's going on, so she has nothing to be surprised about here. Next, Junzi gets her sword and unexpectedly discovers that something strange is starting to happen to it. She does not understand what this means. The red-haired woman also noticed it. The blue-haired girl herself could not understand why the sword behaved this way, so she brought it closer to her face and in her thoughts decided to ask him directly what happened. Maybe he feels something. Meanwhile, while Zhang Jin Yunzi's sword is shaking, we see Ye Xiao Huan, whose sword begins to shake in the same way. He looks at it and does not understand what is happening. He finds it very strange. Taking it in his hands, he felt the vibration even more strongly. The spectators above this guy noticed his strange behavior and were already thinking that something wrong was happening to him and he would need help. After some time, the black-haired man discovers that his sword has finally stopped vibrating, after which he exhaled with relief, noticing this, and began to realize that this sword was truly psychic. Next, his sword Ufen begins to glow. Just like during his meditations, he and the sword look at his opponent, and the green-eyed one with his whole appearance makes it clear that he will kick her ass. From the expression on the girl's face, one gets the feeling that she is jealous of the guy's cool weapon. She tells him not to think that he will already win just because he has a very rare weapon. All this is observed from the side by Xiao Fu, who, being surprised, watches how both opponents have already fled towards each other, and now a fierce battle between them will begin. The fox woman immediately turned her attention to the Wufen sword right in the hands of the main character. She looks very surprised, because they can't understand where Ye Xiao Huan got this sword from. She, turning to Zui Lao, calls him generous, because she thinks that it was he who gave the Wufen sword to this boy. The surprised black-haired man has no idea what kind of sword we are even talking about. Later, he realized what kind of Ufen sword he was talking about. He was at a loss because he did not give this sword to the boy, which means that he found this sword somewhere with his own hands. Having heard the answer, Xiaofu with a smile on his face realizes that this Wufeng sword did not belong to the Kanyun sect. Meanwhile, the head of the sect, along with another person, is surprised to watch the main character with this sword. After a while, Yujizi's surprised face changed to a very angry one. He is trying to say something, and Mu Chenxian saw his emotions and decides to ask what happened, because he is interested in finding out about it. It turns out that Grandpa suddenly remembered some things that he still has to deal with. However, this is not a big deal at all, so he doesn't want to talk about it. The dark-haired guy listened to his words, remained a little dissatisfied. He is angry and understands that if this were some little thing, it would not have made this old man jump in surprise. The guy does not understand what is in his head. Next, you can see that the head of the sect calmed down and his face became completely serious again, after which he, scratching his beard as if nothing had happened, told people that today's game was interesting. Meanwhile, we return to Ye Xiao Huan, who is fighting with his opponent, he with his sword, crossed with the sword of this girl, and from the looks of it, he is now dominating her. She has already lost hope. However, unexpectedly for the guy, the girl managed to push him away with a swing of her sword, and only a trail of fire remains in the air when the girl moves her sword, after which she thinks to strike again. The girl again had hope of winning. She saw that this boy had some skills to win, but in her opinion, they would not be enough to stop her right now. After which, the girl temporarily begins to outperform the main character. Now he goes on the defensive and she goes on the attack. So far, it seems that the black-haired one is coping with the defense from her attacks. Ye Xiao Huan, Continuing to hold this girl in front of him for a while, realizes that this cannot continue like this, so he decides to simply use one of his spells. Using the spell, the guy threw this girl away from him some distance, after which he himself jumped back to an even greater distance from her, and thereby was able to free himself. The girl was very dissatisfied after such a technique from her opponent, but she was still able to stop making an excellent landing that deserves attention. Seeing that there was not a scratch on his opponent, the black-haired man remained dissatisfied, so he understands that he urgently needs to come up with something, so the guy is already starting to think about a plan of action. Meanwhile, the hot girl begins to summon a bunch of fire around her. She wants to complete this battle much faster so as not to waste time, and one gets the feeling that now her strongest attack will come. Seeing this girl's intentions, the main character tensed a little and seemed to begin to realize that she was going to do the same move that Xiao Wu did in the battle against Yun Cho. He was a little scared, Next, the girl silently sends a huge, fiery beam straight towards Ye Xiao Huan. He was not particularly taken aback and was able to reflect it with his Wufen sword, but he urgently needs to come up with something. 
Also, after some time, we see a huge fireball, just the same one that Xiao Wu used earlier. The attack is very serious, so everyone is wondering if Ye Xiao Huan can survive this. In the next chapter, we see how a girl shoots huge fiery rays at a guy, and he, in turn with hatred for her, tries to cope with this attack, enduring all this harsh heat because he has to. People are watching this fight. Xiao Qi is also surprised to watch her brother Ye Xiao Huan sing She is Surprised because she believes that Hu Daoxin now looks even stronger than Yun Chu's opponent, namely Xiao Wu. Meanwhile, the blue-haired Yun Chou herself is also watching this. She sees that Hu Daoxin is using the same technique against Ye Xiao Huan that Xiao Wu used against her. She wonders if the guy will be able to get out. Ning Xiangze, also sitting next to her friend, continues to watch everything that is happening. They both watch in silence. But Yun Xu hopes that the main character will get out of this trap because he saw how she did it. Then, after some time, history repeats itself. Hu Daoxin suddenly notices that something wrong is happening with this fireball. This caused her bewilderment, and she does not know what to expect next. Yunzi also noticed strange things happening in this ball. She realized that everything would be fine with Ye Xiao Huan, so she even stopped worrying because she knows that he will definitely defeat his opponent. You can see how the main character escaped from the trap and, in a rage, rushes straight at the girl. She, in turn, stands still in surprise and cannot understand how this can even be like this. However, Hu Daoxin is not going to give up under any circumstances, even now, so she managed to dodge this guy's attack and is already going to take some measures in the future because she doesn't want to lose. Xiao Qi is very happy for her brother Ye Xiao Huan. She calls him the most beautiful and the best. Meanwhile, the audience behind her looks as shocked as possible by what is happening in this ring. We see the head of the sect, who sits with an important heir on his throne and watches everything that is happening. Next to him are also two important people who, apparently, are going to comment on what is happening. Yujizi says he decides to clarify which two students are now competing in the Zun position arena. He expects to hear the answer to his question from Mu Chenxian, who is now standing with a serious face. This guy answers the question of the head of the sect. He says that his disciple Hu Daoxin and disciple Zui Lao, Ye Xiao Huan, are fighting there now. From these words, the black-haired man was even a little embarrassed. Hearing the name Ye Xiao Huan, the elderly bearded head realizes that he has heard this name before and remembers this guy. This is the baby that Zui Lao brought from the mountain about 15 years ago. Yujizi knows that Zui Lao has spent a lot of effort over the past 10 years on this kid. It can be seen because even though he is young, his cultivation level is quite good and he can make an excellent warrior. Xiao Fu also paid attention to the words of the head of the sect, and Zui Lao was generally very happy to hear what they were saying about his student, because it turns out that the years of his training were not in vain. Three months ago, Ye Xiao Huan was only at the fourth level of the Divine Sea Realm. In such a short period, his cultivation level has improved quite a lot, and it is simply amazing. The woman, looking at how the main character fights, finds it strange that his body technique seems to be nine palaces and eight steps. But there is something else that she wants to share. Next, she publicly declares that Jing Xuan's words are incorrect. She expects that now someone will pay attention to her because she wants to talk with others on this topic. Yujizi reacted to her words. He turns to her with a smile on his face and says that a certain Shenfa is dead, but his people are alive. He also noticed that Ye Xiao Huan's movements are quite strange. The teachers watch the main character fight again. They look at his technique and see that his sword technique and footwork didn't quite match the old tricks they taught him. In fact, they don't know the whole truth. The sect leader continues to look at this fight with admiration on his face. He believes that as long as you adapt to the circumstances, there is nothing wrong with it at all. The woman behind him is dissatisfied with these words. Grandfather also contacts Zui Lao, asks him a question. He wonders if he gave Ye Xiao Huan this fabulous sword. The man responded to this question and is going to give his honest answer right now. It is clear that he began to feel a little nervous, but he answered this question and says that he does not know where the guy got this sword. Not to mention the fact that he also signed up for the competition without knowledge. Yujizi looks at this man with a sly face and says that whoever the guy is participating now is only for the best, because otherwise one can say that his hard work would not be justified. Meanwhile, while the black-haired man and the sect leader were discussing their topics, Xiao Fu realized that the elder brother was joking again and was simply silent. Perhaps she even felt a little embarrassed, who knows. The woman understands that Wu Feng and Zhang Zhen came out at the same time, and fell into the hands of the younger generation of male and female disciples of the Kangyun sect. So it can be said that these two swords have long been found. Meanwhile, we return to the fight between the protagonist and his opponent. The guy tries to stab her with his sword, but she successfully blocks it and continues to look into the eyes of her opponent. Having blocked this blow, 
The girl realizes with horror that this guy is very smart. She will not be able to use her flame under continuous attacks, so she urgently needs to come up with something. After some time, the main character pressed his opponent right to the edge of the ring. The girl, having retreated a little, realizes that there is nowhere else to run. She, being between a rock and a hard place, tells the guy that she is not afraid of him. Next, you can see how the girl decided to prove to everyone around her that she was not going to endure it. So she used her flame and began to run towards the guy, wanting to gain the upper hand in this battle. The serious-minded girl is already very angry. She hits the guy and sends him to the devil. You can see how the main character flies off several meters after the hit, and it seems that this is the end for him. However, she was not prepared for the fact that Ye Xiaohuan would suddenly turn blue and decide to launch a sudden counterattack. She looks at him in bewilderment and no longer understands what can be done about it. This guy hits this girl with his bare hand, causing her to feel pain and fly straight down the cliff at high speed, of course. No one could have expected such a turn of events. The girl continues to fly down from the cliff. Horror is visible in her eyes, and while still in flight, she cannot understand how this is even possible. She does not believe what just happened to Ye Xiaohuan. After this, the judge of the competition declares Ye Xiaohuan the winner. Because Hu Daoxing fell from the cliff, he is pleased to remove the blade of his sword, because at the moment he will no longer need it. In the next chapter, we see a crowd of people who saw what happened in this arena. Absolutely all of them are very surprised by what just happened and cannot believe it. They think that they are dreaming everything. Meanwhile, Xiao Qi also saw this trick. She thinks her brother is simply magnificent and is very happy that he won. She wants to see more of his victories in the near future so that he makes her happy. We see the main character again, but he looks surprised. He himself cannot believe that he was able to win. Obviously, he himself did not expect such a reception from himself. The guy joyfully begins to look around, looking for Tsui Lao, hoping that he saw it. The guy is very happy that he was still able to promote the name of his master, and now he will be popular. You can see how Ye Xiaohuan can no longer restrain his emotions and begins to laugh loudly with joy. Meanwhile, a large number of spectators are watching him, who are going to add a couple of comments. Some viewers think that the guy cheated in this fight and used something forbidden. Someone is also dissatisfied with the fact that he lost his money on bets, and someone was surprised by Ye Xiaohuan's victory. Next, the black-haired man begins to bow to everyone present and thank them for coming here today and supporting him. The audience still continues to admire the strength of this Sigma. Suddenly, the guy has his own haters. Someone thinks that no one needs the guy and no one supports him. They even ask him to leave this arena as soon as possible. But the guy continues to rejoice at his victory. And then, while Ye Xiaohuan continued to rejoice at his victory and communicated with the crowd of spectators, a man flying on a sword appeared behind him and began to call this guy by his name. Of course, he turned to the source of this noise and, to his surprise, saw a panner there who flew up on her sword and took his opponent from the bottom of the pit. The purple-haired one now considers the main character cruel. However, it seemed to the black-haired man that she wanted to take revenge on him and sneak up on him while he was tired after the fight. But having recently become convinced of his high powers, Ye Xiaohuan tells her that he is not afraid of her. We see how the main character addresses the girl from a very long distance, but she cannot understand why he runs so far, since, according to him, he is not the least bit afraid of her. And then we see how the brown-haired woman next to the purple-haired woman came to her senses. She heard all her words and asked her not to be reckless, and first returned to a safe place. Gupaner seemed to think about it. The purple-haired girl is very angry, because she wanted to kick Yi Xiao Wan's ass, but she still listened to the words of her friend and made the right decision namely to leave the battlefield and perhaps deal with the guy later. Meanwhile, the main character can only watch how both girls fly away from him at high speed. He now thinks that Gupaner was scared of him and decided not to get involved in a fight with him. The black-haired man, continuing to look after the girls, realizes that he did not even use 10% of his strength, which is why his opponent was not hurt. Behind the guy, people with flying swords are now descending to the ground. You can see how all the spectators begin to descend to the ground one by one. They are now standing right behind Yun Cho and Ning Xiangzhe, who are silently walking in some direction and are about to discuss something among themselves. The dissatisfied red-haired girl cannot understand how this clever guy won this battle. She believes that the younger sister Hu did not perform in the best way, so she could have done it much better. The blue-haired girl says that if she had gathered all her spiritual fire into one point, then Ye Xiaohuan would not have been able to defeat her. She is sorry that Hu Dao wanted to take out his anger on New Panner and teach Ye Xiaohuan a lesson. That is why, according to Yun Chu, the girl dispelled the spiritual fire, giving Ye Xiaohuan an opportunity. The red-haired girl says that earlier Yun Qiu was optimistic about Ye Xiaohuan's performance. 
After her friend's words, the blue-haired girl suddenly silently thought about something. Apparently, she understands that she changed teams quickly enough, and she should have continued voting for the main character. At the moment, Yuncho cannot say anything about the main character. Then Ning Xiangji does not understand why she thinks that Xiao Huan can defeat Sun Yao in the next fight in this competition. We learn that Sun Yao is a master of the out-of-body realm. He received the true inheritance from Master Yang Yi when it comes to understanding the path of Yin Yang, Chen Kun, and Ye Xiao Huan will not be able to catch up with him. The blue-haired girl listened to her friend, but told her that she already knows everything about it, but is still confident that Ye Xiao Huan can win. The red-haired girl does not understand that even after all this, she still thinks so. Yunzu, in response to Ning Xiangji's question, simply calmly made a sly look and decided not to waste too much time on idle chatter. She only says that she feels that he can win. The red-haired girl doesn't understand what's funny at all. She stopped in place and thought while her friend continues to walk forward. It seems strange to her that she only feels it and doesn't even present any evidence. Next, we see Zui Lao, who is very pleased with the success of his student. He is very happy to realize the fact that his student, Ye Xiaohuan, has become very powerful and thereby promoting his name. Xiaofu turns to the blue-haired girl and tells her that such a long train journey was indeed not in vain. Lubo remembered the stories of Ye Xiaohuan's life experiences that day, and she was shocked. Lubo says that hearing is better than seeing. This child is really somewhat like her mother. This girl understands that her sister is good at everything, but she is paranoid too often for no reason. The blonde with a smile on her face realizes that this guy is the flesh and blood of Liu Yun. She just didn't know it before. Now that she has found his location, she can't just ignore this child. Zui Lao interrupts the conversation and says that Ye Xiaohuan is his student. He doesn't care who his parents are, and he doesn't want him to know about his life experiences. Otherwise, he might get killed. Please forgive Zui Lao not to worry, because naturally this child's past will not be revealed. But however, she does not want him to follow the old path of Liu Yun, and this scares her very much. Next, Lubo decides to tell the man that she has a student named Bai Li Yuan. She wonders if he knows about this. It turned out that this name seems somehow familiar to Zui Lao. He tries to remember this student, and remembered that it seems that he is also called the Water Snake Fairy. It seems to the man that Yun Xu is quite famous among the younger generation. The black-haired man decides to turn to the fairy, and clarify with her what she actually means when she talks about this. She, in turn, listened to this question, and right now she is already going to give a clear answer to it. The girl with a smile on her face says that Bai Li Yuan and Ye Xiaohuan are the same age, and she plans to get them engaged. If Ye Xiaohuan's biography is revealed in the future, then she can save his life on Mount Lubo. In the next chapter, we see Zui Lao, who right now is at a loss. He thanks the fairy for her kindness, but does not understand whether they manage to betroth to each other and whether everything will be fine. The blue-haired girl asks the man not to worry about anything, neither about the drunken old man nor about anyone else. She says that everything will be fine and she promises it, which means there shouldn't be any problems. Liubo notes that as long as they are having a good discussion, so what difference does it make if suddenly someone disagrees? It is clear that the man begins to smile, which means he is satisfied with everything. Suddenly we see our main character again, a man runs up to him with a small bag in his hands and calls Ye Xiaohuan amazing. For his wonderful experience, the guy looks at this man in surprise. It turned out that it was Xiao Qi. The black-haired man noticed that she had a lot of money in her bag, but did not understand where it came from. The girl told him that he could win the competition and earn it all. She shows a lot of people who just stand and smile. The girl says that it was all of them who bet that he would lose. And she bet on his victory and won a lot of money. The dissatisfied protagonist sees that almost absolutely no one has placed a bet on him. Except for Xiao Qi, he looks at these unfortunate people and already thinks that this world is in decline. His friend Zhu Chang Shui approaches the main character. He says that they have all lost their money. He asks him to comment on this situation in a couple of short words, and it is not clear why exactly. However, the main character looks very angry. He lost his temper when he learned that people were gambling. He grabbed his friend and decided to ask him who was to blame for this. Meanwhile, the others were just watching. People in the crowd say that no one thought that Ye Xiaohuan could win, but even if they lost money, they are still happy for him. Tonight, they will have to celebrate with a treat from Zhu Chang Shuya. However, Zhu Chang Shui is against this celebration, he shouts at these people, because he does not understand why he should invite them all, since large sums of money are spent on them, and this does not suit him. Xiao Qi suddenly decides to approach the main character. She says thank him, she won a lot of money, so in honor of this, she wants to offer him something to cheer him up. She again raises her bag of money and invites the black-haired man to go and have a snack at her expense. Peering into her smile, it will be very difficult to say no to her, because then her conscience will torment her. 
However, the main character is clearly a little confused. He says that this is good, but he has already been in Segoya for three months, so it's time for him to go home. He invites her to go and eat sometime next time. Apparently, the events have already transferred to Ye Xiao Huan's house. Right now, he is sitting alone and eating food. He is sitting alone in an empty room right now, and no one is bothering him, so he can relax. You can see how the black-haired man absorbs all the food with great appetite. He really misses home-cooked food. Because he hasn't eaten it for three whole months, he is going to enjoy every second at this table. He then begins to eat his noodles. With great pleasure, he shoves the whole plate straight into his mouth without observing any manners, after which he puts the almost completely clean plate back on the table. Having already completely filled his stomach, the guy is about to leave this room. Meanwhile, he realizes that the master was right. Because he will not say a word if he does not return for dinner, the guy is convinced of this. The main character continued to walk around his house, looked around and suddenly found something unusual for himself, which he was incredibly happy about he was going to check this thing. He is about to set something on fire while thinking about it now. In the past, he lacked Taoism and had to rely on the teacher to light the lamp, but that was really ridiculous. But now he can do it himself. After the main character was able to light a candle with the help of his powers, he continues to look around. But now in good lighting, he realizes that during his absence, this place has become dilapidated. He picks up one of the plates and sees that it is completely empty. Meanwhile, he realizes that as soon as he left this place, the master may not have even bothered to cook anything. It can be seen that it is pitch dark outside, and the main character continues to sit in his house and deal with various matters. He may even have to do some general cleaning, because everything around him is dirty. Then we see how, in the meantime, Zui Lao and Lubo begin to go to Ye Xiaohun's house. Apparently, they are now going to talk to the main character about the engagement in the near future, hoping that he will agree. Zui Lao begins to open the door. The black-haired man, who had just inspected his house, hears this familiar sound and turns around to see the master. He is very glad that he has finally returned and they have seen each other. Having passed through the curtains, Ye Xiaohuan continues to be pleased with himself. He says directly that he is proud of himself, and today he is generally very cool, because he was able to win his first victory in the competition. Zui Lao, seeing the boy he knew, was very happy. This can be understood from his facial expression, because they had not seen each other for three whole months, and the blue-haired girl was just waiting to start talking. To the guy's surprise, his master did not come here alone, but with his guest. The black-haired man silently looks at her and is already thinking what can be done, because he did not expect her arrival at all. Ye Huan turns to the master and says that he didn't know that he had guests. Apparently, he thought that the two of them were going to have fun, so the guy decides to leave them alone. Supposedly, he didn't see anything. This embarrassed them. It's clear that Zui Lao lost his temper because of this guy's behavior. He got angry and was ready to scold him for such words and for the fact that he and the girl were able to embarrass him so much. And the girl just smiles. We see the view from the street. Right here you can even hear Ye Xiaohuan scream. He realized that he had angered his master, so this man will have to re-educate this kid and show who is boss. Next we see the main character, who right now is sitting on his knees with a huge bump on his head and admits his guilt to his master for making a mistake. He hopes that he can be forgiven. The dissatisfied master tells him not to say any nonsense in front of the fairy Lubo. She understands that children are ignorant and a little childish, so this is normal for her, and she is not offended at all. In this case, the blue-haired fairy allows the black-haired guy to get up from his knees. She lets him know that she completely forgives him. He awkwardly stands up on his feet and thanks the fairy for her kindness. Next, the main character still decides to show his manners. He bows and greets the older lady. It is clear that even Zui Lao has a smile on his face. He is proud of his student. The blue-haired girl begins to smile. She understands that the waves behind the Yangtze River are really pushing the waves forward, turning to the man. She says that this world belongs to young people, and they are already old. But Zui Lao, in turn, is not going to despair. He only asks the fairy not to say that this is a joke. For example, he is really getting old but fairies always remain young and beautiful. Zui Lao also considered it necessary to pay attention to the main character. Because he has really grown up well over these 15 years, he decides to ask him if the guy has a girl he likes. And here, the main character, like a typical teenager, became embarrassed. He, like all his peers, wants to acquire a rich milf. But of course, he would be embarrassed to say something like that in their face. The man is serious. He tells the guy that he has not been a child for a long time, so he decides to check with him again if he has a girl he likes. The man does not want to hear any jokes. It is clear that the main character is very confused and shy. He somehow gains strength after some time and answers his question, saying that he does not have a girlfriend yet. He is wondering what they want from him. 
Next, the black-haired man tells them that if the fairy has a suitable candidate, then let them not forget to offer him one. The fairy, in turn, asks the guy not to worry about it, because she has everything under control. With a pleased look, she tells the guy that she is with his teacher, old friends, and she carefully keeps in her heart the events that happened to his students throughout her life. Someone remembered a drunken old man. After the words spoken by the fairy, the black-haired man slowly begins to understand them, but he still continues to worry a little, because he doesn't understand what they want from him, because he was sitting calmly in his house. Next, Zuilao decides to say a few words to this guy. He says that in addition, he has one question for Ye Xiaohuan. He looks at this man as if he knows exactly what question he will ask. It turned out that the question was completely unrelated to the topic they were talking about. The master decides to check with his student about his recent rapid progress in spiritual practice and wants to find out everything. After some time, the day has already arrived. After all this dialogue, the main character flies into the palace on his sword for some purpose. Perhaps this is even another battle in this competition. Having reached his destination, the main character abruptly jumps off his sword and lands in a very cool way near some people. He is very interested in how many people are participating in today's game. The black-haired man reads the inscriptions on the wall. He sees the names of the participants, but one of them turned out to be unfamiliar namely Zhao Hu. The guy thinks that it would be great if they helped him seriously defeat Sun Yao. While the main character was reading the inscriptions on the wall, people he already knew suddenly approached him. He paid attention to them, and they, in turn, saw him and immediately realized that it was Ye Xiaohuan. It turned out to be four people, among them students of the Ziwei school, Gu Paner and even Sun Yao himself. He seriously approaches the main character and asks what he is doing here. Apparently, he decides to get to the bottom of him. However, the main character still decides to answer the question of his sworn enemy. Turning to him, he only says that he is watching the announcement of the battle, and he is not doing anything wrong now. Next, this unremarkable guy with a satisfied face tells this guy that there is no need to read anything, because his next opponent will be him. Meanwhile, Gu Paner simply remains silent and watches. The main character tells this guy that he read that Sun Yao is going to fight Zhao Hu, and then he will fight someone else. He asks them who Zhao Hu is, and these people seem to be terrified. However, despite this, the purple-haired girl still supports Sun Yao. She believes that he cannot lose this battle. She advises the main character to be careful, because Sun Yao is stronger than he thinks. Gu Paner loses his temper and looks at the guy and the girl, the guy says. She reminds him of people with a cold face and a warm heart. The girl, meanwhile, saw Gu Paner's reaction to these words. The purple-haired woman points her finger at the main character and tells him that he used treacherous methods to defeat Sister Ho but Sun Yao will be able to achieve justice and defeat him. The black-haired man, in turn, listened completely to this abnormal girl. He finally realized that she was accusing him of completely using deception and cheating in the fight. The black-haired man was dissatisfied with this. He is evil and tells them that he did not use a sneak attack or a hidden weapon. He fought her one-on-one -on -one and so on. This list is huge and confirms that the main character did not cheat at all. Meanwhile, the main character still continues to provide evidence of why he fought honestly. It seems that Gu Paner already very much regrets that she even dared to accuse him of this. After the main character spoke out to her, he dissatisfied begins to leave this place. Meanwhile, the purple-haired girl hugs Chang Xiaoman, trying to calm down after the experience. Meanwhile, the start of the battle is already approaching. The audience sees that a certain older brother is about to enter the stage. They believe that he is the strongest here, and already think that he will be able to defeat absolutely everyone here. We see the main character who thinks that this competition was started in honor of Gu Jianqi's older brother, because he is so popular. He understands that Sister Yun and Xiao Qi should have come and watched his battle. And then suddenly, as soon as the guy remembered about Xiao Qi, she immediately appeared behind him. He was glad that he had finally found his older brother in this crowd, and the black-haired man was scared because of her sudden appearance. Ye Xiaohuan realizes that he was scared at all. Despite the fact that she is just a small and sweet girl, she tells him that she was just wondering where he was all this time, so she was looking for him. Next, Xiao Qi approaches the main character and suddenly begins to look up. She, as usual, is happy with what she has just seen. But the main character is perplexed and does not understand what she is even looking at. It turned out that something very similar to a certain scroll suddenly began to open above them. They, along with the rest of the people who came to the competition, watched this thing with pleasure. Xiao Qi grabbed the main character by the hand and still continues to admire what he now sees in front of him. Ye Xiaohuan also sees it and believes that right in front of him is now a picture that opens the world. 
In the next chapter, we see a guy who seems to be flying a carpet plane. He stands on it with an important look while people below watch him, never ceasing to admire his skills. Having flown in this way for some distance, this guy realizes that he is already close enough to the ground, so without any problems, he jumps from his vehicle to the ground. Then you can see how the thing he was flying on begins to disappear and seems to be wound back onto some kind of stick. The guy stands and waits until this whole process is finally completed so that he can move on. It can be seen that his airplane carpet was wound back onto either some kind of stick or his sword. Now this guy stands with an important look and waits until the people present who saw this begin to praise him. Yet, after standing in one place for a while, this guy begins to receive praise from the audience who saw this performance. They understand that it was a painting that reveals the sky. People think he is beautiful. The main character and Xiao Qi still look at him. Xiao Qi still admires him, and the guy thinks that his attacks are too powerful. He thinks that the older brother needs to come up with a different image. Xiao Qi heard what the black-haired man said, because these were his thoughts out loud, so her curiosity takes over, and she decides to ask him which elder brother he is talking about, Ye Xiao Huan will answer this question. She can watch her older brother right now, because he is performing his performance in the arena, so she herself can come here at any time and see how cool he is. Meanwhile, this older brother continues to give a performance to this audience. He continues to move in different directions, and his face remains completely serious, because this guy knows what he is doing. It can be seen that the older brother met the gaze of his next opponent. That guy, just like himself, looks very serious and silently looks back at him, wanting to win. Meanwhile, all the spectators, including the main character along with Xiao Qi, are watching the events that are taking place in the arena. They are wondering how everything can end here, and the blonde thinks the appearance of the participants is beautiful. It can be seen that the dark-haired guy shows respect to his opponent. Right now, he is turning to the elder Gu, begging him to show mercy, because it seems that right now he is not confident in his abilities. We are shown the older brother. He also expresses respect to his opponent but does not understand why the younger brother he decided to be so modest. He wants a normal duel with a normal fight. The judge also comes on stage. He understands that these two rivals are the elite among the younger generation, so he decides not to waste his time on any nonsense and immediately announces the start of the fight. One of the guys immediately decides to start the attack first. He slowly takes out his sword and is about to use some kind of spell. Some kind of accumulation of energy is already visible near him. Another opponent saw this and realized that he would have to take some action, rather than just stand still, because otherwise he might simply lose. So he came up with an ingenious plan. He decided to take out his sword and start running in a straight line straight towards his opponent. Meanwhile, the guy in blue remains completely calm and is just waiting for the right moment to start acting. You can see how the attacking guy was about to strike his opponent, and he was completely confident that he would succeed. But unfortunately for him, his opponent blocked his attack. A self-confident guy, who was somehow able to stop a powerful oncoming attack, suddenly discovers that the place where his opponent's sword hit is starting to smoke for some reason. And then suddenly this dark green smoke begins to envelop the guy from head to toe. He remains completely calm, because apparently he has begun to understand what it really is, and maybe it will even help. His dark-haired opponent had to suddenly jump to the side. He runs back and tells Big Brother Goo that he was offended, and this could end quite badly for him. Big Brother Gu is not at all intimidated by his opponent's self-confidence because he seems to be much more experienced than him. So his look has become quite serious and he is going to do something. A huge wall of fire formed in front of his younger brother. He was forced to stop and now he just stands and looks at this accumulation, not knowing what to do. Apparently he will have to wait until it subsides. Meanwhile, among the spectators, Yun Cho and Ning Xiangji are also watching this. Watching this battle, these experts understand that everything will be fine with this. He Shujian, they are very confident in this. The red-haired woman adds comments and says that unexpectedly, he has also reached the seventh level of Yin Yang, Chen Kun Dao, and some elder brothers will suffer from this battle. Meanwhile, the blue-haired girl completely listened to her friend, but did not tell her the answer. Apparently, she was interested in the result of this battle, so she silently continued to follow him, not wanting to miss anything. And then suddenly someone appeared behind the girls. While the girls were watching this fight, he said behind them that the words of the elder sister Ning were wrong. The girls heard him and would try to find him now. It turned out that Ye Xiao Huan is together with Xiao Qi, who are standing on the sword. The guy says that although the elder brother is very strong, so nothing can threaten him, and he is able to win this battle. Ning Sheng, Ji was very dissatisfied that this smug black-haired guy interfered in her conversation with Yun Xu, because they were talking about their own things. 
She doesn't understand how he dared to join them. The main character stands confidently in front of these two dangerous girls, despite the fact that at least one of them is hostile towards him. While the guy is hugged by Xiao Chai, he says that they should treat each other kinder. Again, the black-haired man says that in his opinion, the older brother simply wanted to save his opponent's face and, moreover, he is not going to finish off his younger brother with just one blow. Ye Xiaohuan says that Yun Xiu should therefore be careful when the time comes. With her way of doing things, even if she activates the Beidou technique, it will be extremely difficult to defeat elder brother. It seems that this blue-haired girl has a very difficult time perceiving the truth, so she got a little angry, and now looks at the main character with her angry face wanting to hit him. And then suddenly the black-haired fool begins to smile insidiously. He is now in his thoughts and wants the girl to consider this thousand-tail hairpin on her head as his reward for the reminder. Next, you can see how Junzi still continues to look at the main character with an embittered look. Even for a second, there is a feeling that she was able to read his thoughts and understood what he meant. Next, the blue-haired girl decides to change the topic and asks Ye Xiaohuan who the girl who is holding his hand all the time is. The attention of all people suddenly switched to Xiao Qi. Suddenly, you can notice that Ye Xiaohuan, for some unknown reason, became agitated after this question. Perhaps he noticed something terrible, or he thinks that Yun Qiu wants to do something with Xiao Qi. In the next chapter, you can see how the main character stood and thought for a while, and still decides to introduce them to each other. Right now, he will tell them about Xiao Qi in more detail so that they know. However, the red-haired girl interrupts him and says that she did not expect him to be capable enough, because even this girl, the three-tailed fox, has a close relationship with him, and this surprises her. In response to this girl, the black-haired man only became very embarrassed, scratching his head, expressing his emotion, and apparently not even going to hide it, and Xiao Qi seemed to be at a loss now. And then suddenly, fear began to be visible in the eyes of the main character. He suddenly remembered that someone called Xiao Chai a demon fox. He begins to believe that he is friends with a very dangerous creature. We see how this guy begins to look directly at Xiao Chai with frightened eyes, and she, in turn, continues to hold his hand and looks straight into his eyes. The black-haired man is now scared. Next, the main character turns to this girl and with a trembling voice asks her if this girl is a demon fox, he is very interested in the answer to this question. And then Xiao Qi suddenly said, yes. And then suddenly the main character, having learned that she was still a demon, jumped away from her embrace and asked why she didn't tell him about it earlier. Because right now, she's scaring him to death. Next, Ye Xiaohuan decides to check whether Xiao Qi's tale is real, or if it is a fake from AliExpress, Yun Chou, and Ning Xiangzhe. See this strange picture and no longer know how to react to it. The blonde tells the guy that she already told the guy about this when they first met. Her name is Yao Xiaoti, and she comes from Tianqi. But she apparently does not take into account the fact that Ye Xiaohuan was a baby back then. And here you can see tears in the guy's eyes. He knows that she is from Tianqi, but she didn't say that she was a demon fox. She says that he didn't even ask her about it, and that's why she didn't tell him. We see how Xiao Qi herself is already starting to cry, her eyes are watering, and she is already thinking that her brother will stop loving her just because she is a demon fox, and this makes her sad. Next, the black-haired man got ready and hugged this fox girl with a smile. He says that he's happy with everything. He's just a little surprised, and she's still his sister Xiao Qi whom he loves. The guy also understands that his master and her mother are old friends, so he simply cannot help but love her. She is now very joyful because she realizes that brother Ye Xiaohuan is a very kind person. We see how they all turned away from their conversation and again decided to turn their attention to the battle that is now taking place in the arena. They right now realize that soon everything is about to end. Now you can see the battle itself. A serious explosion occurred between the two opponents. They are standing at a certain distance from each other and judging by the situation, it becomes clear that very soon everything will end. One of the opponents screams and throws his sword towards the other guy because he doesn't want to get close to him with his feet, so he decided to just send his weapon at him. The other guy is seen doing the same thing. He threw his sword in the same way towards his opponent, and now the question arises who will be hit first by this attack. After standing for some time with the sword above his head, the guy at great speed already threw it straight towards the opponent. Now it's really unclear what will happen, but we'll find out soon. Suddenly, the swords of two strong opponents collided in the air and seemed to start fighting with each other, but the owners controlled them remotely. Their strength simply amazed everyone around. After some time, the swords continued to fight until a small explosion occurred, after which they simply stuck straight into the ground and were already awaiting further action from their owners. One of the rivals calls on his sword named Sky to come back, 
The sword, of course, just like some obedient pet returns back to this guy at his sole request. The sword is already starting to float right in front of his face. This guy with an important look is just standing there and doing nothing, as if he was expecting something from his opponent to be fair. It is clear that the second fighter is trying to do the same thing. He is also trying to call his sword back, but he is not going to obey him. The main character is already tense and asks his sword to hurry up with his actions. The guy makes more and more efforts to try to return his sword back to his hands, but nothing comes of it, and his opponent simply continues to expect something from him. The guy is already sweating from the fact that he is straining so much, trying to return this sword back, but it is clear that the sword does not give in at all, and it is still stuck in the ground people around see this. Xiao Qi, worried about him, grabs the main character by the hand again and sees that this guy has reached his limit. The black-haired man, in turn, continues to observe the events and is interested in what will happen. The girls, in turn, are still watching the fight. They are both surprised, but they do not even comment on what is happening, but only while they watch, wanting to know what awaits them in the future in this fight. This guy, who is still trying to get his sword back, thinks that he is just a laughing stock in front of a bunch of people. He is already silent and doesn't say anything, because he was actually embarrassed. Next, this guy says that he submits. He sees that the elder brother Gu has mastered the true Dharma. The younger brother is now ready to yield. It seems that he could not cope with the fact that his sword did not return. The elder brother Gu also expresses respect to his opponent in return. He considers him a genius and also believes that he himself was able to win this battle only thanks to luck and accepts his offer. The black-haired man understands that the older brother is truly a strange person. Just a minute ago, he was tense on stage, but in the blink of an eye, he can turn an enemy into a friend and this amazes him. The blue-haired woman also saw this. She says that if they are proud of their superiors, but do not tolerate those below them and intimidate the strong, but do not intimidate the weak, then you will naturally be respected. Next, the satisfied main character decides to turn to the girl with one small question. He makes a sly smile and decides to ask her when their bet will end, because he is very interested in this question. Ning Xiangzhe, hearing these words from Ye Xiaohuan, became a little angry. She simply cannot believe that Yun Chou is still arguing with this fool, and the blue-haired girl is simply silent in response. In the next chapter, you can see how the union makes it clear to the main character that he is not going to break his promises, so he just wants to find out from him how much money he wants for this dispute. She hands him several copper coins. The black-haired man and Xiao Qi look at these things with a very surprised look and cannot believe that they can get it now. The guy says that she only has two copper coins left in her wallet, so he doesn't have the courage to take her money. Then Jun Xu wonders what he really wants. The black-haired one asks her to forget about it because the two of them have known each other for some time. The blue-haired one warns him that later the bet will be calculated and he will not receive his money. She heard the words of the main character and it seemed as if it was even pleasant to hear them. She was very pleased because he has a heart and someone from the outside also attracted her attention. It turned out that she was a dissatisfied red-haired woman. She grabbed the boy by the ear and reminds him that he bullied his sister Yun Zhu the guy asks to let him go, because he is in pain. The blue-haired girl decided to remember all those moments when the guy showed her his kindness and care, so she asks her friend to let go of this helpless boy's ear. Of course, Ning Xiangji listened to Yun Chou, because they have known each other very well for a long time. Later, the blue-haired girl gave Ye Xiaohuan something. He and Xiao Qi look at it in surprise. After some time, their paths begin to diverge. The main character, along with Xiao Qi, joyfully fly away in another direction, and the guy thanks for this item, promising to give something much better one day. The red-haired girl asks her friend why she gave him the hairpin, because he is such a naughty guy. She says that she made a bet with him and therefore was indebted to him. She asks the red-haired girl to forget about it, because this hairpin was bought at some stall for only three cents. The guy was happy that he could do it, and it also paid off the old debt, so everything is fine. Events are transferred to some forest, into which Ye Xiao Huan Yu and Xiao Qi fly. Having flown closer to the ground on their sword, these two are already jumping straight to the ground and are going to do business here. The main character looks with great appetite at the hairpin that Yun Chu gave him. He drools because he believes that thanks to this item, he will be able to get rich, and finally his life will be completely happy. We see Xiao Qi's reaction to the very disgusting behavior of the main character. She sees how he examines this hairpin and understands that he actually laughs quite disgustingly. She was not ashamed to even admit it. The fox girl is already starting to think that this guy likes Jun Xiu, and this is just a sign of love that she gave him. The black-haired one is now in bewilderment after her words, because the matter is completely different. The guy thought about this girl's words about a sign of love. He now looks at this thing more carefully, and the girl is very irritated and asks him to quickly explain what's going on here, 
and why he likes this thing so much. This Sigma in response only hit her on the head with this hairpin. He says that she is just a little girl, so most likely she will not understand anything. Because this is a lot of money. The girl felt unpleasant from the blow. Feeling the pain after the blow, she begins to think that this hairpin is made of silver. Judging by the severity, she believes that with due effort she can even pierce someone's head with this pathetic thing. Xiaoqi is now very angry and is not going to hide it at all. She speaks about this directly to the main character and knocks him on the head. She sees that this guy likes Yun Shu, and he, in turn, asks him not to make him laugh. Next, the black-haired Gigachad begins to hold this little one at a distance with only one hand, and she continues to be angry. The guy thinks that Zhu Chang Shui can buy a hairpin for a thousand tails. And then it dawned on the guy. He understands that this proves that the value of this thing far exceeds a thousand tails, the guy believes. The black-haired man, realizing this, continues to look at him carefully. Next, the black-haired man decides not to waste any more time and start acting. He grabbed Xiao Qi by the hand and led him somewhere, because his prosperity and wealth for the rest of his life will depend on this hairpin. Meanwhile, we see another fight in the arena. Now Zhao Hu and Sun Yao will perform. And the fight has already begun. The audience, as usual, is watching these events from above to keep abreast of events. Sun, after the start of the fight, decides to strike first. With a serious face, he advances directly towards his opponent, and Zhao Hu sees this and prepares to take some measures against this guy. It can be seen how Sun Yao, having closed the distance with his opponent, tried to strike him with his blow, and he in turn simply blocked it with his sword and is going to do something else next. Sun Yao was not taken aback and is now going to use one of his spells. He remains completely serious as before, and is going to beat the crap out of his opponent to show who is boss. This spell did not cause any damage to his Zhao Hu. He was only thrown back a little, but he calmly held on and did not even fall off his feet. Like a real man, he understands that something needs to be done. His sword flies above this guy's head. The audience sees this and understands that Zhao Hu is not easy. They don't understand how he could hold out for so long under the attack of his elder brother Sun Yao. For them, it seemed impossible. The audience seeing his sword considers it a magical weapon of the earth. Sun Yao praises his level of development. But he believes that the enemy is completely behind him. As they say, if you hold out for long, you will lose. These words from his opponent angered Zhao Hu too much. He begins to lift stones near him, and his sword is still in the air. He asks Sun Yao to come closer, if of course he has the courage. It is further seen that Sun Yao finally realizes that his opponent is stubborn enough that he will have to take action against him. He warns him of the attack and promises to stop him with it. You can see how Sun Yao begins to pick up speed and accelerate straight towards Zhao Hu. It seems that someone is about to have a very bad time, but it is not clear who exactly. Zhao Hu, with a scratch on his face, saw his opponent approaching, so he realized that he really needed to do something about this, and of course, he was not going to just stand still and wait for a miracle. Using his magical powers, this guy managed to summon a huge stone wall in front of him, hoping that Sun Yao would not be able to break through it, and temporarily he would be safe from his dangerous attacks. Sun Yao is generally very surprised that Zhao Hu still has strength. Seeing the wall, he poked his sword at it to test its strength and made sure that it was strong enough and could not be broken through so easily. In the next chapter, you can see how Sun Lao begins to hit this huge stone wall with his sword. He tries to break it, but one gets the feeling that all this is simply useless, no matter how hard he tries. Because of this, Sun Yao begins to get angry. He already begins to think that he killed this guy's parents because he is in real despair since he is doing such tricks in battle against him. And then suddenly, after several minutes of chiseling into this wall, the guy was still able to stick his sword into it. It is clear that the sword went deep enough and caused damage to this wall on its side. Of course, this had a negative impact on this wall. The wall could not withstand this, so it simply shattered into various small pieces, opening the way for the guy to get to Zhao Hu. Apparently, Zhao Hu has already realized that his last defense has fallen, so there is no hope. He is going to suddenly strike this guy so that he can go to hell as soon as possible. Sun Yao saw his opponent's intentions. He also understands that this is more like a battle between two captured beasts, so he does not mind continuing their battle to the very end, because he is not a coward. Then you can see how the huge sword of Zhao Hu came into contact with the small sword of Sun Yao. The grinding of their swords is heard. The situation begins to get very tense, but only there will be only one winner and no more. While they both clashed with swords and stood in place, Zhou Ho seemed to have decided to intimidate his opponent with his terrible face, as if he began to look very threateningly straight into Sun Yao's soul, hoping that this would influence him. 
However, the fashionista with bangs remains completely calm. He understands that he cannot be intimidated by such things, so he still continues to hold the sword crossed with his sword until one of them begins to act. Sun Yao was already tired of looking at the ugly face of his opponent, so with just one swing of his sword, he sent this loser into space, and his sword flew away from his hands. It is clear that Sun Yao is strong. After such a blow, Zhao Hu flew several meters, later stopped on his feet and did not fall to the ground. His sword in turn flew an even greater distance, and now just lies directly stuck in the ground. In addition to his face, this guy also has a wound right on his arm. But he is still not going to give up and tell Sun Yao that his fighting methods are very disgraceful in his opinion, so it's time for him to change. However, this guy failed to offend Sun Yao in any way. He only felt funny at his words because the winner is the king, the enemy is the loser, and victory is glory. If the techniques work, then he uses them. After these words, the guy with the bangs decides to jump right on his opponent, swinging his sword. He now looks like a diving eagle, which is about to deal a serious blow to its prey. The spectators are no longer satisfied with Sun Yao's actions, because now Zhao Hu is in danger, since Sun Yao disarmed him and, even in this case, decided to attack his defenseless opponent. This guy looks very angry, because he sees that his opponent is attacking him at the very moment when he is disarmed. The guy considers this act real shamelessness, and for now he is just standing in one place. And then suddenly blood begins to flow. The audience paid attention to this after which they began to look at this picture in complete horror. They were very interested in what would happen to Zhao Hu, because the attack was terrible. It turned out that Zhao Hu simply grabbed his opponent's blade with just his bare hand. It seems that now he has the upper hand in this battle. He is suffering terrible pain, but the audience does not believe what they are seeing now. Now we can see how Sun Yao is becoming scared, because he could not have expected that his opponent would decide to do such madness. He now looks at this picture and does not know what to do. Still continuing to hold the sword by its sharp part, Zhao Hu begins to pull this sword towards himself with an angry face and force. He decides to take advantage of this moment, while Sun Yao is completely confused and does not know what to do. One gets the feeling that Sun Yao is trying to resist, because he felt that his opponent was really trying to take this sword away from him, but he still becomes a little scared. While the two were fighting for the sword, they somehow suddenly slammed their foreheads into each other with great force. The blow was quite powerful, but these strong men will survive it we can be sure of that. The older brother is watching this fight from the audience. He is horrified by such a picture, and he continues to watch the events with great excitement, even despite the fact that he himself becomes scared. After this blow with their foreheads, both opponents briefly moved some distance away from each other to try to recover from this, because this was not an ordinary scratch. The blow was really strong. You can see how Sun Yao's forehead was injured. It begins to bleed. This guy, realizing this and feeling severe pain, begins to blame Zhao Hu for what happened, and that is why he begins to hate him even more. After this, the wounded Sun Yao raises his sword up, and apparently is already preparing to show all his strength, inflicting a decisive blow on this guy, which will certainly finish him off and lead the guy to victory. Having prepared for the attack, the guy with the bangs begins to confidently run straight towards his opponent, who, like a mountain, just stands in one place and seems to be preparing to take this blow. The blow to Zhao Hu was dealt, he could not cope with such a thing. And it was because of this that he helplessly flew tens of meters back, and Sun Yao stopped at his previous place, watching his flight. Having flown some distance, Zhao Hu was unable to stand on his feet and landed on his back. Seeing his condition, the elder brother jumps from the spectator's place to the arena itself to inspect the guy's physical condition. After quickly examining his body, the elder brother understands that they cannot do without doctors here. So he decided to ask some onlooker to quickly call the doctors. He will now do so at the request. After that, this guy standing near the disabled body of Zhao Hu begins to look at Sun Yao and tells him that Zhao Hu has lost his consciousness. So this victory goes to him. The guy literally begins to glow with happiness. He pretends that he is very sorry that his opponent had to lose in today's battle. But deep in his soul, he is very gloating that he managed to defeat him at all. The audience considers his behavior too cruel. In their opinion, Sun Yao practically killed a person with his actions. They hope that he will soon be eliminated from this competition, although this is impossible. The main character, along with Xiao Qi, also watched this fight. The black-haired one looks very unhappy, because the sword of the elder brother Zhao flew to the side, and Sun Yao decided to take advantage of this to show himself. In the next chapter, we see Ye Xiaohuan standing on the street in pitch darkness and acting extremely suspicious, because what does he need at such a time? He is acting like some kind of bandit. 
It turns out that he has various things in his hands, which he apparently intends to send to the black market. He believes that his reputation is well deserved, so he is going to take advantage of it. The joyful protagonist with his things goes straight to the black market. He understands that a hairpin with peeling paint can be sold for several thousand tails. Thanks to these evenings, he can get rich. However, it suddenly turns out that at such a time, not only Ye Xiao Huan can't sleep, but also Yun Chu, who is watching this guy right now and does not give himself away. She is very interested in what he will do next. The blue-haired girl looks very unhappy. Perhaps she already understands what the boy is going to do right now, so she wants to approach him, talk, and ask a couple of questions. While the guy suspects nothing and goes with a bunch of things to the dark market, it suddenly begins to seem to him that everything he is doing now is wrong. And then it seems to him that he has forgotten something. He begins to look at all his items again, and sees that Grandfather Xiao Qi is visible, which he does not like to share, and he also did not forget the hairpin that Yun Chou gave him that day. And then suddenly Yun Xiu herself approaches Ye Xiao Huan. She is now silently looking at him from a distance, and the guy turned his attention to her, and, apparently, they are about to start a conversation. It is clear that the black-haired man is now a little confused. He cannot understand what she is doing here in the pitch darkness, and he himself is silently looking at her for now. He wants to find out why she came to him at such a time. Next, the girl begins to look at this guy with a very cruel look. For some reason, she is stalling for time and does not say anything to the guy, but only instills fear in him and simply tickles his nerves. The black-haired man, seeing her fierce look, decides that it would be better to pretend. That he simply doesn't see her and quickly move on, meanwhile, the girl continues to look straight at the back of his head. After a minute of staring, she decides to talk to Ye Xiao Huan. She assumes that today he must have earned a lot of money. The guy is now scared. Apparently, he understands where everything is going. It is clear that the black-haired man is now very scared. He tells her that he was able to earn money, but he earned very little. Ye Xiao Huan is now very interested in how she will react to his words in the future. The main character is scared, but he found the strength to completely turn towards the girl and tell her that it was already very late, so he was very interested in why she was here and what she was doing. The blue-haired girl doesn't say anything in response to the main character's question, she just slowly starts to approach him. He gets excited and tells her that he has a competition tomorrow, so let her make the first move. And then suddenly Yun Cho begins to slowly take out his sword, asking Ye Xiao Huan if he wants to leave this world. From that moment on, the black-haired one specifically shit in his pants. Next, the girl points her sharp sword at this guy, showing him her intentions to finish him off, that is, so that he realizes that she is now very hostile towards him. The blade is already right in front of the black-haired man's face. He just silently looks at it and is afraid to make unnecessary movements because he doesn't know what to expect from this crazy woman. So for now, he just stands there. Next, the main character decides to sit down a little to get closer to the ground and puts his things on the ground. He understands that on such a late night, Jun Xu decided to specifically wait for him here and still waited. After some time, realizing that this guy does not pose any threat, the girl decides to put her sword back behind her back and lets him know that she has been waiting here all this time for him and no one else. The guy even got a little embarrassed. He scratched his head and told her that they didn't know each other well. He thought it wasn't so bad to be noticed at night and asked her opinion about it. The girl, as usual, is very serious, so all jokes aside, she decides to ask her friend if he knows why she has been waiting for him here all this time, in the middle of the night. Ye Xiao Huan, in turn, is very confused as usual. He tells her that he has no idea at all about this, but already wants to start guessing the reasons why, even if this is actually a useless exercise. Next, Jun Chu, with a serious expression on her face, begins to demand something from the main character, the black-haired one, in turn, looks at her in complete bewilderment and does not understand what she needs from him at all, because he seems to be empty. It turns out that this crazy woman is demanding money from him, because in her opinion, he has already sold her hairpin, which she gave him. So now the girl is asking him for her share of the money received, so that it is supposedly fair. Blackhaired thinks that she is already going to rob him. He reminds her that they agreed that she will help him activate the sword technique and promise him to do anything to him. The blue-haired girl sees that the main character is already starting to talk complete nonsense, so looking him straight in the eye, she approaches him and asks this talkative guy to shut up as soon as possible, because he is getting on her nerves. And then the girl realized that using ordinary words would be useless, so he decided to use brute force and grabbed the black-haired man by his hand. It is clear that Ye Xiao Huan was very dissatisfied with this attitude towards his person. The girl twists both hands of this loser and demands that he be completely honest in his words. The dissatisfied guy asks her to be gentle, otherwise his hand may be broken, and he doesn't need that. 
Yunzi still doesn't want to let go of his hand. After which the black-haired man began to cry just like a little girl, he admits that he was completely wrong and promises not to dare to do this again. He asks to let him go. The girl still listened to this guy and let go of his hand so that he wouldn't be in so much pain. But immediately after that, she seemed to start harassing him and leaning against him reached right into the shocked guy's inner pocket. From his embarrassment, the black-haired man's face has already turned completely red. He can't understand what Yun Tsu wants to do with him. Her actions seem very suspicious to him and as strange as possible. After picking in his pocket for a few seconds to the surprise of the main character, this pickpocket was able to find a large amount of money in there. In her opinion, money obtained illegally is subject to confiscation. After Yun Si took the money, she began to leave this place because her task was completed. The guy asks why she took them all and wants her to leave him just a little because this is his wealth for life. While the girl was getting ready to leave this place, she turned her attention to the goods that the main character had left on the ground. Among all these goods, she was interested in one item that she would take to inspect. She takes this item in her hands and decides to ask Ye Xiaohuan who he is taking this item for, because she even became very interested. Now she is waiting for an answer from this guy. A dissatisfied and very offended guy tells this girl that this is a gift, and he doesn't want her to touch it, so the girl curiously peers at this thing and is going to put it back in its place after that. However, Yunshu didn't even put this item on the ground. She just decided to mock Yi Xiaohuan and told him that in that case, she was going to take it with her, for personal purposes, so to speak. After these words, the fairy does not want to waste extra time, after which she simply took off and flew away from this place at high speed so that the main character did not have time to say anything to her. He could only shout after her that she was bad. Already in the next chapter, we can observe where this fairy flew after all, but it turned out that apparently she arrived at her home and is now sitting calmly at the table all alone. She begins to silently examine the item that she stole from Ye Xiaohuan. She remembers that he said that it was actually a gift, but she didn't even pay attention to his words. She just wanted to take it for herself. Yunzi still continues to examine this thing. She either lifts it or lets it go. And it seems that she is trying to catch different inclinations of the light in order to see this object differently. It is not clear what exactly she is now trying to find on this thing, but now she begins to smile, after which it is creepy to look in the mirror, while she does not say anything at all, but only performs some actions. Then she still decides to put this hairpin back in her hair in order to look stunning again. In front of other people, it is obvious that she will soon need to go out somewhere. After the girl collected her hair, she inserted her hairpin into it, after which she began to look at herself in the mirror. It seemed to her that she looked just great and she could already go to a beauty contest to participate. Having looked at this mirror much better, Jun Xu realizes that this hairpin really suits her. And without this thing, she is not herself. How good it is that she still managed to return it to herself, and they did not lose it. After some time, the collected girl came straight to the palace in which the next battle would take place, in which she would either have to take part or simply calmly watch it all from the side. Apparently, she is the one who has to fight today. She is already standing in the middle of the ring and waiting for her opponent, while a lot of eyes from the audience are looking at her. But she still remains calm and does not care about anything. Meanwhile, the main character, along with Xiao Qi and Zhu Changshui, are watching this. A dissatisfied Ye Xiaohuan, crossing his arms, calls this girl a bad robber. His old friend drew attention to his words. Seeing his condition, Zhu Changshui is already beginning to think that this bad girl has somehow offended the main character, but Yun Cho changed the hairpin, and it is clear. It turned out that the one she bought yesterday was not a fake. The black-haired man then turns to the elder brother Zhu and decides to check with him whether he keeps the hairpin bought on the black market. His friend, with his whole appearance, makes it clear to his friend that this is so. He keeps it. Next, he grabs Ye Soya Wan by the plio and calls him too frank. After all, they are all brothers who come directly to him when they think they have little money. So why go to the black market he does not understand? The black-haired man didn't like the fact that his friend immediately began to hit home. He asks him not to mention what happened to him yesterday, because he was very unlucky then. The blue-eyed one looks like he's not even surprised by this. He tells Ye Xiao Wan that he has already heard about the incident. He bought him wine, snacks, and hosta in Guangnatang yesterday, but it's not clear how he knows this. The black-haired man himself is now in disbelief, because he has no idea. Zhu Chang Shui also says that the wine should be used in honor of the drunken master's uncle. When they met this morning, Xiao Qi ate all their snacks, but they can't be mad at her because she's very cute. The black-haired man is already embarrassed, judging by the expression on his face. And Zhu Chang Shui says that this hosta is now worn on the head by the younger sister Yun. So the black-haired man can watch this right now as a spectator. 
We learn that younger sister Yoon never accepts gifts from strangers, but this time it just so happens that they are both the same age as the main character. Otherwise, Uncle Zui La would have done something. Ye Xiaohuan is now very angry. He doesn't like what his brother Ju is talking about. Apparently, the guy remembered the awkward conversation at his home. Ju Chang Shui, in turn, just smiles slyly at the guy as if he's mocking him. The main character says that he was just unlucky last night. This woman took everything from him. Meanwhile, Ju Chang Shui exhales with relief because Ye Xiaohuan still decided, fortunately for him, not to kick his ass. Meanwhile, they notice how Sun Yao and Gu Panner fly up to them on swords. The guy on the sword immediately recognized our main character, who earned a fortune last night. The two guys paid attention to them. Having flown close enough with the girl, the guy decides to ask Ye Xiaohuan why he still looks so poor, although yesterday he seemed to have become rich. Apparently, he thinks that the main character is simply lying. The black-haired man is tired of everyone discussing this event and reminding him of his failure. So with an angry face, he simply tells Sun Yao that this has nothing to do with him. So let him get lost. However, the guy with the bang still calls Ye Xiaohuan brave for daring to provoke his younger sister Yun Zhu. He believes that he is lucky that he was not injured at her hands last night, and she simply took pity on him. The black-haired guy further tells this guy that in fact, he used vulgar means to hurt other people in battle, strip away dignity to show off his strength, and that's all Sun Yao. Gu Panner now looks at her boyfriend in bewilderment. She wondered if everything said by the main character was true. The evil guy with bangs demands that Ye Xiaohuan quickly repeat his words. Without waiting for a repetition, Sun Yao decides to tell him that he will be responsible for his outpourings in the future. He wonders whether the guy himself understands the seriousness of the words he said or not. Ye Xiaohuan tells him that everyone knew this. They just didn't see what methods he used in battle. Meanwhile, Xiao is hiding behind the back of the strong and tall protagonist, because in her eyes, he is a real Sigma. Apparently, this truth stabs Sun Yao right in the eyes. He tries to say something to the main character, but he is already lost and cannot, Gu Paner, in turn, asks his brother to calm down, because this will lead to nothing. Next, the girl enters into a dialogue. She tells Ye Xiaohuan that there is no need to be so quick with your tongue. If he really has evidence, then let him just show them all so that they all know the truth. The black-haired man suddenly begins to rejoice, because even though he has no evidence in the next game, he will definitely reveal all the tricks of Sun Yao, and then for sure he will have evidence that will confirm that he is a swindler. In the next chapter, you can already see the judge standing in the ring and reading from a piece of paper that what follows is the second competition for the position of Xuan in the second round. And now Ye Xiaohuan and Sun Yao himself will fight. This is a long-awaited battle. Sun Yao, looking as serious as possible, flies straight to the ground on his sword. After which he very pompously jumps to the ground, he is ready to take on this fierce battle and try to kick the main character's ass. On the other side of the arena, the main character himself appears. He is very pleased with himself and asks everyone to watch him teach him a lesson. The fans are now rooting for Ye Xiaohuan, hoping that he will win here. Loser Ye Xiaohuan was too pleased with himself and too distracted by the crowd that continued to support him. So he simply slipped out of the blue and was about to crash right to the ground in front of everyone. It can be seen that the guy, because he slipped, is now just lying on the ground as a result. He hit himself hard enough and understands that a lot of people were able to see all this shame, so now he is ashamed. Many spectators laugh at him, asking him to eat crap since he has now fallen to the ground. Zhu Chang Shuyu felt unpleasant because of his fall. But Xiao Qi, seeing this strange picture, simply burned with shame. Suddenly, the red-haired woman begins to laugh hard when she sees this picture. The girl to her right simply looks at it, being shocked but Yun Tsu seems to be worried about the main character again, but this is not certain. Ning Xiangji tells her friend that this time this naughty little guy had a hard time. She believes that he deserved all this for all his wrong actions in the past, even before imprisonment. The girl decides to turn to her younger sister. With a smile on her face, she asks her if she still thinks that Ye Xiaohuan can win this game. The blue-haired girl looks at the girl and is now just thinking about the answer. She still does not lose her hope and is very confident that the main character will be able to win. She continues to follow him for some time and understands that he is just pretending to be so weak and worthless. The red-haired friend can't even believe her words, but she decides not to ask unnecessary questions and continue watching this fight because it will be more interesting to see it all in action. We learn that Ye Xiaohuan is very smart. While annoying Sun Yao, he also showed weakness by paralyzing Sun Yao. Once someone even saw him practicing Chan Kun Yijian in Sigoye, that this guy is not simple. Surprised, Ning Xiangji suddenly noticed something in the main character. It seems to her that he has reached the sixth level of the soul, and she asks Yuncho about this, who says that she played against him 
and he is really not easy. Another girl comes up behind them, wondering if this guy is really the lazy, deceitful, and shameless big rat they know. Yun Cho and Ning Xiangji continue to watch silently. Then you can see how the black-haired man still continues to pretend to be some kind of weak-minded. He now begins to sneeze right in the arena and do other stupid things that no one expects to see here. In turn, his opponent Sun Yao is watching him. He can no longer take Ye Xiao Huan seriously as an opponent and thinks that this fight will be easier for him because he will definitely be able to defeat him. The guy with the bangs on his head is already tired of just standing around doing nothing. He tells the judge of this competition that the rest of the arenas have already started, and he, not wanting to waste time, wants them to be able to start right now. Taking out his hilt, Ye Soya Huan promises this guy to keep his ugly face, otherwise he will hit him on the pig's head three times and will not allow him to leave the stage. The main character is really eager to take revenge on him. However, his words do not even scare this guy with bangs one bit. He is already starting to take out his sword, after which he tells the guy to stop talking about this nonsense, because in his opinion this will not happen. So he offers to start acting. Since someone wants to be beaten as quickly as possible, the main character has no choice but to behave respectfully and obey this request, which means that Sun Yao will not be rewarded at all now. Ye Huan took out the hilt of his sword and raised it in front of him, after which he ordered his blade to be exposed. Now from just one hilt, a whole sword has turned out, and the black-haired man can calmly begin this battle. And then suddenly, the main character's face began to look very unusual. He sees that some strange things will begin to happen to his sword, but he still cannot understand what these strange things are. Turning in the direction in which all the spectators are floating, he peers there and, to his surprise, discovers something equally unusual. It seems that such oddities are not only happening to him. These strange things happen not only with the main character's Wufen sword, but with the Zhang Zhenyun Chu sword. The red-haired girl saw this and looked at the strange things happening in the arena in great bewilderment. Zhu Kangshui, together with Xiao Qi, simply watch what is happening. They are very surprised by these events because they could not observe anything like this before in their lives, and this is their first time. Gu Panner and the girl on the left also observe these oddities, but they, like everyone else, cannot understand where this paranormal phenomenon came from. Sun Yao himself drew attention to the Junzi. He was also very surprised and even frightened in some way. Suddenly, the main character accumulates some kind of strength in this way to strike. We see the youth herself, who right now is hovering above the ground, not even standing astride a sword, and even she, being a very serious person, is very surprised by what is happening and does not know what to do. Ye Xiaohuan noticed that some kind of huge hologram of a sword had appeared in the skies, which was beginning to suck in Yang Zi. He looked at this oddity and simply did not know what to do. We see Yu Jizi with the rest of the important people who, as usual, are watching the competition right from the balcony. Absolutely all of them paid attention to how some unknown force began to suck the Yu Jizi. The woman sees this picture and already begins to worry very much about the union. She does not know what will happen to her when she reaches the end of the road, but she cannot do anything about it. We see that while the girl was climbing up, her attention was attracted by the unusual behavior of her Zhang Jin sword. Namely, it begins to glow somehow and she does not know what is happening to it. While in flight, Yun Cho looks at the person on the stage and realizes that since she met this man Zhang Chen Jian, she began to behave abnormally, for example. Now she is just flying. The main character also notices that some strange things are happening with his sword. It begins to vibrate and glow green. The shocked boy looks at this and does not understand what is happening to the Ufen sword. Yun Kyo, together with Ye Xiao Huan, observe all the strange things that happen to their swords. They still cannot understand why it is, just like the rest of the people who are simply observing this event. In the next chapter, you can see how Jun Xu begins to take out her sword from her holster. Meanwhile, someone is calling her by name, but she doesn't seem to be paying her attention to it at all because she is fixated on the sword. Grasping her sword tighter, the blue-haired woman makes a sharp swing and one can say that she struck straight into the air. It is not yet clear what this will lead to, but it looks very interesting. After this blow, the blue-haired girl decides to strike vertically upward. She continues to hit the air and it is not clear why exactly. Apparently, she needs to walk her sword in such a strange way. Next, you can see how this girl simply sends a huge shockwave forward after her series of blows. No one knows where she is going, but she looks like she has destructive power. The head of a sect named Yujizi, together with a woman, are watching this strange wave, almost like a crescent. They have no idea what it is and what can be expected next after all these events. The experienced head of the sect makes attempts to explain what is happening in heaven right now, but it is all in vain, because for some reason he cannot find the right words for this and he simply observes.